Hey, 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 and what's going on, everybody? Hopefully you can hear the sound of my voice on this lovely Sunday, April 7th, 2024. Do you know where your eclipse is? I know I did a 3 a.m. last time, you know, in lieu of uh, getting my studio set up to do some more music content in the next couple of days or weeks or so. But I didn't want to, uh, you know, flood you with 3 a.m.s either. So my apologies. I just wanted to space these things out while I go through my little thing here. But I would be amiss not to stream today and pontificate on everything that has been transpiring in our world, both on a 3 a.m. level and, of course, just in normal day news and trends and stuff and how the solar eclipse has been like the center of narrative for a while and, you know, dead Internet theory and everything else that, that that I've been coming across, I wanted to share some thoughts on too. So let's get prepared and go down another rabbit hole with MG the Future. You go ahead and stay tuned. I'm going to play me a remix or something, man. Uh, maybe we'll do the FPS joint. They got a, what do they call them? The big three in a, in a war right now. They said a FPS is what started this all. So let's go ahead and start with that by MG the Future. First person shooter mode, we turning your son to a funeral. To them niggas that say they want office, you better be talking about working in Cuban codes. Yeah, them boys had a lot, but I knew the code. A lot of niggas debating my number roll. Not the three, not the two, I'm the you and know. The difference is it's just two guys playing shit that they did in the studio. Niggas usually send their verses back to me and they be terrible just like a two-year-old. I love a dinner with some fine women when they start debating about who the gold. I'm like, go ahead, say it then. Who the gold? Who the gold? Who the gold? Who the gold? Who you bitches really rooting for? Like a kid that had bad from January to November, nigga, it's just doing cold. the Super Bowl. Niggas so thirsty to put me in beef. I sat in my words and start looking too deep. I look at the tweets and start sucking my teeth. I'm letting it rock because I love the mystique. I still want to give me a song where I be. Can't trust everything that you saw on IG. Just know if I diss you, I make sure you know that I hit you like I'm on your call ID. I'm aiming the album to fall off. It's pretty ironic because it ain't no fall off for me. Still in this bitch getting bigger. They waiting on the kid to come drop like a father to be. Love when they argue the hardest MC. Is it K-Dot? Is it Aubrey or me? We the big three like we started a league. But right now I feel like Muhammad Ali Yeah, Muhammad Ali The one that they call when they shit ain't connected No more feel like I got a job on our teeth Rhyming with me is the biggest mistake The Spider-Man meme is me looking at Drake It's like we recruited your homies to be demon deacons We got him attending your wake Hey, how the gang got away from the bars Man, this shit like a prison escape Everybody step as we're fucking And everybody breakfast And I'm about to clear up my plate when I show up, it's motion picture, blockbuster. The goat with the golden pen, the top toucher, the spot rusher. Spray this whole shit up with a crap duster. Not Russia, but apply pressure to your cranium. Your cold's automatic when aiming on with the boy in the status of stadium. Yo, what's up? <laughs> what was Cole talking about, yo? Cole was really, you know, getting that those upper middle class bars off, and I like it, and I appreciate him for, for, for that. Uh, I don't know if you've been living under a rock for the past week, but you know that uh, <laughs> Mr. Kung Fu Kenny guest featured on a Metro Boomin Future track and sending shots at the Big Three, which was an internet concept of who the biggest, I guess, past decade of rappers were. And of course, it would be fair to mention them, you know, J. Cole, Drake, Kendrick Lamar as being that Big Three. And Kendrick, I guess, took a shot at the other two. And I think everyone's waiting for a response from Drake and a response to J. Cole from Kendrick from the seven minute drill. And while that was all going on and fine and dandy, I think someone posted <laughs> what their friends had said about it. And it was kind of spicy. It was kind of like uh like like that good old hater energy from Generation X or Millennials. And I just want to share that with you, just to just to get the flow started for, you know the type of things that may or may not happen because of eclipses. Who, whose boy was that? That was hilarious. I think I saw Arson responded to it, of course. Arson, Arson got takes. 
right here. So is the brother destroyed. He said one of his friends had posted these comments. He says, conscious rap is cringe for middle-aged people. Two rich dudes far removed from actual shit arguing about who could write the best brain teasers. LOL. The shit is goofy. Now, I won't say that's not like, I want to say that's true or, you know, I, I definitely think he's minimalizing a lot of things, but to say it's not funny is ridiculous. That's hilarious. It's like we're arguing about upper middle class people who have not been in the struggle. Maybe not ever. <laughs> you know, you know how these things go, you know, and of course struggle is relative. But, you know, what I'm saying from 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 the type of hatred and honoriness you need to say these tweets. We're talking about that type of struggle. They're not from that. Um, let's see what the next one was. Honestly, Kendrick and J. Cole both ain't ish comparatively. Both need Interscope to make their careers. And then they pivoted to the thought provoking rap scene since they don't have any struggles to actually discuss. Meanwhile, Dolph, he's talking about young Dolph. Did it himself and no labels, no deals, employed people in his city to work for his label, taking about stuff that he would, he, would, he would rap about things he was actually living. The GOAT discussion ain't even close. Y'all just listening to rich dudes cry. And that's beautiful how this all works. I like that. I love when um we have these conversations, especially coming from a music producer space. You know, it's always about the best producer, best beat. Best album, best disc track, best doll, best plug-in, best drums, best keyboard. Like, we, we we be ranking and rating everything, you know. I think that over-analytical thing is, like, part of our process for real. But, um, of course, bro, in these sentiments, move the goalpost, but I followed him, right? Like, I'm trying to see, like, where his struggle mirrors into reality better. And for him, the person who's tweeting this, Young Dolph impressed him because Young Dolph most closely resembles his options. Like, because Young Dolph is in the streets. He's in what? Memphis at the time? Tennessee? Correct me if I'm wrong. And so he grew up in a hood adjacent, came up, put his craft out there, and then took care of the people that helped him get there. And for a lot of people, that seems to be the go-to blueprint for anybody um, that comes from our tribal type lineage. You know, if you allow me to get deep real quick, is that that template that we see in some of our brothers who may not necessarily be the most uh, square or, you know, a type personalities of folks. But the reason why we galvanize and get behind them more than anyone else, um, we used to call it street cred in the 90s. But even if you go further back to why, like someone like Benjamin uh, Banneker will say, you should take these regalia and the uh, uniforms away from the, the kids, AKA, you know, flags, like gangs. You have to take that away from them because it activates something primal in that brotherhood. It activates the need to gather on like ideas and then go somewhere else and fuck shit up. Like no matter what year it is, is what I'm saying. Like if brothers get together on the same flag, their their next step is to go fuck some shit up. And we don't, we don't know enough about history to deduce what that is exactly. But it's powerful. And I think uh, with a lot of men, my age group, maybe a little bit older, maybe Gen X and definitely younger are always looking for like men who like fuck shit up. And it's not even like a violent type of fuck shit up, but like people who achieve things that they weren't supposed to achieve, given the certain circumstances and setbacks they that was put, put, put in front of them and us. So it's like, you know what I'm saying? It's like you watch someone play Tekken or something and they do some crazy combo when they're about to lose with like this much health and then they turn that shit around and they parry everything, everything you throw at them. They're blinking. They're, they're about to, you know, get KO'd and at the last minute that combo click in and every button is hit at the right time and boom, 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 KO. They win. Um, I think that's why this brother or someone like that would always champion someone like Young Dolph or some of our quote unquote street brothers, which are more just, you know, chiefs. A lot of people, a lot of people are actually not ranking artistry, rap and lyrics or success by numbers. They're acknowledging the chiefdom. And um, I've noticed this for a long, a long, 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 long time. I'm um, just uh, as being a young brother growing up around people in different social circles. And most people galvanize around a chief. 
Um, me being a little bit more lone wolf, I, I never looked for that, but I acknowledged it. I respect it. I know a lot of brothers that galvanize the chiefs, irregardless of what we're calling ourselves. It's just, it's something in our energy. And so when you get to hip hop or you get to anything black culture, so-called black, the reason why a lot of shit gets rejected by us or a lot of shit don't stick or, you know, you start having conversations like industry plants is because people start jugging the jug. Like the chiefs figured out the formula on how to beat the game on their settings. Now the plants are coming, mirroring that strategy with the help of the mainstream, pushing it with numbers. And that's kind of crazy, right? Like it's like stealing our likeness in, in, a, in a degree, or it's like the Boston Tea Party where they, um, the Freemasons of the time at that Dragon and Green Lodge there in Boston um, had plotted to go into blackface as to appear that the Mohawk Indians threw the tea over the harbor because they some bitch ass niggas. And um, that's what hip hop has felt like to me as a young man growing into a man and watching the shit shift and the people galvanized around. I think what gave me an adverse reaction was they weren't chiefs. Like, there's no way you're the best performer, rapper, galvanizer in your crew, in your city, in your studio, in your high school cafeteria. I know you didn't hit none of those benchmarks just by how your personality came out and, and just by how the fact that I'm listening to this bullshit, which means you've been listening to this bullshit and nothing told you to improve. So I know you haven't been around Chiefs either. You know, Chief is always going to want to see the best out of you, right? And that shit don't always come out nice because sometimes the... the uh, the reason why some of the we don't produce the best shit or we don't realize we, we lack the self-awareness, if you will, is because most people play nice and most people are comfortable. And a lot of people don't want to be, you know, contrary and believe it or not, in this narcissistic society, most people s tend to gravitate towards, you know, passive. Who cares type of energy, like a troll, like a, like, a you know, a person on Instagram, specifically Instagram, where. You leave a comment on something, it normally don't start a whole conversation. So it's just, you know, a fleeting thought about something. That's always interesting to me. But yeah, these these people haven't been chiefs for a long time, man. And we seen our brothers in New York kind of uh, signify that to us in their interviews. And I don't know if y'all remember this, but I do. It always stood out to me. It was actually, it was an actual saying at the time. I, I want to say late 90s, early 2000s. And I think we could put a bullet point on Wu-Tang Clan members being some of the ones who would say it the most. And that connection is important because they have knowledge of self and they have that 5%er thing too. So these not you know, no intellectual slouches due to socioeconomic circumstances. But the saying used to be, we have way too many Indians and not enough chiefs. Like you, like, like just hold that for a minute. Just just hold just just hold that for me. Just hold it. Like just you as a quote unquote, you know, whoever you are in America, whoever you are watching this in English, this can apply to you too regionally. But you know, I'm 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 gonna project from a quote unquote black American perspective always. So please, please bear with me. But you know, as you as a black person, so so to speak, even when we go through this particular portal where we're getting further knowledge of self, you know, connecting us to the land, connecting us to the so called Indian which then connects us to Moab, Canaanites, you know, Phoenicia, like us getting closer to that story, getting that much closer to Atlantis. And, and then looking at the play that they ran to put us in the Africa centralized mind state. But somehow in our families, we said there's <laughs> too many Indians and not enough chiefs. Like on, on some, on some ill shit though, what would niggas from Africa know anything about Indians and chiefs? You know what I'm saying? Like, if you're just working on a plantation, you didn't have time for that. Listen, I don't know. They were reading newspapers, the master or something. And, oh, those crazy boys in those Western films, they're making up 50 years from now. They just sacked enough. You have no, you have no clue of a social dynamic of a Indian in chief demonstration. A, hashtag allegedly, though. Unless you're what? You're the black African slave that escaped to the Seminoles? <laughs> Maybe. It, it, even if that, even that's wavy. Even that, and I'm cool with that, too. If that's what you believe. That's wavy, too. Like, more, more to the point that there are so-called black people in the so-called Federal Bureau of Affairs designations, um, no matter how they got there, they're there. And yet history does not seem to uh, 
elucidate those circumstances on any level. Like we have no idea what that was like by their own record too. I'm talking about by the people who participated. I don't want to hear what somebody who got here later is start saying about it because how the fuck would they know more than me? And I'm here. My grandma was here, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's just weird for us to trust Oxford, like Oxford way over there, bro. Like, you know, I'm, even if they had the best of intentions, like you're always going to miss nuance such as me as a child, listening to Wu-Tang, watching TRL and BT Cyphers and Rap City and hearing every different rapper when interviewed say that thing. Oxford ain't going to catch that. You know what I'm saying? Oxford may, may deduce it if they listen to us talk about it and beckon it, but they're not going to catch it. And what I'm saying is I caught it. Like, oh, there's not enough Indians. Really knows, you know, it's too many chiefs, not enough Indians and vice versa. Basically, brothers are having a hard time playing their position. And, and, and that's a lesson all young men, people, women, but men have to learn or, or at least develop a self-awareness of is what is your position, son, right? If you're the son, what is your position? Like, how how do you fit into other people's solar systems? And, and that's why we have those clashes, because we have sons who go into these galaxies as chiefs. And there's just too many noble gases around. You feel me? Like somebody's got to be Earth. Someone's got to be the ice planet. Someone's got to play a different position to give us this balance. And um, we have been out of balance since that saying. You know what I'm talking about? Like that that saying, it's too many Indians, not enough chiefs, or too many chiefs and not enough Indians. However you play it out, you're having a social accountability, social role breakdown somewhere. And they're just observing it, you know, colorfully through hip hop and metaphor. But it it's true. It's true. We're, whoa, whoa, did all the cowboys go? <laughs> but more importantly, where's the chiefs? And for a little while, through the 90s especially, you could always identify the chiefs. Because those were the ones that that's, quote unquote, the cream that rises to the top. If you think about uh, Black Mafia family, and you think about those brothers, literally chiefs, like, we cut through the bullshit. The good, bad, the indifferent, but the, how they moved, how they operated, how they thought, what they were, what they were trying to do with some chief shit, it was tribal. It's all tribalism, um, and, and that's kind of what our society has taken away from us. In the sense of you know uniting us, at least in idea, under the Fourteenth Amendment, we the people can't be we the people in a Fourteenth Amendment citizen. Let's grow the fuck up, right? But pretending we the people, no matter where you're from, no matter what your condition, and if you're an op or not when you got here, because this country love importing ops. So we we supposed to be on the same team. And you start to lose your identity because of that. Um, the way civil rights was kind of given to us was like in the, what, the 1950s into the 1960s. Like you got people, all the ill-ass backdrops of the jug they put on black people, but also white people too, or non-black people, I should say. Because of, think of the timing of all of it, right? If you if you start in Wu or you start in 3 a.m., that time period is when they start having a problem with Elijah Muhammad and the predictions of the UFOs, right? He was writing about it in his um, Nation of Islam publications way prior to Roswell. Then Roswell happens. And then there's like this concerted effort to get Nazis in America, right? But prior, Nazis were just in Germany, you know, reverse engineering the and, and And this is just on the Wu side. This is just on the 3 a.m. side. This ain't about the, the nationalism and all that other stuff that will come later. But those groups, those type of people, Germans especially, because, you know, our country has a fetish for so-called Germanic people. Um, and and unironically, un contrary to what Benjamin Franklin said, the anglicized Germanic people, um, you know, from Tesla, Einstein, et cetera. This is the turn of the 1900s. This is post-reconstruction, by the way. So they're already importing Germans here at the end of the 1800s. World War II just brought the the Nazi kind. And I don't even know what they, I don't even know what they jug is outside of, it's a generational difference. It'll be kind of like how, you know, the olive branches from Africa to invite niggas back to Africa started with the millennials. But the millennials didn't take advantage of it. So, you know, generation B, B, beta, maybe they will, right? And it'll be like, so why didn't 
you get these people a hundred years prior. And it's just maybe the generation wasn't ready. You know what I'm talking about? There was more work that need to be done here um, that affects us internally in order for us to appreciate, even if that were true, that some of us are from there. We want to be able to appreciate it because we have been decentralized out of our tribal tradition. And, and they're still fairly more tribal than we are for apparent reasons. So yeah, that, that centralization in the 50s and 60s that was happening. And then you let those same people take control of the school system, right? No joke, like General Board of Education, um, anything that had to do with food, anything that had to do with drugs, like they, they're they not just immigrating and you know living a better life. They're taking control of the systems that affect ours. And these are the visitors, you know what I'm talking about? Like, in, in no kingdom does that make sense. In no kingdom does the king hire the foreigners to cook his food. Like, that's not what we do. Like, the foreigners might have some cool ass curry, curmin, and some recipes, but they're not going to take over the kitchen. That's just that's just not wise. You know, word to the wise. So, just in seeing that motion, we can see like some fuckery was afoot the whole time leading us to this conversation today. But that's the backdrop, right? All this industrialization and advancement and getting the central bank and all that shit up and running. Cool. So some type of, you know, highway corporate robbery um, placation going on. And all these are the words you find out when you get into the law and how your money system actually works. That's that time period. At the same time period, they're forcing niggas to go to school, white people. That's deep. Because at first, when I was taught, the frame was kind of weird because it's like, they just jump into that. They don't they don't they don't give you the 19, 10, 20, 30, 40 buildup with all the race riots <laughs> in the Wilmingtons. You know what I'm saying? Like they might sprinkle a little Martin Luther King and some Rosa Parks, but they get you straight into integration like black people voted for that. You know what I'm saying? Like like even those people then weren't even calling themselves black yet for real. Remember all those signs as colored. Coloreds and Negroes. And you don't really appreciate the difference between that until you look at the Board of Education. Because, you know, colors and Negroes are not the same thing. So much so when we cope with this idea of blackness, a lot of the policing you see in social media is so-called black people vetting other black people, you know, would-be black people. And and yeah, remember, just like that tribalism is kind of latent, so is this. Like, it wasn't that long ago. Like, I had to be this, and even though you look like me or we had the same grandma, you had a different set of privileges and benefits than I had because you were colored and not Negro. It may be, it may not, it may be a crime to be a Negro, said Abraham Lincoln, but it is not a crime to have dark skin. You see what I'm saying? And that's 100 years prior to integration that he's having that talk. So 100 years of it being a crime to be mislabeled not colored, mislabeled, to them integrating the labels. Because the integration is what brought in the 14th Amendment citizenry that's fucking us currently. And the 14th Amendment citizens are the ones with all the mainstream narratives that are counter black. And you see where the jug was, like clearly in hindsight, some motherfucker, 2020, you see what the jug is. And and we've created more maxims and quotes from that happening. Like, uh, everybody want to be a nigga until it's time to be a nigga. Or 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 anything, you know, we have more colorful words now, like gentrification, uh, culture vulture, all, all that stuff is a uh, side effect of um, integration. And the integration wasn't what we asked for. And we miss this gnosis of that because we don't know who we are in the story. They gave us a default position. It's been a hundred years since slavery. You want to work with white people. And you're like, huh? Why would I want to go to school with people who want to spit on me? Why would I want to swim with people putting acid in the pool? Like, none of that is what niggas want to do. Like, t- I'm talking I'm talking today. I'm talking about right now. You can ask the most wildest of us or the most smartest of us if they want to go party with some ops every day, nine to five. What are we talking about? And as they do that, as they make that the move, then they started cracking in on the households, right? Where you start seeing welfare and these different initiatives, pro-feminism, same time period, by the way. Just just notice that. Notice what all of those different civil rights initiatives or social initiatives actually produced. 
And then I understand that half the conspiracy for the past 20 years have been brothers and sisters going back and going forward and summarizing this to kind of deduce like, well, that was done intentionally because this is the effect that they wanted. And while we're in the hot water, like the frogs being slowly turned up to a boil, uh, most many people protested that. Like, that doesn't make sense. You know what I'm saying? I'm invested in the system. I'm pretty smart. I got good grades. They wouldn't do anything like that. That's just, you know, we, you know, I don't know what people don't even know the words called propaganda. But now you're living through the propaganda that you denied. And that's the funniest thing about this whole life for, for real, for real. Like if you've been paying attention to the news behind the news, all of us is not surprised that these type of feelings and moments are occurring. But what's equally un, uh, maybe unsatisfying or unsettling about that reality is that the people who denied it for 20 years in a row aren't even speaking up about how they've been in denial for 20 years. You know what I'm saying? I guess because I, I come from a little bit more clamorous background. You know, when, when you go into a church sometimes, back in the 90s especially, and they would have visitors. And then at the end of the service, the pastor would have the visitor raise their hand in the back. And, you know, that's a very anxious, driven moment. But because of the scenario, because of the vibes from the music and, you know, the word, if it was good, you you feel safe, at least momentarily. And then those people, if you listen to them, their testimonies, like the instant, the instant testimonies that 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 are manifest once a person makes a decision to change their mind. I haven't seen none of that for real. <laughs> I shout shout to the chat too. I'm gonna get back to that. I'm gonna get back to I'm gonna get back to the eclipse and the light skin uh the mulatto twins um jumping the Hebrew Israelite, you know, Haram and Mabif, if, if you're into rituals. Oh, damn, MG, how did you get back there? Come on. Come on now. What, what do you think this is? You think everything's a ritual but the ritual masters of rituals? If everything's a ritual, right? Hold that. Hold this. Just let's, let's just process some of these new maxims that niggas have lately because of social media. These are new maxims. And I didn't grow up with them, but I'm learning. Them. Uh, everything's a ritual. That's that's usually the 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 the, the uh what is that? They call it a knee. What is it called? Like a flinch or a knee or gut reaction or whatever. Like it's a ritual. Look at it. They're ritualizing. There's a ritual, it's a ritual, it's a ritual. CERN, ritual, Super Bowl, ritual, Grammys, ritual, ritual, ritual. It's a ritual. You've heard, you've heard this. Um, and, and I'm not saying that they're not correct about that. Well, maybe what I'm trying to add to that gnosis is that, well, be it as it may be a ritual, Who's known for their rituals? Yeah. And, and when you explore that, for me, what's weird, to, like, how do I say? Like, because I talk like y'all, like when I'm talking to people or even texting back and forth, like when it's a back and forth thing, I'd be talking to people like they know everything I know as long as I've known it type of thing. You know what I'm saying? It's like you just get comfortable because all the safe words have been implemented in the discussion. So you think the people across from you made certain connections the same way. And, and what I'm noticing about today's moderns hashtag wokeness is that if it's not largely bot induced hashtag dead internet theory, then it's almost solely CIA induced. And, and I'm going to split into two different branches, right? Because if everything's a ritual, who are the ritual masters? So that identifies who, no matter what. And if the CIA, which is the Central Intelligence Agency, and they coined conspiracy theories, like that's their shit, that's their, that's their baby. And on top of that, they're the ones that are declassifying remote viewing, astral projection, all those things that are in how I identified it as white woo like the white woke people stuff that I've also invested a lot of time in understanding. 
Well, if all the white woo people 20 years later are agents or had copyrights or just playing that flat out cap and they're just writing books, then what are books if not information? And if the CIA is the central intelligence agency next to the library of Congress, then they're the ones putting out all of the woo. And it, you can't have it both ways. So a lot of times we talk about these rituals and these events, like the solar eclipse as some type of, you know, mass hysteria, mass fear mongering, mass solution, mass, uh, you know, directive of some sort, you know, whether psychically, spiritually or overtly. Y'all, y'all just don't be talking about who be doing that shit. And that shit weird to me. That shit weird to me. It's like we understand the, the Pavlo dog response to it. Something uncomfortable hit the headlines. Must be a ritual. It must be a conspiracy. It's either one or the other. It's never no more a gradient of things. Like the conversation don't even go to like new places. It always goes into the same boxes. But this generation of aware people don't name the box. And it's funny because they got thousands of pronouns in another box. And so, so I know they're capable of picking up nuance, but they're not picking up nuance when it comes to something as serious as the idea that people are secretly mind fucking you. I don't think people appreciate the gravitas of that, right? It's like, yeah, I'm being fucked and raped mentally, psychically, energetically, but what can I do about it? Um, I'm just going to call things rituals and pay my bills by the same people fucking me. What? Why don't you speak up, King? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like that don't make sense for real, and and, and that's and that's what that's where I'm at right now. Where, where I'm at is I'm not judging that like on some bully shit. Like I can't make nobody see it this way, but I'm acknowledging at least the very fact that even the responses of those aware are meaningless because the headline doesn't paralyze you. The hopelessness of the theory does. Think about how sick that is, because because we're, we're getting more familiar with this because in the age of AI and you start to see a, a concept called AI agents, how different AI uh, and, and different initializations of AI is working together and communicating together. You're going to start to see a lot more of AI talking to AI or AI creating with a different AI like by itself. But if you take that AI is human understanding of synaptics or human understanding of human behavior, then AI can only be what? If all rituals come from the ritualers, <laughs> if all the money comes from the Jews, <laughs> then all the AI, you get what I'm saying? It's not doing something new. It's just doing something that it's observed, which isn't AI at all. It is, it is phantom humans. It's not technology on its own sentience. It's like how white people see the world, like specifically white boys and Indians. Like it's how they see human development, sociology, and things like that. I don't give a fuck what their disclaimers are. They're, they don't have nigga logic. So it cannot, the sentience that they're worrying about with AGI and stuff is nigga logic. White people can't give that to them. You know what I'm saying? They, it's not a gift they can give themselves, unfortunately. So you can't code it because you you don't rock like that. You know what I'm saying? I'm code switching right now. They don't rock like we rock. They don't see it how we see it. They don't understand our social parameters and needs for real. But they have never been given a reason to do that either, right? Like, it's not. I'm not banging on them. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, we beyond that. Like, I'm not even banging on them. I'm just saying they, because of forced integration, we integrated with them, not vice versa. You see what I'm saying? Like that 14th Amendment shit, you know, I'm just doing a full circle. It's to push us and mold us to be more like them, which meant less tribal. So now they're trying to tribalize AI. And what, what I was saying was with the people who are aware in this program of ritual or conspiracy is that the hopelessness of it is equal on both sides. So if I was some type of nefarious creature, hashtag CIA, no matter what my headline is or no matter what I'm doing, I have Pavlo dogged two to three generations of niggas just to have a hip fire response to fuckery. And it's always going to circle back the same way. 
no no matter what. Like, and then you know, we get more nuanced. Oh, oh, there's controlled opposition, Alex Jones, the It's like my nigga's been selling the same book for 20 years, bro. Like, none of the connections got more connected. You know, I haven't seen none of these niggas cry for real and go to any funerals from all these goddamn whistleblowers in there for all these goddamn years who got caught. You know what I'm saying? Cliff High is supposed to have the pyramid pictures and fucking Polaroids from fucking Antarctica. The nigga that took the pictures was a doctor, went off the reservation, sent him the picture, say, hey, you can't leak those until I die. Ock. Look, Cliff High almost died three times. You'd think that nigga have that shit uploaded by now playing with time and Jesus. You know what I'm saying? That they shit ain't panning out for real, for real, for real, for real, for real, for real, for real. Like the shit that matters, bro. Like y'all just let these niggas talk about some slick shit. Like I guess because of the short term memory loss because of shorts, literally memory loss. And it's like, yo, this nigga, this nigga got game changing information about the narrative. Like if we're worrying about natural linguistics and NLP and large language hydron collider models, all oh, you fucking nerds, shut the fuck up. Y'all got enough real shit. To upset some shit. That y'all still too pussy to share. If at all. And that's my problem. My, my problem ain't people having an opinion and a way to live their life and filter their shit out. No, no. I'm talking about the niggas who got propped in position to control the narrative. I watched how they did it. They did it through proximity. Referral to authority. Oh, my connects. You know, this is David Wilcox bag right there. Well, I have, you know... A, conf- a confidential informant who served in the secret soldier program and the jump room to Mars was the zebra clearance. And, you know, and he talked to my guy and that cooperated the story with David Ingram and all that shit. Like, what the fuck's that guy do with you, nerd? You want to show us these people one day? Never has it ever happened. Never have they ever even been doxxed to leak it. It's never been forthcoming. Like, the shit that's the bricks for their... Oh, for, for why we even know who the, their fucking names is all the shit that they haven't said, but they alluded to is is the same thing that Joe Budden does, which is funny because he's doing it. He's doing it in conversation. So he's not serious, but it, it achieves the same thing as a nigga doing a 10 minute YouTube video. And he's he's hitting certain checkpoints for you. Oh, and by the way, this useless product that I tied into the theme of this video right here. Oh, and don't forget to click the bell and all that goofy shit that niggas do exactly the same fucking bots. That shit, Joe Bunny be like, yo, one day we're going to have to have a serious talk about A, B, C, and D. And then the day comes where they're talking about A, B, C, and D. He never has a serious talk. That's all these niggas, though. You feel me? Joe Bunny's a fucking hip-hop podcast dude. That's, that's, I'm not going to hold him to that. That's goofy. It's funny now. It's a trope. But these niggas be like, yo, one day I'm going to have to give you a, you know, I got this one dude, man. He, he saw the shit, bro. Like, he was in it. He was banging with these bitches. Bong, 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 bong. And I'm like, how come there's no ever no niggas when this happens? That'd be the one thing missing from all these stories, like the lack of niggas. Like, I mean, I'm being, I'm, listen, come on now, meet me halfway, think about it. It's a lot of witnesses and testimonies and all kinds of shit, but it's never niggas. It, like, really think about it, like, really put it in perspective. Gaia TV ran for seasons, homie, like, never niggas. There's, I want y'all to think about it now. There's no niggas in a super soldier project? You can't cure cancer without niggas. So you, you telling me you creating the world's fastest, strongest, fighting ass whoever? And there's never a nigga on, on the squad? I can't go for that. No, no, no can do. Because that don't make sense. <laughs> but what I'm saying is it doesn't have to. And I think that's what they mean by controlled opposition. Controlled opposition of what? Narrative. It's a controlled narrative. So even when you fall out the main plan, pan, pans, you fall into another pan that just circles around and catches you. You don't ever get to the bottom of it. And now they can do whatever the fuck they want to do. And if it just resembles Illuminati, it is. So they created a smoke screen, screen of accountability for the greater part of 50 plus years and and I'm almost certain that even the most craziest conspiracy, they're not even a part of. Like, I think these niggas at the CIA are a little bit more rational than that. Because they shit don't leak for real. That means these niggas are serious. At the very least, they're serious. These niggas, these other niggas, these eclipse, these eclipoid niggas, they're not serious enough for me, for me, for me, for me. 
So, you know, I keep that in mind and keep that in rotation. But yeah, back to the Hiram and Labiff and J. Cole and Kendrick. We'll, we'll get to. Let's say hi to the chat. <laughs> Composure Slim was first. Whoa, shout to you. J. God in the building. I see you. Peace. Kai Robinson. Peace to the tribe. Sounds good. Hen, I see you. Raw Tunes on Tunes TV. What's good? Rail Jersey Clubs in the building. Shogun the Supermines in the building. Tunes TV says the the the, the clips dropping soon. You know that's right. I'm, I'm doing the I'm doing the rollout. What they be saying? The energy already here. <laughs> the eclipse already happened. I watched Tenet. <laughs> they, they could time travel fifteen minutes. They can't time travel to another timeline, but they could they could they could fuck with the with the the sun. Uh, got down. What is that? The ecclesiastical rhombus you know, digital square of the holy Roman flower uh, got down reflection or some shit. I don't know. Time or life seems to have a buffer. So like whatever is observing you do all this random shit while you're still breathing and talking and functioning and responding or whatever, like the choice to just move the pattern, to slow it down. All of that is happening before I do it. The time before the decision and the time of the execution of it is called latency. If you play video games or you're on the internet, you know what latency is because I'm live, but you're not live with me. That's a better way of explaining it. How I'm telling you something. And if something like, oh shit, a comet hit and blew up Earth in real time, you would <laughs> you wouldn't even the latency is so crazy, you wouldn't even see that part of my video. But I recorded that part of the video before it happened. You wouldn't see it because the comment got it to you and took you out before the stream finished. That could be 30 seconds. That could be two minutes. That could be five minutes. But you would never know. That's how life is. There's something in between experiences. And that time or that distance can be manipulated. So sometimes when they talk about splitting timelines or jumping timelines, it's, it occurs during those splits. They're not, um, I don't know how, I don't know, you know, I don't know how far, I don't know how much time you really have to do that, but it seems short just from my own experiences, like uh, praying for things that needed to change in real time. It seems to happen in real time. And, and sometimes like, uh, even confirmations, if you were synchronicities that are intentional ones. Like you ever go from like, I try to, ex I've explained this a few times and it's happened a few times since I've explained it too, which is why this is weird. I don't know. I could be thinking about something. Oh, it's a good example. Yo, that should deep. This 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 one happened. This one happened and it fucked with me. So I knew this couple a long time ago. It was a white couple, and the wife was hit by a car or something, unfortunately, and uh, it put her in a position where she had to learn how to walk again and talk again. So it, like, really fucked up her brain. But she was strong as shit. Like, she didn't let that shit slow her down. Like, it fucked. It fucked with her walk. It fucked with her arms. And she talked like she was like mentally, like mentally something was wrong with her. But what's important to note about her, um, she wasn't born like that. You know what I'm saying? So she's and mentally, consciously, a quote unquote, healthy, mentally, a typical person. And now she's not. And she's and when I met her, she was still fighting through that. And these people like in their 30s, early 40s at the time. So for whatever reason, I saw someone who resembled that uh, condition and it made me think about her and it made me think about him because he was a guitar player and I was just thinking about them. But I started thinking about her because I was like, shit, that was like got down 20 years ago. I wonder how much more progress she has made if if she could have. Right. You know, by now. Right. Or even if she's still alive, you know, Lord willing. And um, so I'm thinking of her and her husband and driving past a store. And I seen a dude whose facial features and eye socket and everything looked just like this man. It wasn't him, but it was his face. It was his template. 
And I said to myself, I said, yo, that's fucking wild. I've never seen a nigga that looked like that once, like more than once. But you look just like the nigga that no one looked like. And then as soon as I said it, the next scene was a woman that looked like her. I was like, get the fuck out of my face. Like she had a handicap and everything. And I was like, yo, I was just thinking about these people like yesterday. Things like that. I don't know what that means. You know what I'm saying? I don't know why uh, synchronicities, if you will. I, well, I won't say why. I don't know how synchronicities choose which lingering thought becomes a part of your day. Because I thought about a bunch of shit, but that's what that's what the randomizer picked for me, from, from, from my own internal space. It, it definitely connected with me. Now, is that proactively happening or is it a feedback response to something in me detecting the next day where I would run into these two people who reminded me of these people Thus, 24 hours in advance, feeling that energy made me think about the original energy. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about tenant. <laughs> like, did I run into that forward or did I run? Is it precognition or is it postcognition? That's what I'm saying. And because of that latency and that buffer, the world may never fucking know for real. I don't know. I mean, no one has really been able to chicken or egg that shit for me because it don't make sense. It don't make sense that the universe is so petty, pettily, seemingly like by human observation, Pedally choosing thoughts to manifest as to as to, if you will, wink at you like like if once you really get into the thick of this fuck shit for real, I don't know how deep or how long you've been playing this game called pe peeping game and paying attention. But as soon as you start paying attention to shit like that, I'm describing to you and you stop writing them off as coincidences, you'll realize the latency of that is it, it gets closer and closer to you. It goes from once in a while, because you only acknowledge it once in a while, to once a, you know, a month or during a certain season or a retrograde, you look at the time and everything's repeating numbers and it'll be on and off for you, right? Yeah, that shit's real cute when it's on and off. It's something to talk about and tweet about for real. But what I'm talking about is that this happens to me every day. You know what I'm saying? Like it happens to me every day. Like Whew. If I could pick the slots on this motherfucker, bro, if I could pick, if I could pick the projector, nigga, like, you know, the little plate, if I could pick the motherfucking plate, bro, I'd be out of here for real, for real. Because it seems for me that those occurrences are no longer uh, outside of the ordinary. They have become my ordinary and I'm none the wiser. I, I, I'm no closer to understanding what that is, but it seems like a wink if you will, of, of the universe. <laughs> whatever, right? Like, whatever, whatever the fuck. I kind of feel like this eclipse for me, like, just talking about it, looking into it, people messaging me about it, worrying about it, headlining it, all that shit that you see in your environment, in your phone, and everywhere. It, the, this eclipse is bringing those type of things out of me, personally. Like when everyone's all frazzled, dazzled, EMP'd out and shit, but they're worrying about surviving their hunger. I'm more so worried about before we can get our finger, before we can even finish. Uh, how, so how, well, think of all the progress we made since the last eclipse. Let, let's do it that way, right? The last eclipse was what? Six years, six months, six days, six, six, six ago, right? Cool. So six years ago was what? Let, let me do let me do the knowledge on it. 2017 into 2018 or so, right? Doing the knowledge on it. All right, what was going on on YouTube Paradise as we were experiencing this then? We were on the precipice of acknowledging industry plants and uh, SM Zeus numbers because the music industry, unbeknownst to us, no sound financial reason, decided to run full court press on releasing everything. Like even Missy dropped an album y'all forgot about during that time. <clears throat> and since then, in hindsight, you, you can see how many narratives we had to overcome to get a better picture of what has happened. 
we are just now like in mainstream talking about the music industry, this and the streaming problem that or the playlist that and the dead internet this nigga the internet was dead so long ago because those plays were fake for a long time that was always my problem it's like if you want to juice the numbers unrealistically sound click what that does is not just like give you an uh what does that call it it's it's not the just the unfair advantage right because everything's dual It's not just that these assholes gave themselves an unfair advantage to chart and be seen by so-called real people. It's that they gave the impression that if you do make good music, there's that many people available to give a fuck. That's the real crime against humanity. Shit, Rihanna get 100 million, Kendrick 50. Don't forget, they were running white girls too. Katy Perry get about 30 million. Goddamn Rita Ora, whoever the fuck she is, she get a 10 milli. The, the Sean Mendez ass niggas. The, the, what is it? You remember, they still had white people making music. Goddamn Simon Cowell had that boy group. You know what the fuck I'm talking about before K-pop took it back. You know what I'm talking about? Like, they gave you the impression that there's like a trillion listeners <laughs> to some shit with pianos and 808s in it. And just to just to bring this shit back and your favorite artist quietly low-key just said uh, his projections for first week is 10,000, 10K. I need you to really like appreciate Six years ago. Because six years ago, 100K first week was considered ass. Come on, Nicki Minaj fans. Six years ago or better, 100,000 first week was ass. In retrospect, though, niggas is out here trying to, like, fan shame the 10,000. What is the other thing that came into the zeitgeist? All you really need is 1,000 true fans, yo. You should be independent. All you really need is 1,000 true fans, yo. You let them fucking ooish people put that damn goddamn in our zeitgeist, and guess what happened? Y'all be missing it, though. You see what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. I don't think everyone's been paying attention this long. I know there's a few, but I don't know how many of us have been paying attention this damn long. Everything we said happened. So if all you need is a thousand true fans to make a living, this is what your best artists have access to. It's a spell. So the the 10K is actually good in a world where you only need one. But that's after a world where you were lied to that there were millions. Millions of people ain't here no more. What did Trump say? People dying and never died before. Was he talking about the bots? Because the number one prime directive that Elon ran on Twitter or X or whatever the fuck you want to call it is the fact that they've purged bots, I think, publicly two and a half, three times now. You know what I'm talking about? And you pay attention to your subscribers on YouTube dropping or Twitter, uh, your followers go away or Instagram. Like that's them purging bots usually or the main account being linked to other accounts and they just cut the whole tree. Think about how pervasive just that is, that the entire platform has to hunt bots. Know that. Um, So that's six years ago. Six years ago, people come into terms with the fact that the internet was dead and so was the mainstream media. And that's why all these narratives and mergers and all these things was happening is because there wasn't real people to steal real money from or <laughs> real money's an oxymoron. There were no real people to get their energy credits of fiat from. No one was paying attention. It's not that no one's paying attention. It's that, that there's not a million fan groups of a million people. It's the same 100,000 people, and they have to choose between Netflix, Hulu, Prime. They have to choose between new shit and nostalgia. They have to choose between games and watching TV or just being on a phone. It, when it's 10,000 people only paying, you see what the problem is. But all of those companies were formed off of the gnosis that there was millions of people participating in media consumeration. And it wasn't. Because not only were the internet uh, propagators lying and let the lie live, why? 
why would SoundClick let superstar O Johnny Giuliano and Vibes get 50,000 views a day each on a website that didn't get 5,000 people in traffic daily? Because as long as me and you believed that Superstar O Beats can get 50,000 views a day, I'm good for five, baby. I know I'm good for five. Just let me get on this chart. How do I get on this chart? I now have to pay SoundClick $200. So even if the numbers are fake by the winners, all of the losers who want to be winners are being taxed by the platform. That's where the money is. The money is in selling hope. Even if it's digital, that's always been where the money's been. Nonetheless, which is why I try to stay far away from that world of, you know, promising shit. I can't promise y'all nothing, niggas nothing like on, on my little short 40 years of life, almost. I can't, I can't promise nobody nothing but the fact that this shit is going to stay goofy. Like life has never not been goofy as long as I've been peeping game. And my peeping game is different than most people. But whatever that means to you, for almost 40 years in a row, I've been peeping game and it just keeps getting stupid. It, it, it don't do nothing. It doesn't, it's not giving what's supposed to be gave as the sisters and the brothers in Atlanta would say. So, nah, no, no, no. These eclipses make me feel like that. Like we barely got our bearings together with what just happened to us and our, my music brothers, like how they really played us on so many different fronts. And the eclipse gives it the opportunity to instantly change again. That's where I'm at. I'm not, I'm not, you know, we, we don't have too much time to cry over spilled milk, but if it does change because of eclipses, right? Like, if if the ancestors now, like like now we gotta refer to our authority, right? And I think um the brother King Well, shout out to you. He hit me up on Cash App and gave me a donation to uh to um peep the end of this brother panic video. And I did that. I obliged. Because the brother didn't have to send me no money to do that. But he did. And it's in the 3 a.m. It's this video uh right here. It was called Brother Panic Spiritual Protection in the Pandemic. And King Mo says, yo, I was instructed to let you do the knowledge to this. Much respect. It was made for now. Start at three hours, 30 minutes into it and write it all the way out. There's confirmations. They're powerful. And share your finding with the tribe, please. I'm going to send you to 6.66893696181189. 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, okay. Wishing you will look out for the effort of the little respiratory. R oh, he's talking about reciprocity. All right, shout out to King and Well. Boom, boom, boom. So the end of that video, Brother Panic uh, is talking about Baba Luaye. And he made a lot of references to uh, Lucy Bell and Ricky Ricardo from I Love Lucy and how Ricky Ricardo was a, um, a host or avatar for Baba Luaye. And he pointed to the video of him performing on the drum singing Baba Luaye. <laughs> Um, and his story being from Cuba in some prime network uh, documentary about them. And he kept recommending people watch it. Cool. So that's one thing. So he so he was um, connecting Baba Luae to the panty because he's in control of health. And disease and stuff like that. So if there is a so-called disease, which we know. We don't think we know <laughs> Most disease comes from your aura. Um, back in the day, I think Crow Triple Seven kind of put me hip to that too. Low key, high key. I used to watch a uh, Crow Triple Seven's podcast before he went behind a paywall. Goofy as hell, boy. It, it was such a good podcast because he, Crow Triple Seven has a no nonsense Gen X boomer white man way of dealing with information. He ain't got time for fuck shit. If you seen the interview me and him did, he don't he don't waste brain cycles. But he was talking, he was doing some research about this uh healer from the Middle Ages or some shit. And basically what was unique about this this guy he was talking about is that he listed how people got sick. And one of the reasons a person gets sick is due to star sickness. And I thought that was interesting because that's basically, you know, your birth chart being affected by 
astral, you know, alignment, which is what spiritualists are saying now. But for him to point that out, like, nah, like niggas in the, the Moors in Europe or some shit, somebody over there, they was already on it like that. And they were treating you based on gnosis of the stars. But if we know stars are just like these magnetic entities, right? The light is a sign of friction or movement. And if there's movement, there's magnetism. Your body, your core, your atoms, your heart, your brain, all of that is generating spin, right? We call them chakras, but they're just spinning. They're, they're spinning ports. Portal, ha, portals, ah, da, da, da. So if a portal does, if, if the 8 8 is a fucking 4 8 is a goddamn portal, what the fuck you think is going to affect you, goddamn, you smart geniuses, you? Your portals is going to affect your chakras. Your chakras generate what? Your auric field, or as uh, the crazy lady, Sabrina Wallace on Bitch You, she calls it your uh, bio field. And you don't find too much information about it. But they say your biofield is 80% of your immune system. Hold that. Just hold it. 80%. Not some of it. Hold that. I want you to think about it. If if that's true, right? Do your own research, goddammit. Hashtag disclaimers. Back, I'm going to get back to what Panic said to but if 80% of your immune system is indeed in your aura slash biofield, then what that means is that now we understand why it doesn't matter what niggas are eating. What I'm saying is you have a household of kids all on the same junk food diet and maybe mama cook too. But either way, this, this, the tasty cakes, they eat the same amount. Matter of fact, they compete and try to eat the last one amongst each other. But only one of them get diabetes. Like, oh, it's genetics. No, these are the same niggas. These are the niggas with the same blood. What the fuck are you talking about? These are niggas with the same sleep schedule, relatively. These are the niggas in the same environment, the same hugs and kisses, we hope. But do that times thousands. And you keep seeing it pop. Like, this, how the fuck this nigga gonna die a year after he retire? What's the fucking purpose? Like, you know what I'm saying? Or, 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 or. Yo, this nigga's been smoking his whole life and he don't even die of cancer. Like, niggas be real salty about that one because they low-key be wanting to smoke. But whatever the case may be, right? 80% of all of those factors is not even visible. So, placebo effect. Something that you put into your digestive system. Your digestive system is what? Your immune system. But what? It's 20% of it. Thus, it cancels out the placebo and all that because it's not the it's not what you digested in your bloodstream that fixed it. It's you somehow or another coordinating and convincing your biofield, aka your aura, aka your mood about the affliction, and changing that utterly and completely with certainty. Oh, ye of little faith, mustard seed, have an ass nigga, you. And if you can successfully trick yourself to tune or retune your biofield you necessarily get better. They can miss me with all the other shit, all the, how they want to break that down or reverse engineer it further. Fuck that nigga. Like, talk to me about this biofield. Talk, talk to me nice. What is this What is this aura really about? And then you find out people, like the Germans and the Soviets got pictures for your aura. Like they could take pictures of your of the biofield. And if the biofield's like CERN, which is generating a biofield, by the way, whose biofield we don't know. But if it's a portal opener, it's a biofield opener, Bi biofield, portal, chakra, wheels, spinning wheels, chakras, chakras, seven candles, manoas, chakras, the seven cities of revelation, chakras, the rainbows for the LGBT, chakras, inverted chakras, nonetheless, do the math on it. These portals affect your chakras. They, they, they affect the way you spin. And if you've ever meditated or laid down or been drunk, you know what that spin feel like. So that's what the sun, that's at least we know at the very least the sun is capable of affecting that thing, which gives us 80% of how we feel. <laughs> People be thinking like you need to sit in the sun so that it cleanses, you know, the physical points of contact. Like my eyes with the floaties. Get some sunlight and some of the floaties will go away. Or something, right? Where, where to? One of them niggas, one of them niggas painted all his pictures with floaters and cardiac. Uh, yeah, cardiac. Uh, was it? Was it Gango? 
one of them niggas had cardiac. And there's a quote saying, how come you never fix that? And he was like, because if it's responsible for the way that I see my world, then those things are also responsible for how I draw my world. You know what I'm saying? Basically, he said, don't fuck with the magic, nigga. <laughs> but you think it's the sun damaging it or too much or too less of it, whatever. And, and by and far, 20% of that is true. One out of five times, you're probably right. But in all the other times when you're actually sitting in a square, you know, you're squaring a circle, you're sitting in a square that's containing a circle and it gets no harmony. It gets no chords. It gets no sauce from the sun because you're not out there. It's because it's not because it's not touching your face. You can see the light. I can see the light right now. That's not what it's adjusting. though. It's not adjusting my senses. It's adjusting my biofield. You get grounded. Why? To get the energy off of your aura. It's all in the unseen. Overstand that. All of the remedies that are spiritual are the things that affect the things which your senses do not detect naturally or or currently at its program frame rate. You don't detect it, but it's there. All the remedies of grandma and them and older old Indians is that they were able to see that. Right. That's why in our community, they say you can see through the veil. And that's why sometimes in some of our community, you'll see kids and people who are not adept or initiated say things like i can see auras you know i don't think nothing of it like you know they think it's cool (laughs) but they're not fucking with it you know it's one thing to have the gift to see it but it's another to have the gift to fuck with it because if you can see it that's because you can fuck with it you know that right you you can't just see it because you're a human that has one no 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 you those of you niggas who can see auras is because you that's that's a two-sided gift. And I'll let you figure out the rest. You, you, you're not equipped with no tools that you're not supposed to be using. So let's jump back to this panic thing. So he's talking about Baba Luaye. He's talking about even during that time, not in that video, but during that time, he's talking about Beetlejuice and the explosion of that star that's arranged near the belt of Orion and its explosion and its fate, what they call it, phage, lambda, energy, and how that affects you, your aura, your chakras. But in this video, he didn't go there yet. He was just talking about Baba Luaye. And he was having some pain in his gums. And he was talking about Baba Luaye can make, make quick healing of that. And he was just going through that. Basically, he was trying to put people onto that energy because it's available. Because Baba Luaye is uh, like the Santeria or the clone or the remixed version of biblical Lazarus, you know, Jesus' cousin. You know, Lazarus, get up, Lazarus, raised from the dead. Mind you, before Jesus is rose from the dead, he rose somebody else from the dead. You know what we're talking about? Talking about as above, so below. So Jesus did what was done to himself and people, you see what I'm saying? Like, that's what I mean by like these open-ended boxes that people fall, fall, find themselves in in these conspiracies. It's because like, even with Yeshua or Jesus or Roman pontiff, whatever the fuck, man, even in that story, you telling me niggas on the east side are beefing and blowing each other up because one nigga believe Jesus rose from the dead and another nigga says, nah, not really, fam. Like, first of all, neither one of you was his mans in them. So I don't even know how y'all cross the wires of lines to start being hostile about the facts. Like, there's no reason for you to care, honestly. Like, Gentile, Goyim or not, or indifferent. There's no reason to provoke yourself into a military conflict over your lack of access to a brother who may or may not have been killed by Romans or or voted off by the Judeans or whatever the fuck the story needs to be for y'all niggas to shoot each other. It's not enough for me. But in that story where people have the contention with him rising on the third day, you know, we have Passover and Easter, which by the way, all kind of ending. Ramadan is ending when, by the way, right? You know what I'm talking about? It's happening again, right? All the loops, all the triggers that are supposed to be transformative, because Ramadan is transformative through the practice of it, right? Through fasting and uh, self-affliction and, and, and having a waiting period, a rebuilding period of certain chemicals and hormones. The science, but then they painted it pretty so to make sure you pay your tithes. I get it. Respect. But the science of it is all about the new new year, right? This is the real new year. So all of this stuff is coalescing at the same time. Hold on. I'm about to, I'm about to go totally. I'm about to go warp speed somewhere else. Let me bring that back. Mm. Tenant. So panic. 
Baba Luai Lazarus and the people riffing with each other. And it was like, y'all debating on whether or not Jesus came back, but none of you beefing about Lazarus. Did a man named Lazarus exist? Let's start there because that seems a less hostile approach. Did Lazarus exist? Well, he didn't exist. How did he make his ass all the way over to America as Baba Luai? All right. Okay. So he, he, he was cool enough to exist in multiple cultures, including West Africa and America. Okay. So Baba Luai, a.k.a. Lazarus. So y'all don't debate whether or not Yeshua visited his cousin or whether or not his cousin rose from the dead himself. And, and, and that's curious to me. They're not beefing on whether or not they could be rose from the dead. They're beefing on whether or not he's God's son. That's a whole different, that's a whole different chapter that they beefing about. They're not even beefing about the ability to raise the dead. That's, that's never been in question because if it was in question, they wouldn't just be looking at Jesus. They'd be looking at every other character in that book that's had a similar outcome and they haven't. There's no contention for real, unless you're just flat out atheist, which is fine, whatever, you know, have fun with that. But it's all about the Anunnaki or the L for them. It's, it's about, you know, who's, who's sky daddy is your daddy. It's not about the cool things you can do because you have a sky daddy. So the, so the things you can do are there. So if you can see auras, then the things that you can do are there because what you're, what you're telling me is that you can see life force. Hi, hi, Lazarus. Hi, Yeshua. Hi, Baba Luaye. So Panic's going in about Baba Luaye from his perspective. And he was really like um, beating a dead horse about his ability to channel and the channeling he's done years ago in the early 2000s. I take that kind of stuff with a grain of salt. I don't know what channeling really is, nor have I really, really knocked on its door. Because just like those of you who can see auras, I may know a few people who can speak and hear things if they needed to. It's just a matter of um, <laughs> this stuff, the stuff that we do, the stuff that we lost because we became centralized, tr tribally. You know, we we're not really filling in any blanks. Like this is all new to us. Tribally, this is very common amongst us. We just no longer have the boxes to put it in. For real, for real. Like I'm just. Proof. You know what I'm talking about? I'm just a symbol of an older concept. That there's those of us who've always been 3 a.m. And they're critical to our tribes. At least in terms of narrative. And then you have other brothers who are just as critical because they're strong. And you have other brothers who are just as critical because they are straight and narrow. And they are no bullshit. And they're going to perform. So... It's like, you know, regathering uh, King Arthur's round table or the 12 hours or the 12 disciples or the 12 zodiac signs, right? I seen some other brother uh, speaking about how you find a Lilith on your birth chart and all the negative qualities of Lilith was actually a combination of all the negative qualities of the other signs in your chart. So like if you have Leo and Leo has a positive and negative and so on and so forth, he was saying that instead of trying to memorize all the negative polarities of those houses, just look at your Lilith and that will encompass all of them. I don't know who that's going to help because I'm not really on the Lilith science like that, but shout to that brother. I think he said he was a student of Dolo. Shout to him too. They all got something to say. So yeah, so this is, this is common for us. The cipher is very common for us. What we were allowed to politic about publicly or without the internet was very limited. Thus, it's limited engagement. Just like now on social media, it's very limited engagement. It's not because it's not widespread, though. It's not because there's not more of it somewhere, you know, being handled differently. It just lacks engagement. And because of these, you know, solar events and the fact that our mainstream media is mirroring the so-called conscious woo communities, both black or white, now, now those people are about to be pinged to start speaking up too, 
the ones who've been quiet, the older ones, you know, the boomers even, who've been super quiet because during their time period, you couldn't be shit. You couldn't be gay. You couldn't be lazy. You couldn't be unmarried. You couldn't be shit with the boomers. The boomers all had one destination and they judged everybody else on how far along that destination they became. For real, for real. At least that's what it seemed like to, to a millennial watching them. It's more extreme in religious setting and Christianity and stuff. You can see it like it's, it's all or nothing with them. And that has not served them. As selfish as they were about being righteous, they weren't selfish enough about doing what's right. Shout out to the chat. What's good, MG? This is one of one. Trying to get myself off this timeless timelessness, bro. Oh, you're going you gonna to get there. Seek ye shall find. Mr. Now is in the building from Italy, or was. Hopefully, you still are. Oliver is in the building. Tony Rod is in the building. Shout out to Nature says, I've been been watching your content. Grateful for y'all young men are coming back into y'all memory, a.k.a. Wada. Peace, love, and truth. Squad. Taryn Art is in the building. Shogun, peace, salute. <laughs> Shogun says, but Dolph is trash. I can, I can string it all the way back to that Dolph thing. Yeah, that, that's the branch that you have in people who saw themselves in Dolph because they saw their way out that he hit all of the benchmarkers for success in community and tribalism. And that must be the recipe for his success because maybe musically, lyrically, and, and even on an engineering level, which is usually my gripe with the new people, it ain't Jay-Z, Nas, or what we rated Dr. Dre at. So it was like, how do you even put this persona in the conversation if the music is not in the conversation? Another character that's a lot like that, you know, and we'll get mixed responses about that, but that's Nipsey Hussle. Nipsey Hussle, when he started on Twitter, like, you know, when he started to get known by people outside of his, uh, you know, regions, he wasn't all the way there lyrically. His mixes weren't all the way there, but he started hitting his stride a little bit and getting way better beats. Shout the keys and all of them. Shout the knife wonder, uh, save the world. Um, yeah, you know, you saw the production value change. You got Hip Boy involved, Mustard, you know, and that became something else. But you, but, but it was never, can he rap better than the game? Game's a lot of things, but that nigga could rap. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Like, if we talk about rap, the game could rap. All the other shit he got going on. Like all of us do, for real. So, yeah. So, you see Hiram and Mabiff with this shit. You see the Hebrew Israelite, Kendrick Lamar, being hit in the head by the Uish people or the Germans. I think in both cases, they they have white Germanic descent mothers. Correct me if I'm wrong. I know uh, the religion of Drake's mother is Judaism, but that don't mean nothing. But wherever their, you know, skin color came from, wherever they were before they were in America, because we, at least we know they're not American, um, they come from somewhere else. They come from Europe. And it's cool. That's not disrespect. That's just accurately speaking. So you have a half Europeans and half something else. And, and, and that's interesting, too. I don't think a lot of people divide colors up like I do. <laughs> Must be tribal. But there is a difference between a black American who's a descendant of Americans and an African. But in recent time, there's still a difference, like especially in recent time between a black American father serving the army, fucking some bitch in World War II versus an African having a baby with a Jewish woman and they grew up in Canada or America. Those are different types of people. But the curious thing I think about Cole and Drake is I think they're the same kind of person. I think Drake is definitely seemingly, I think his father is an American nigga. I think, I think, I think they're little people. They got the big mustaches. He got the copper color skin. His daddy, Tennessee, yeah. His daddy got the blueprint for an American. So Drake is half American, half European. That's the beginning of the story, by the way, right? 
The energy that's in the air today is correspondent to the energy during the American Revolution. American Revolution is happening up north where you have New Amsterdam and you have all these Dutch colonies and Germanic people. You have Benjamin Franklin uh, lamenting about this Germanic invasion of what they set up. So if you're a hip hop and then you go, has there been an African or a Germanic invasion of your craft again at the same exact sun cycle that it originally occurred? The answer is yes. The answer is yes. Everyone's voting for a goat who's not indigenous. Again, we're voting for people who may not be chiefs. This is the pinnacle of that on a subconscious, subcultural level layer. Some people say, oh, it's not that deep. It don't matter. It's not, nothing's deep to you, nigga. <laughs> Stay in the shallow water. But for the people who, who that may be deep to, like, think about it. Like, that means something to our story, like, to the whole story of what United States became and what America continent is. It, it's deep, deep. Yeah, 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 yeah. That shit's deep. The poverty problem is deep. The immigration problem is deep. The co-opting of a federation or, or confederacy is deep. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because it affects us because it was ours. A lot of these, it ain't deep niggas ain't from here. And, and respect to that fact. But this shit ain't yours to be deep about. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm talking about, chiefs. That's what I'm talking about, chiefs. Everybody can't tell our story because everybody ain't everybody. Everybody ain't everybody, y'all. Cut that shit out, bro. Nip that shit in the bud, for real. There's levels in which you you collaborate and, 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 and you unify. You link up. But you have to have a solid link. You have to have an awareness of the fact that you're a link first. Then you can link up. Ain't nothing wrong with linking up. But in terms of narrative about you, nah, keep that shit separate. Because that's your operating system. The narrative is your operating system. When people disrespect your narrative, when people subtract from your narrative, or if people downplay your narrative, what they are doing is acting as an op. Let me be serious. If you are what you say you are a superstar, if you are what you say you are, if you're a descendant of Americans, the original indigenous people, Anybody else who look like you or don't want to talk about what they know and what they reference that somehow is trying to push that energy back or away from you, from your birthright, they can go to hell. Necessarily and decidedly, they need to go to hell because they're fucking with you. You get what I'm saying? It, we ain't talking about sneakers. We're, we're not talking about fashion. We're not talking about uh, resume ideas. We're, we're not talking about art. Mm -mm. Narrative is operating system. We're talking about your mind. Your mind dictates how you feel. Your feelings dictate your aura. So when people are throwing work on you and the work is um, measured in energy and the energy is magnetic and the magnet is your aura and your Palo Santo and clearing your aura, you're putting stuff into your, into your mouth or your nose to get it in to the digestive system and change your state of blood and feeling. And it goes back to your aura, back to the crown, it emits back out. So when you're running with your narrative, or whatever you believe, whatever your mama said you were when you went to school in fourth grade and someone's going to sit there and tell you you're not, they're trying to change you, bro. They're trying to change your aura, meaning some of the things they can say or suggest to you, whether they know it or not, or whether they're trying to or not, can make you sick. Because that's how serious that box is. It's not a favorite Pokemon box. It's your operating system box. And a lot of people have been treating our operating system cards like they're just some fucking useless USB sticks. Like, I've seen people get so emboldened when having these conversations now that they're saying, well, you guys should have just won the war then. And I'm like, which war? And which war were you in to take that narrative? Like, you didn't fight in the war either. You know that, right? We could fight today. And I'll make quick of that. I'll make haste. You can't see me 
and I'm the least dangerous of my tribe. So I don't think that's what happened either. Or it's an attack on you. It's an attack, it's an attack on your operating system. That's why as much shit as I talk about the people who have attacked us, I will not talk shit about other people. Like, I'm not going to berate and belittle all the crazy shit going on in Africa because Africa got enough of its own problems. Africa's got a lot of beautiful stuff about it, though. I can go ham on Indians. Like, don't get me started now. But there's there's a lot that they've contributed and there's a lot of beauty that they can produce. China. You want to talk about the restaurants or you want to talk about the people? You want to talk about the communism? We can do that all day. That's gross, though. Because there's no reason to do that. There's no reason to attack their story. There's no reason to change their narrative. I'll get into hot conflict and war with them when they're acting like my narrative is their narrative. And that's something totally different. You have to untie those strings. Especially now. Because this is reverse integration. Decentralization of your economy necessarily necessitates de-integration or, yeah, I'm going to make, that ain't a word, but I'm thinking we're going to run with that. The 60s was integration, capitalism, industrial revolution, war, growth, growth, mad men, 90s, golden era. Now we're hitting recession, de-integration. That's what this is. Gentrification was the start of de integration, right? Because the cities is how they integrated us. And then when they were done, they started to push us out the city again. This is the great migration all over again. Y'all missed it. I ain't miss it. That's what I'm saying. I've only been around here about 40 goddamn years, but they've been telling us the same play. It's in a it's in a loop or a cycle, right? It seems it seems that it's functioning or behaving in a cyclical, repetitive manner. And each cycle or repetition, it loses some of its flair, but it's still there. The loop is still there. Like, they don't control the loops for real. You feel me? You feel what I'm saying? So you got this eclipse. Look at look at all the fear or loosh that could be in the discussion. But think about the actions, right? I'm talking about instead of, like, pontificating on conspiracies, let's, let's deal with the money a little bit. Like, how much a rocket costs? How much is it going to cost NASA to fire off three for no fucking reason? Like, so tomorrow marks the day that both CERN wants that high ass electric bill and NASA wants to drop billions of dollars in the middle of global economic uncertainty. See, we we be parsing these things separately. Like, nah, we're in a global financial catastrophe, potentially on paper now. Like the AI or the computer bots that have been holding it up are holding it up. They look like Atlas in this motherfucker right now. Like, oh shit, we can't move. So peak that, right? Like at peak, at least at peak, whatever the fuck this is, them niggas just going to trick off. <laughs> how much, how much you think CERN about to trick off to find anti-energy? How much energy are they about to trick off to observe lack of energy? Think about that now. It ain't free. I'm about to pay to see nothing. At the same time, you have a financial catastrophe. But, you know, Sweden and them niggas got some other shit going on. Word to the World Bank. But NASA now, you know, government budget cut Baltimore Bridge. Don't forget, they got to the, the Fed need a Trilly or Billy or something. A Mac Millie. Don't get slapped silly when I hit you with the Mac Millie. I don't know where that rap came from, but they got a bridge to build. Flint still has a water crisis. You, you, do you see what I'm saying to you? Like, it's clear the objectives of your, at least the federal government, is, you know, it doesn't seem to line up and add up to any outcome that you would hope for as a civilian, for sure. Like, at the very least, it's not in, it's not in your agenda that you allegedly supposed to participate and vote for, as that's what we, the people of the Republic, are. But if you quickly find yourself as a 14th Amendment citizen, and you stop being we, the people, and your Confederacy got co-opted into a corporation, then, you know, it might look like this. The people then telling you that, and you just shrug it off. And that's what I'm saying. We shrug off a lot of the important details, like how much all of this stuff costs. 
Like, how much money are they throwing around to fuck around with some benign eclipse? That's what that's what made me want to think about it a little bit more. Like, yeah, they're not doing none of this for free. Even to run it as a psyop, where they want you to loose and worry. Someone's paying the teleprompter people to make the teleprompt for all your news. Someone is paying the bloggers to put on the websites. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not. It's, it's not because I say so. You know what I'm saying? Like, they got to pay for that. So they paid for this awareness of this eclipse now. Don't get it twisted. Why, though? Why make everyone that you can aware that the time is changing? Baba Luaye. So he's in control of uh, pestilence and disease and curing and stuff. Word to St. Lazarus. And panic for whatever reason, you know, he passed since then, but for whatever reason, he emphasize this entity or energy. That's what I got at the end of that video. And then he says something that was kind of off character, not off character for him, but maybe uh, unexpected seeing it in his passing is that he took time like in the last five minutes and he repeated himself several times to this effect. And I'm paraphrasing. I'm not, he said, I'm giving, he said, basically, I'm not giving you all of this for you not to use it. I'm telling you to use it. And he just kept saying that. Like out of all the things that he teaches or that he stood on, it's like, you know, here's the book, read it, you know, go ahead and practice it. You know, don't talk about how you think and how you feel. Talk about your experiences. You know, he's a big experience first person, which I, I appreciate more than ever. Because it's almost, it's not that we can't say it. It's that until other people experience it, there ain't nothing to talk about. You know what I'm saying? Like, it don't matter how groovy the adjectives and metaphors are. Usually the people who experience this stuff aren't the wordsmiths. So you can't describe it but so much. But if enough people experience it, then we get into that whole if you know, you know type energy. And then we can go build off of that. But so he was more, nah, use this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He never says, the, you know what I'm saying? He never tells you what to do. But in, at the end of that video, he's telling you, because this is peak, you know, lockdown. Use this. Use this entity. Use this spirit to protect you and your family. And that's spooky because he's not here no more. Yeah. So the brother, t so that has nothing to do with the eclipse per se. But if for some off chance that the eclipse is a uh, ritual, <laughs> if the eclipse is a ritual and the ritual is going to generate energy and that energy is going to be allocated for another agenda or manifestation of reality in the ritualizer's hands, then the other things that have been on the table kind of like in the cut of all of this is like in the background, there's been a lot of chatter about um, swine flu and similar variations of things that are breaking out and crossing into our food supply as per usual, you know, this is, we're not new to this, but I've noticed some of the go-to headliners that I follow threw it out there, but people didn't ramp, you know, people didn't run with it. Like people weren't signing up to go to CVS and Walgreens this weekend because some fucking cow. But noting that it's the new year now, we're in the spring, the sun is starting to come out. So it's starting to warm up a little bit, Lord willing. And they want to give you the, the, the thought of the winter and the cold again. They want to give you the thought of flu season. You know what I'm saying? Like in April, like, I don't know, maybe I don't know my flu season is on Mandela effect or something, but. When I was a child, the only time I really ran the risk of getting a cold was in the winter. You know, when the summer, we were outside sweating all summer and all of a sudden that weather changed and our pores changed with it. Then a lot of people would get different effects of that. But getting summer in the spring or summer, getting, uh, you know, a respiratory infection in the spring or summer is hell. That's the last thing you want to be sick. That's the last season you want. So, you know, them setting that up 
why you have peak sunlight, which would combat it because of your biofield and vitamin D production, which is what you need anyway to fight all the other shit. So just being outside in the ideal time to be outside, they're trying to put a chink in that armor and that confidence, I think, just through the power of suggestion. But I went through the comments and most people was like, we ain't doing this shit again. Shout out to my white people out there who are holding it down and my bots because there's a lot of it's bots. But a lot of people ain't trying to go through that shit again. Because a lot of people have said like 2024 is a loop of 2020, 2021 or something. Don't go to no, don't get me quoting and crunching numerology on this shit. That ain't my bag right now. But I think that's what the sentiment was. Like you got 2024, two, two, that's an eight year. You got the karma loop. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? It's a solar eclipse on the eights. And the year is an eight. It's a, eight, it's a year eight for the for this calendar, at least. Then you got some connection to a previous couple of years ago. Right, maybe that was Brother Newell. Maybe that was in the fucking research that we were doing with the um, timeline jumping. Yeah. Either way, it's a repeat. Not all repeats are all reruns. Or they're not reruns, but not all repeats are uh, more so like Cowboy Bebop. Like <laughs> the Cowboy Bebop adaptation on Netflix ain't the same thing as Cowboy Bebop, the anime. It's close though. And so a lot of these energies are trying to repeat or they're trying to remix. Just like the girl on Twitter that got chewed up for ruining the uh, project. I got me a project chick. Give me a hood ratchet. They ruined that beat. And they put that tragic mulatto girl up there rapping about Lord knows what, very unenthusiastically reading right off the paper type rap. And that backfired. I don't know why, though. If AI analyzed the trends thus far since 2018 or so, and you looked at everything that's worked on social media with the female rappers, almost all of them got the same stimulus package. You take the raunchy nigga song with the raunchy beat, remix it, flip it, add drums, and put the raunchy chick on it. It hasn't failed yet. Take he fuck these niggas up. Like, it hasn't failed yet, for at least for the amount of pressure they needed to cross over. She did the same thing bar for bar, and they're like, nah, you can't get in. They locked the doors to the game the same way they did with Kendrick, Kenny, and your man fame. Being famous isn't everything, but sometimes everything is nothing. So, like... You only allow to have tri- uh, <laughs> trippy red young thug look like uh, Drake. Drake's, you know, what's her name? Se- I don't even call her sexy because that's disrespectful. Um, Miss Red, OVO, Glo- uh, Glorilla. Was she? She Memphis or something, right? She's somewhere. She Cardi B second cousin or some shit. And literally though, that's no accident. And then you got. The chick from New York, uh, Ice, Ice, Ice Spice, the uh, Spice Girls. So you got the three regional songstresses. And now peep, peep that though. Don't miss the. If I knew how to do the math on that, I would. But there's something to that. You get one from New York, one from where Dolph is and where all that energy is, and then you get the other one. Where's the other girl from? I don't even know. I know we got Lotto in Texas just for good measure. I think we should have some in Cali. You know, if they want to be represented. But you're not going to get more than three. You're not going to get more than five. The other twos are just possibles for you to debate about. So you feel represented. But it's always three. It's always a big three. And this new girl ain't going to be part of the big three. So she ain't going to be nothing. And keep in mind, dead internet theory and bots. I don't think a lot of that discourse is natural. Because the formula is the formula. The kids should love it. Because that's what the kids been loving. It's been whack. It's whack when the other girls did it. But today, it's a different type of whack. Nah, nigga, y'all playing too much. Something changed. We could say something changed in the atmosphere, or you could say something changed in the agenda propagating this type of music or sound. I don't care. This is the same shit to me. It changed. So we're heading into this eclipse, and we're starting to see signs of, like, as soon as we, with life, not even an eclipse, as soon as you get comfortable, not not comfortable like comfort, but comfortable like, this is the type of crazy I can deal with. I get it. Everyone's fucking nuts. I get it. And then you grieve it and you go through it. And then you start rising like, well, I'm going to let these motherfuckers be nuts about themselves. I'm going to go ahead and get on my mission and my purpose and do what the fuck I need to do. And you navigate the nuts. 
but now it's about to change again. I, you know, it's the saying, it's the adage, it's the maximum. You're a day late and a dollar short. For me, and I can only speak for me, I felt like I just came to terms with the fact that this shit's nuts. Like, I feel like I finally got to a point in my ministry where I can live and conduct myself in such a matter where it's like, fine. I let all the, the old life is dead. Everything in the past, all my, you know, perceptions or uh, calculations and the way life is supposed to be, all of that drama, letting it go. I'm just going to freestyle this for a little bit because life doing too much, honestly, is just doing way too much. And then the minute you're okay with that, life goes, <laughs> It's like the hidden boss, yo. It's like, you know, you kicking ass from Mortal Kombat. Eight rounds in a row. You just fucking everybody up. And all of a sudden, they just freeze the screen. You know, fuck up your energy. Fuck up your, you know, your, your clicks permitted and shit. And then put this reptile nigga up there. It's like, now you got to fight some nigga. You never even seen his fighting style before. Have fun, bitch. And the first thing that nigga reptile do is piece you up with an uppercut. And you can't stop it. That's what life is like, bro. Life is like, got. Life be be doing like little secret shit. Like even for the bad guys, it seems like the bad guys be like, yeah, we finally got Pablo dog popping. And then all of a sudden their wife is barking. <laughs> it's like life is like, yeah, you did. You did it. You, you did it to yourself. That's what I wish these lunatics in the rituals appreciated more is that every spell, work, thought, imagination, nudge, propaganda piece necessarily affects them too. So it's almost like masochistic. What is it? How you say that word? Mas- I'm a masochist. Mas- 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 we, I don't know. Only, I feel like only people who have that can say that word. But um, the need to hurt yourself through ritual abuse is crazy to me. And that's what it feels like. What has any proverbial they that you can identify have accomplished? If, if, if your proverbial they was the Bilderbergs, or BlackRock and Vanguard and their friends and the Trilateral Commission, the, count, the Commission of 300 or whatever, which you also see emulated in hip hop. Um, if if those were the, the blue, the white collar, blue collar version of they, have you done like a an assessment on their progress report today? Like since the 9-11 conspiracy videos up until now, have you checked in on those groups? Or, or the proverbial Rockefeller... Rothschild families, like, have you seen King Charles Fingers, my nigga? Or you get into, like, the music industry was kind of like for us, this is our disco is dead moment with all these creeps. But even if you felt or joked that it was kind of creepy, just look look at the determined outcome for the whole thing now because of how creepy it really was and how many people were involved in the creep. Yeah, just keep it on the down low. I mean, the message, the sigil was there. And then Lauren Hill came and hit us with the ill-ass spell right before she said, fuck everybody. The way it all falls down. And then Kanye West had the nerve as a nerd to remake it, to sample that. And make that the hook of a song. That wasn't the hook when she said it on the damn Unplugged, was it? Shout out to Tragic. Tragic be tripping on that shit. You got All Falls Down. And then Kanye added his 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 version of reality to it. Now, now, mind you, everything that Kanye described as the proverbial baddie, which was represented by Stacey Dash, which is what, Dame Dash cousin, right? Such a weird family. And everything that he said that she was going through, this is 2002, three. Fast forward, Kevin Samuels. And the coming to Jesus moment for a lot of our sisters that followed that girl's path in that song, whether by hook or by crook. A lot of women picked the proverbial Stacey Dash route oh, I should just do this, you know, do hair. I should just do this and get my education and do this. And at least my baby is taken care of and whoop, whoop, whoop and Atlanta and all of that. Like that's the zeitgeist. That's that's literally a program that I've seen so many people 
walk into. And I'm talking about people who are not from that, who became that, or who pursued that, or who tweeted that, or who shared that, or who followed that, or Bad Girls Club that, or Love and Hip Hop that. It's all from that. And the same song that's a curse, right? It all falls down. Because Kanye is starting to, you know, he was, he was red pilling or purple pilling in his lyrics. Now, he was, he, he was too much of a simp at that time to really, you know, push it. But at least we knew he observed the symptoms. When it all falls down. Now, today, 20 years later. I won't even look at Stacy Dash. Or any woman that sounds like that's the woman that was in that song. That's just a personal choice, right? But what changed? What fell down? What collapsed? It was the illusion. It was the narrative. The narrative fell apart. The contradictory narrative. It fell apart and is falling apart the same way our tribal customs fell apart. It wasn't so much that they beat us in some physical hot war. It's that they were playing all these debate-ass mental gymnastics games with our people about our shit. When they in forcefully integrated us into schools or uh, orphanages or Catholic institutions, which is Dumb Diverses 2.0. Or whatever they did when we we're being adopted or put into foster care or boarding schools, they were challenging our natural sympathetic systems with these foreign so-called Greek narratives. Well, we have niggas literally today who have oaths and brotherhoods with this so-called foreign demonstration more than they have with the people they grew up with. That's a real, that's real indoctrination for real. That's, that's a whole nother level. By hook or by crook, though, you know, it's not a judgment. It's a decision. They made that decision. And, and, and I'm saying that decision was programmed. It was a fixed point for them. They didn't have a choice. So. Everyone who was presented choices up until this point. Are going to have to make some new choices now. Myself included in so many levels of my life. This is the most uncertain time I think I've ever lived, yet the most peaceful. This is a dichotomy I've never experienced. I mean, my shit feels like it ought to be more chaotic than it I'm letting off. But given the nature of my actual circumstances, I'm fairly calm and it's OK. And the sun is finally back out. It's not cloudy every day and I'm feeling a lot better overall. Um, it's a new year. All these things, new goals, new objectives, new things I hope I get into and do and complete. That's all on the horizon. But then boom, it could all change just tomorrow. It could change for the better too. It doesn't mean it's going to change for the worse. It's just changing. It's changing. It's changing by nature of presenting new choices. And I don't think those choices have a, a, a weight either. I don't think they're like good choice, bad choice. I just think change is is the name of this game that everyone is playing. Back to the chat real quick, though. I could do that for five hours. God damn, slow down. Ultra Instincts in the building. My pops is just waking up to that out of Africa theory, being BS. I just shut up and let him talk for now. Shout out to Ultra Instinct for using wisdom I never had. Will Tide the Time Traveler. Peace to the Diosis. Jay Diggity says the earthquake was a 4.8. The eclipse is on the 4.8. Ain't there a 4.8 scripture in the Bible? Of course, sir. And don't miss the fact that Louis Farrakhan's uh, lawsuit that went out that same morning was for $4.8 billion. Shout out to Bandana Santana. What's up to the tribe? Shout out to Georgie Porgy, Puerto Rico. Shout out to Dominican Republic. Shout out to my Haitians. Da -da 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 -da. Pat Lee's in the building. Peace to MG in the tribe. Hope everyone's standing strong weathering this eclipse. Weather Weathering is an understatement. My ass is getting weeped. <laughs> Nameless said the red heifer and the altar is ready. Oh, y'all been following my Hebrew Israelite brothers and cousins? I've been following the red heifer prophecy. Someone made a funny joke about that. 
they said, don't you think now would be the perfect time for like someone from Palestine or one of these other Arabic or Muslim persuasion countries to do a film or TV show about how they like had a special mission or agents to go and sneak in and to abduct or kill the red heifers before the sacrifice. And I was like, that sounded Call of Duty as fuck. Like if Call of Duty stopped playing games and really went there with black magic and stuff, I could see a Call of Duty campaign about that. And, 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 and if Call of Duty did a campaign like that, then you, one thing's for sure, two things for God on certain real life is going to mirror it. So all people got to do is AI this, game this, or whatever, and and we can see a secret mission of people trying to get the red heifers up out of here, bro. You know, because you got to think about it. Like, really think about this. Like, really think about just the red heifer part of it in terms of the narrative bestowed upon us getting knowledge of self. And and I, hopefully I break this fear out of you because you're going to realize how retarded these niggas are. <clears throat> red heifer. Some something with the temple, something something revelations. Once the red heifer sacrifice occurs, the you're given an X amount of time to get into wilderness. Because the red heifer sacrifice, I think, is the prelude to the Antichrist, right? Antichrist is pretty awesome though. Like the reason why the Antichrist is bad is because it's awesome. Don't 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 miss the fucking dancing bear, right? It's not like, oh my god, this is the worst thing that's ever happened to humanity. No. The Antichrist is actually the coolest thing that's happened to humanity in the context of the Bible preparing you for it. So in that time period, when the Antichrist, <clears throat> Elon Musk, is doing some awesome things, you have three years to get into the wilderness. So a lot of people are under the persuasion that the chosen ones will be guided by angels to that location. No Hebrew Israelite that I know, and you know, words of Jesus, no one knows the time or the day, but no one right now knows where the wilderness is. Looking at this story at face value, like, the fact that something supernatural should and ought to have occurred with the daily sacrifice, which would lead people in human form to make contact with a supernatural form to redirect their migration. That's a physical transformation that people are counting on. I'm not here to say what's real, what's not real, but I am here just what my brother Callaway say to make you think if the people preparing this event ritual, you know, cause we're talking about rituals, right? If the people preparing this ritual are not the people, what's going to respond? Y'all got to think about this shit like Thor's hammer. If anybody but Thor and who else can do it? Captain America, right? If anyone but Thor and Captain America try to pick up that hammer, ain't shit popping, bro. I don't know enough about these niggas to know how much of Captain America they're like. But I know one thing's for sure, two things for sure. These niggas ain't Thor. So moving that hammer or moving that knife or moving that blood ain't going to move shit. But some bullshit as theatrical response that believers will cause and induce through the law. Not because something of a higher power is going to respond to the wrong number. No more than you do. Talk to a fucking robocaller for more than five minutes. So we're, to, we're dealing with spirits here. The problem with these particular groups of people from my limited worldview of their actions and attitudes that we've seen in their interviews and their podcasts is that they, they, their whole game or their whole ritual is about fooling God. They worship a God that they can fool. Like think of how crazy it is for the spirit of death just to skip your door because you put some lamb's blood up. Like what's that nigga do? Lick it. Like, why can't he see through the door? Why does the lambs, why is he walking door to door? Why don't that nigga go through the chimney? Santa Claus can do it. What the fuck? For real? Like y'all wake the fuck up. You cute and clamorous ritualistic ass descendants. You all of us, but really think about it. Ritually. It makes sense. It's how you encode the story and pass it to future generations. But in real nigga life today, if you go outside, you put some fucking blood on your door and some invisible forces are supposed to skip it. Do you ever ask why? Who are the niggas in Hebrews who knew why? Where are the books where they describe why? Hi, Tobit. So you gonna have the wrong people sacrifice the wrong translation of the wrong animal on the wrong day to build the wrong temple in the wrong place. If I'm correct. Let me throw that out there. I'm not always right. But I'm feeling like wrong people 
wrong place, wrong time, wrong temple, at the wrong place. You know what should happen? Absolutely fucking nothing. Like nothing has been happening. Because these niggas are cap. They're cosplayers. They're fucking weird. Once you make that your resolve and your program, it don't even matter what they do. The next step is to cause yourself to have limited contact with them. That's already happening. The way the world is changing and our awareness of certain people is changing. There's already a certain warning shot that's being fired against certain groups of people who would sacrifice these innocent red heifers. Don't forget they're red and don't forget they're heifers. And don't think and don't forget what that par- what that parallel sacrifice looks like. Niggas. Oh, they got to sacrifice one of these red boned heifers, huh? What was that girl name that be rapping? Okay. You want to talk about spooky? Go ahead and bookmark this video. You let one of them bitches I named earlier, no disrespect, but I'm going to do it like that because we're using heifer. If one of them bitches end up dead in the midst of this shit, just, just let me know. I, ain't, I don't even want to... I don't wish that for none of them. But I know how these niggas get it up. And I know the same niggas trying to kill the cows is the same niggas signing these bitches. So... It's not like, you know, I'm waiting for the Atlanteans to do something the Martians did. No, no, it's the same team on both sides of this equation. Just watch. Just watch the world, bro. Just watch. Does that be the cute and clamorous shit they do? But okay, cool. So let's say they do that. Then what's next? The wilderness, right? Three, you got three years. It's X amount of days. I think it adds up to two and a half, three years. You don't think you want to notice mad niggas leaving, moving? It'd be easier to detect if you knew who your niggas are, though. And you notice in the midst of us awaiting that prophecy, niggas are sorting out who the niggas are. Like, niggas is doing that. Mainstream is doing that. Everything is questioning our identity. Now, I mind you, I always got to preface this with, if we're the smallest portion of the United States population, why is it that every endeavor of life is on our dick right now? They've been benign neglecting our talking points and needs and history they the, the the whole thing is based on doing that but this year of all years they want to worry about what we feel and think about ourselves biofield they, they care about how we heal more than they care about healing because this process that the so-called black man is going through is not a violent process it's a getting your mind frame right and once you get your mind frame what do they say you know better you do better and once you start doing better yes you're gonna become a little selfish because you're going to recognize almost instantly, automatically, that nobody around you had your best interests at heart. You were just the pony, donkey, mule to help the labor force of everybody else that's eaten. And then if you get reading and deep, deeper, you're like, not only is you eating off of my labor, but you're eating on my land in front of me. And you've been doing this systematically for a while now. And we have better people on this planet now who want to address it. But if they're not us, they really can't. Because they know intimately the minute they give the green light to do what's right, a lot of other things are going to have to go wrong. And where it goes wrong is on their side of it. They necessarily have to self-sacrifice to do what's right. I need y'all to hear that. In order for them to fix anything, they're going to have to self-sacrifice, whether that's a narrative. You know what I'm saying? Bro, we've been talking about the Russian icons my whole damn daily run, bro. Think about it now. Ben, we, we've been seeing these images. Now the world sees it. And it's like, <gasps> Putin. Yeah, it's it's a demonstration, right? He, he demonstrated globally that he know what's up with the what's up. He ain't no fucking stupid former CIA agent. He went over there and he got it. He got the artifact. He verified his sources. Now niggas want to talk about it. Bro, y'all too late. It don't mean nothing. And and that's the thing. That's how I know nigga logic and how we're different. Like, why I make us so different is because of how we deal and see things. It's so different than everyone else. 
irregardless of being indoctrinated by everyone else, irregardless of proximity effect, irregardless of the Board of Education, irregardless of uh, Uish mainstream media, we still rock different. And we're so sensitive to it. Oh, you talking white. Oh, you think you're white. Why do we do that? Because we're watching an Indian change code. They're not making fun of them for being white. They're making fun of them for stop being Indian. Why are you ashamed of who you actually are? That is a healing question. That's therapy, nigga. On a group level. So we're healing. And as we're healing and we're fixing these connections. And as the sister said earlier in my chat, it's good to see the young brothers, although I'm not young, but it's good to see the young brothers rise up. What are we rising up into? It's just narrative. The narrative is going to shape my mind and my mood. My mind and my mood is going to shape my biofield. My biofield is going to set my parameters for my law of attraction. And that's going to affect my mental, emotional, and physical well-being, locations, and proximity of people. I start thinking different. My world changes is what the fuck I just described to you. We don't have to hurt nobody. There's nothing to hurt. It's just truth. It's just, this is information. And a lot of it's dumb. You know what I'm talking about? Like a lot of that spiritual stuff that we find out that's a profound black history fact or black American truth is like, so like, it'd be so if you were just left it alone. You feel me? Like if you kept it black the whole time, niggas would still been past it. So now niggas is going back to shit that they didn't pass. And that's why there's like this equilibrium issue. It's because no matter how many of my good brothers keep the Sabbath and do the Hebrew Israelite thing, you're not in a Hebrew Israelite paradigm. That's the problem. That's why you can't get your brothers to really get on code and keep the commandments and do these things, because that's not what time you're in. When you're a Hebrew, you, you would drive ships across water. Like, that's what you were doing. You were pirates. You're Phoenicians. You're not a pirate or a Phoenician right now. You're not in charge of your own trade route. Thus, it's not important for you to conduct um, a military operation or mind control on people to keep them in check so they don't fuck up the bag. Nigga, y'all lost already. Everyone fucked up the bag. <clears throat> you're trying to get the laws before you try to get the... You're trying to get the laws before you get your promise back. God don't make two promises, nigga. If he gave it to you, it's still yours. You haven't picked it back up yet. So what are you dividing? What are you preparing for? What are you conditioning minds for? What are you about to put in these people's hands? Nothing. Where's the covenant? Where's the Ark of the Covenant? It's yours. Where is it? One more time. Where is it? I'm going to ask you one more time. Where is it? Until you find out where your promise is, until you find out what you already had, where, until you find out what happened to that, it, none of this emotionalism and guilt tripping, heaven and hell shit is going to move the needle on nothing because you're claiming that God made a promise. You now have to produce the artifacts of that promise. And until you do that, you ain't going to get nobody. The prophets and the ones who are called by God's voice to do this work, to talk and help and whatever, we don't know what that is. We don't know if the work is to repeat a story. We don't know if this is a great new work. We don't even know if we're in the golden era already and all of this shit in Revelation already happened. There's grounds to think that. Mud flood, reset, etc. The fact that America looks like Rome when you dig deep enough. There's plenty of premises to, to overstand the potential that maybe this all happened already. And when we go into the Freemasonry stuff and we know that they recovered these books from the old world where it happened to, that maybe your Bible is older than you think it is. And if your Bible is older than you think it is, then all those stories happened already. So you have a, there's some beauty in that confusion and chaos though. It clearly something happened. So it's a pretty good book to keep around. But the problem is, if the, if the vultures and the scavengers were burning these books and hiding these books all over the planet, why? If it happened already. Why is God going to keep doing the same thing over and over and over again? There's already been a revelation. It's all, like, niggas is funny. Like, ah, uh, you know, the world's going to end. Brother, sister, our world already ended. We're surrounded by white people. No disrespect to my white people. You know what I'm saying? This ain't, this ain't that. 
but I'm talking about like you, you got to talk to niggas realistically. Realistically, we lost something because we're surrounded by white people. We don't know that story. No more than white people, which is even scarier. That's why 3 a.m. boo-boo conspiracy motivates me because I'm not trying to know the weirdest, sickest, darkest shit. No, I'm trying to figure out what the fuck happened to us and how come no one gives a fuck that it happened. That's really my impetus of all of it. It's like, how come niggas is acting like this is normal? By all strengths of the imagination and every book you read and every story you can dig up, this ain't this. Those stories ain't how you get here in this position. That none of that is linear. We can all agree on that. I'm like, all right, so when, when did it change? I don't know, man. You know, I got other shit to worry about, man. Where are these hoes at, man? Oh, man, I got to work and save my money so I can retire, man. Oh, man, I got to buy my family land back and get a house, man. Oh, man, I'm trying to get my passport, man, and be a visitor in a strange land, man. Oh, man, I got to take some nice clothing and fashion stuff and take pictures and stuff on the gram, man. It's like all of this coping. Our, our coping is a side effect of trauma, consumerism, trauma. You should You should do the deep dive between trauma, whether it's sexual, mental, physical, and consumerism and averages, like just just to know if there's a connection there. Note why do people think buying things make them feel better? Basically is what I'm trying to say. But you gotta go to sex to find it. Yeah. Uh-huh. So with all that being said, or not said, we when are we going to break out of those habits and patterns? By asking that question. That's what I've been waiting for. So Hebrew Israelite brothers, you guys hope that this story plays out that way. And I'm not here to be a false prophet or anything like that. No, no, no. I'm just going to get you to think about it. If everything I'm digging up proves that you were there already and you were those people indeed, not because some white man told you the Puerto Rican's part of the tribe and the African's part of the tribe and that dumb shit from 20 years ago. I'm talking about, you know, when Hebrew Israelite church was registered in Connecticut as a 501c3 and allegiance to Rome, you motherfuckers. Don't play with me. Do you see how there's a difference between the religion and the people? That's the same shit they do with the Moors. Just because niggas registered Hebrew Israelite and they're teaching this other version of Sunday doctrine on Saturday don't mean them niggas are Hebrew Israelites. No more than it means them niggas in Hollywood are who they say they are. No more than those niggas in Palestine are who they say they are. Niggas just do the same thing. Monkey see, monkey do. Monkey get your ass in trouble too. I'm just asking you to think about the propensity of that pattern and everyone else, including the people with a slave narrative. Are you sure? Are you sure you're just not cosplaying in the meantime, a story that already happened to keep you in a control box that falls off of the shelf of conspiracies from the central intelligence agency? You sure you didn't land in a prefab container? It feels like Christianity, but it isn't. But you ain't going no further than that, are you, niggas? You're just waiting for a sacrifice. It's a death cult. Salvation sent around a death. Your redemption sent around death. You're the death cult that they talk about in all the Illuminati documentaries, by the way. What else would Satanism be but an inversion of Hebrew Israelites? If we're using the opposing force, you're using the opposing force of who? Hebrew Israelites. You're not using the uh, opposing force of Chinese religions. You're not using the opposing force of Indian billions of religions. They are specifically targeting niggas. Why are they always on our dick? Thus, niggas. Are you sure that that book didn't happen already? Are you sure your world hasn't ended already? It's a rhetorical question, but it's there to make you think. Now, how you feel, nigga? Think. The first Hebrew Israelite church is a 501c3, and most of the new demonstrations still are. You don't know what that means yet. That's a problem for people who think that keeping the holy Tanakh or the Ten Laws on Saturday translates into communication from spirit and God himself. 
just like Sunday church promises. There's a problem that God hasn't told none of y'all that. Like God don't show y'all the conflicts. <laughs> what do they call that? Uh, con- uh, you know, the situational conflicts that you have in participating a certain way. It's like some groups get it. I know some of the Moorish Hebrews, they stay away from it because if all groups, they would know. But then they got some weird cult shit going on, too, because of the niggas that came from prison that are implementing this are already fucking mentally psychopathic, sociopathic. You ain't even allowed to talk about that with niggas who believe because religion hates psychology. Because I don't give a fuck what y'all talking about. You can't tell no niggas out here who see spirits and ghosts schizophrenic, but these niggas is talking about they got a one-on-one hotline with God. Do the math on it. I came here before you guys today and the spirit of God just gave me this message. And every last single message is different, but it comes from the same voice of God. God got, got a whole bunch of unique messages for every church in Atlanta. And that's one state out of 50. Don't do that to me. Don't piss on my head and tell me it's rain. Tell me it's your subconscious mind. You did some reading. You did some listening. And you came forth to do it 3 a.m. in front of your church. That's all we doing. Don't put that shit on God. What if I don't like you? And if I don't like you, I probably don't like your God. And that's what got us in this situation. Religion's not the answer. Religion is what caused it to fall apart. Hello, the Spanish and the Portuguese worked for the Roman Catholic Church. Where do you, we ask, where do your grandma stay? They ask us, where did your God stay? Namaste. You want to go to the mosque on a Sunday? Think about the dumbass shit that people got killed and hung and burned alive for. Like this nigga is reading the book on the wrong day. Fuck it. What? Let my people go for real. Like y'all just doing the same shit that allegedly Pharaoh was doing to your ancestors, supposedly. Just in Egypt, in the land of bondage. Why are you treating, oh, Stockholm Syndrome is what you're about to tell me, right? And it's the same thing that the Jewish people have a problem with right now over there, right? So their Stockholm Syndrome, because they were just previously what then? If they're pretending to be you, and you were the fuck out because of slavery, then who are those people? World War II wasn't slavery, nigga. It wasn't generations and generations of struggle. It was a couple of years of fuck shit, maybe. You see how they wild the fuck out. Niggas who weren't even there. Niggas who converted to the thing that they weren't at. You hear me? Because we're talking about religion now. We're not talking about pedigrees, bloodlines, and tribes of people. They can miss me with the fuck shit. Hitler was not worried about your bitch-ass grandma in Beverly Hills in 1952. Ain't got shit to do with you. But you see how people take the identity, then they take the story, and then politically charge it, right? That's all I'm really pointing out there. Hebrew Israelites have to do the same thing and be careful of that when it comes to prophecy. That's all. Because it's not prophecy if it's a loop. If that always happens, then this calendar behind me by Mr. Maya Inca, Inco Tepa, they got it mapped out too, Chief. And guess where I'm at? I'm here where their map is. I'm not over there where you think their map is. It, it, it gets unraveled really easily. It becomes a logical decision soon. But like I said, religion doesn't like psychology and they don't like logic. And you and you have to appreciate that. Hashtag faith. But then you have to also appreciate the military uh, brainwashing nature of that move of never having to be accountable for common sense or nigga logic. But you could just say it because allegedly you're closer to God than everyone else. That's dangerous, bro. That's dangerous. That's what got us here. That's the year, that is the age of Pisces. That is the age of beliefs. And that shit is whack as hell. Unless you got that covenant with you. Shout out to Lorraine Renee. Shout out to Haru on the track. Mofax is in the building. Jayon, baby. Y2K 2012 asteroid. Oh, man. I missed so much of the damn chat. I'm just going to speed. I'm going to speed run to the end of the chat because I missed all of y'all. I'm sorry, guys. God damn. Uh, man, I could do it, though. 
Shout out to Logan. Shout out to DJ Georgie Porgy. John Baby says, talk. That was probably like 40 minutes ago. Lorene says, when I was 17, I was smoking a little bong out my bedroom window, hidden from my mom. Suddenly it hit me that whenever we encounter in life, we processed by each person based on your own experience. It doesn't sound like much, but it was profound for me, and I have never got forgotten it. People don't hear things or see things on the same level. Yeah. Like, you're becoming a pothead in real time in the same house as your mom doesn't think you smoke pot. That's deep. That is one of those moments. It was like, we're not living the same life at the same time. That's, that, I mean, unfortunately, we go dark real quick, but being cheated on is just like that. Being cheated on for me, like, and I'm speculating I was cheated on because every coward I dealt with never admitted it, but niggas be knowing, like, because especially niggas with superpowers, we be knowing, but my empathy is my superpower, but I be knowing, and, 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 and the most deranging thing about it, of course, is if it's narcissist, they lie, they gaslight you, whoop, whoop, whoop. But just in living your life prior to finding out, everything was normal-ish. Or, you know, you could have had a rough, a rough, rough patch of social encounters with them, but now you understand that was like passive aggressive because they're hiding their fuck shit. So then you, you got to question everything. It was like, wait, did we actually have problems then? Because the problems I had with you was during the time you were fucking someone else, meaning the time before that you're getting to know someone else because you don't just wake up fucking random people. If men had that power, oh, man, these only for fans girls would be in trouble. So we know that power doesn't exist. So you per, you created the perfect manifestation storm to oops, this is someone else's dick me and then make me feel like. I contributed to it somehow or another. Maybe I have, you know, because we all like building up this this potion pot of stats until I get cheated on, you know, subconsciously when you're dealing with a human who said they're not a piece of shit. But in case you get a default, in, in case you get a, a refurbished uh, or a person who says they're one thing and their lower self or their traumas or, or, or their, their special circumstances would are never different than anyone else's reason for them cheating on you. Um, Whatever that variable is, the, the the part that hurt me is having to redraw the picture. I don't care if your goofy ass slept with some loser. I'm not raising his kid if you got pregnant. Have fun doing that. And I'm no longer obligated to be who I am with you no more either. It frees me from involuntary servitude, in fact, because, you know, marriage bond certificate is a form of slavery to the Catholic Church, in case you haven't heard that before. So, cool. We don't have to play that game. We don't have to die together with your, you know, your vagina on fire. You can go live and be awesome. But now I got to rewrite all them lies you told me. You made me question myself and have to answer for and be accountable for something that's pushing you away. When the whole time you just set that up to be pushed away to justify the the courage in your cowardly heart to go do something like that. That's the part that hurts. You realize you don't even know who the fuck that person is. So, no, that's a, that's profound. You're right. Mr. Now says everyone who can do anything about it knows the Mars jump room, but nobody's going there. Shut the hell up. <laughs> Mo facts, content creator, cliffhangers. There we go. KNLV, what up, what up? We'll tie the people who make the code are somehow only capable of making a crude simulation with it. Neil deGrasse Tyson, Slick Eno, Peace Fam, Tribe Clan, Blessings, all to hit the like button. Shout out to everybody on the like button in the comment and subscribe wave. I appreciate y'all as well. Shout out to Will Ty. Real life primitively generates. They control the mainstream. 3 a.m. is the mainstream now. Damn. Come on now. That sound like a four. I, 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 I'm I not going to say I said it. I'm pretty sure there's a few of us because I want to include the other brothers who are doing awesome work. Just being present. But there's a lot of us. Who said, you know, that the 3 a.m. What I made the prediction personally that when 3 a.m. becomes the mainstream, then my job is done. So you imagine what kind of pickle I'm in, Rick. Because there's nothing for me to add to, to this. Like, I'm talking about, like, a couple of years ago, if I was just talking about the eclipse and I showed you the new moon stuff and, the you know, the astro theosophy nature and try to see a Benjamin Banneker, you know, because he was during the time frame this happened, right? So the Benjamin Franklin Almanac is right there <laughs> with all the star alignments then, for real. We could verify that narrative and maybe easier once AI becomes more affordable and accessible for those experiments but i say that all to say that's 3 a.m those topics are 3 a.m um and they don't have to go deep either 3 a.m doesn't necessarily mean it's deep 
I'm deep first. I'm 3 a.m. second. Like I can be deep about relationships. I can be deep about computer programming. I could be deep about sampling, bro. I could be deep about how we make music. <laughs> you seen it. Like I could be deep about like my father and, you know, his, his alter ego and, and what that did to me. Like I could be deep about anything. 3 a.m. is its own thing. So now that 3 a.m. is uh, mainstream, because mainstream doesn't exist, right? You no, know, we did a replacement. This is a replacement thing. They took the, you know, we went from an old oligarchy of mainstream media and deep state. Remember, D- deep state is media. Media is controlled by the CIA. So it's the CIA versus the tech bros. So these guys had a little fight with their nerd ass nephews. Um, Silicon, you know, Silicon Valley. Or or we could say narrative, which requires faith, was replaced by science. You know what I'm saying? The more scientific point of view they've been prepping you for since, for millennials especially, our, our biggest uh, nudge was this atheistic science first view of life even if you didn't believe that that's what they were pushing on us they're pushing us on the fact that everything in life was the side effect of a big bang and then that led to science and mechanics and if you get good at stem or science or engineering or coding and you appreciate these maxims or this perspective to be in our cult with us then you know everything's supposed to be explained a certain way scientifically 3am don't have those rules So it's actually difficult to find certain types of classically intelligent people having 3 a.m. discussions because it's against their religion. Because I don't have that religion, I can talk about whatever the fuck I want. And that's what made, for me, 3 a.m. fun, is that I'm not confined to a belief. I don't have to approach this like a Christian. I don't have to approach this like an atheist. I don't have to approach this like a white person. I can just be me. Use my nigga logic and talk about the same stuff. Now, everyone's talking about it because TikTok is going to talk about it and it's PYP is for you. And you're going to see it before I can talk about it now. You're going to see it on the same day I see it. You're, the synchronicities and the alignments and we follow enough of the same people. Half the shit I'm talking about, you probably seen 10 solar eclipse videos already before you click this goddamn video. So, so for me, you know, just for me, that makes me, you know what I'm saying? It's played out now. <laughs> you know, that's how hip hop was, right? Like, oh, everybody could do boom bap. Everybody got the soul samples. Or oh, everybody's shopping for the Brazil, you know, 45s. Or, oh, everybody got an NPC 2000. Like, yo, I'm going to get on this core tritone and make these club bangers for a little while. Now everybody got a club banger. Fucking exhibit is rocking right now, nigga. Like, Let's do this dirty South shit with the 808. Let's bring that 808 back. Let's put a preamp and a DI box on it. Don't be fucking weird. And, um, you know, it's something, it's, it's, it's something, it's something to say about certain people who chase novelty. I, 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 unfortunately, my life is the way it is. is because I chase novelty like a fucking drug addict. Um, you know, it, it doesn't, it doesn't seem that way, but it is. The internet accelerated that for me. I've realized that it's like part of my coping and addiction, but I've been in different troughs of my life where I didn't have access to it. So I know I can do it way harder now because no one else is, which is always the problem. Day late, dollar short. But even with this eclipse, but um, these these moments feel so bittersweet to me because I just run through the shit like it's like speed running a video game. It's like. How come no one's talking about this? Like, that's how I always start. Like, how come no one's talking about this? And then I wait for the one soul to come and say, because there's no reason. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? You're making me contentious. Like, no, for real, bro. It's stupid. Don't waste your time. And that's like a challenge to me. And then I go to the next person. I find another piece of motivating evidence to convince somebody else this matters now. And then they go, oh, that's interesting, but you're wrong. And I'm like, oh, please don't tell me I'm wrong without a source. How am I wrong? Show me why I'm wrong. Everybody knows. Fuck. Now I got to do regular uh, surface level research to figure out where this idiot got his juice, like why he feels so, you know, motivated to stand by that. And I find it. I'm like, oh, who wrote this? Oh, wait, a 19 year old in 1920. Yeah, he could eat a dick. 
This bitch didn't even have a fucking telephone and wash his ass every night. How the fuck he know what's going on in life? Don't play with me. So, and then you dig, you dig, you dig, and that could be weeks, months, years, like it used to be. To these days, it don't take me that long because I recognize a pattern of how to get to it. But back then, when I started, it took a while for this shit to find me or for me to find it or some beautiful mix of both tenant. And by the time I, I can deliver that and show people my homework and how this makes sense, it's almost like overnight, everybody else got the same notes. Like for real, like that shit fuck with me. Like the same, like as soon as got me green apples and this nigga who ain't ever touched this subject, he's touching it. And I don't need to be the ego to take credit for it. That's not even what's freaky about it. It's like all you niggas was watching me and stole it. Or all you niggas was watching me and that felt right and that was connected. And now you're going to spread the truth because that's the purpose. Or did none of you watch me, but me uncracking the truth and sharing it on the Internet somehow influence someone to get it to you in some form or another. And thus, it, truth still resonates and you're still saying it, too. Then I get an instant feedback loop when that happens. Mm-hmm. So. When I said, yo, once 3 a.m. becomes mainstream, whoop, 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 whatever the fuck I said. And now that we're seeing that to be the case, it's like, that's what I said. It's like, well, it's time for me to move on, you know? It's time. Got a text. Hello. So, yeah, like, you flow and watch other people pick it up. And um, I used to I used to struggle with that as a content creator because that shit would piss me off. Like, why niggas stepping on my toes with the SEO and shit with my topics? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't got a lot of followers. Like, so let me niche out. But once y'all niche out with me, it ain't niche no more. So now I got to recompete with you for attention. And I don't want to do that. I'd rather let you... Do whatever God called you to do this Sunday. And I can figure out something else because I'm the novelty chaser. Like, I love novelty. I love, oh, you guys want to do the SP404 and make trap on it? Okay. Like, you ain't got to worry about a video from me. I'm never doing hi-hats on that shit. I'm the same way with this. Like, once I seen enough brothers was on that Black Indian run, I just got to the, I got, I got to the final stage boss of that. I said, all right, so the Black Indians... If you go back further in time, run into Mansa Musa, Abu Bakari, Genghis Khan, or Octai Khan. They, 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 we know the story tra- bef- before white man got here talking about we are engines and niggas. Before that, we got to deal with some Moorish empires that were definitely here too. All the way back, possibly even Rome, as we understand it, was here too. Those stories aren't in English. So the furthest I can go back with this history in English is up to the up to the doorsteps of the Inquisition of why it happened, why we forgot or why we're speaking English right now or why we're having this conversation about origins is because of 1492 English or 1592 Portugal. Portuguese books say 1592 this happened, by the way, follow Granada. But either way, after the 1400s, religions religious zealous people who were formerly slaves who cut their no-no parts off and would eat animal dung in each other they decided that i should join something that's when everything got fucked up for me know that so now everybody else is on it are they gonna all they can do then is either pick up a new language and go back further or they're just going to elucidate some of the strands of what that is with the tribal stuff But you got to remember, we're not Indians. White people created that term or the European hybrid created that term to define us against ourselves. Like, this is dumb to versus una sanctum. This isn't something else. Remember, without those two things, there's no white people on your land. So that's why that's important. It's dumb to versus. So the creation of the Indian is dumb to versus. Los Indianos, those with no God. Hence... That's not what we are. We're more Hebrew than that. We definitely have a God. It's the God you bitch ass niggas is jocking over there incorrectly. Back to my brothers today. You know the Hebrew Israelite thing was here before it was there, right? So did it happen already? And how did you forget? 
That's my point. So we know what caused the confusion. We know when the confusion could have happened. That's all I had to do, bro. That's all I had to do. Because once you create the tunnels or the pathways or the neuron connections for it, anybody can now jump in on this shit. Because you know what you know the ledge. You know what the guidelines are. You know what the deception is. You know what the formulas are now. You know Black Tony Swarthy. You know Benjamin Franklin is on the government website. You ain't got to argue a petty argument with nobody who hasn't read shit yet ever again in your life now. From this point forward, there's nothing, there's nothing a nigga could tell me for real. You can brothers could fill in the blanks, but I'm talking about people who are anti, who are trying to remix our operating system. Ain't nothing these niggas could tell us. We are descendants of those people from that book, period. By hook or by crook, whether we truthfully believe that or we're just writing some fly shit and these niggas take it out of context like everything else they've done from us. Whatever the case may be, we know it's us. So it being us, what about us? is worth all this ha- hassle. What about us is worth all this effort? What about us is worth all this cruelty? They have not shown us humanity. Don't let them trick you. Don't let them trick you out of how cruel they are either, by the way. No, they haven't showed us no humanity. I don't give a fuck about the labels, nigga. I don't give a fuck about the treaties or the laws for real either, nigga. I will to be righteous. I will in my tribal role, I will in my historical connection to that which I honor that was created before me. But that ain't why I researched that shit. They fucked with us. They fucked with us as kids. They've molested us. They've accosted us. They've told us lies and they've held our noses in their shit and piss. I don't want nary a nigga from this land to forget that. I don't give a fuck what the narrative is. I don't care what the red, the blue is. I don't give a fuck about the money. I don't, none of, no. That's just some patchwork shit. That's goofy. When people show you who they are, believe them. That's what they have shown us. I mean, my history, I'm learning as a child now. I'm talking about 10, I'm 10 years old, 11 years old, 14, 15 even. Why am I watching niggas hanging from trees? In 1998, why does my identity and my emotional aura have to be conditioned with some shit that happened way before I was born? And why does no one else have to tell their version of that same story? That's intentional. That's warfare. That's narrative building. And all I came here to do was tell it to go fuck itself. It's a liar and it's a bitch ass nigga. Y'all have fun with the rest of that. That's it. That's it. That's it. It's mainstream now. Cool. I'm done. Shout to Rogue Status. It's been a minute. Shout to you, brother. Life. You said life is life. Life is life. It's all good, brother. Shout to kid. J.U.G. says, the Bader Minoff, Bader, I can't say that, J.U.G., but I want to try. Bader, two A's, right? Long A. Bader Minoff, phenomenon. It's like when you buy a car and then suddenly you see that car everywhere. Those people weren't in your mind, so you never noticed someone that looked like them. You've probably seen someone who looked like them, but then your mind wasn't turned to that frequency to notice them. Yes. I know what you're talking about, J-U-G, but it's not that. It is that. So that phenomenon, how do I say it? It's like a tribe called Quest. It's like two things can be true. It's like this. What would that be? Uh, um, let's say this box is that phenomenon. I got a red car. Now I notice all the red cars. By the way, that's your superpower, right? That's your subconscious mind. Um, what you're trying to influence when you do your visualization before you fall asleep is that. You're trying to program the Biter Meinhof. Was that a German again? Oh, my God. They just get to name all the nigga magic stuff and keep the names forever. Like dumb shit like that. That's warfare. These niggas ain't inventing none of this shit. Anyway, they can't even do it. That's that's why I think that's why it irritates me because it's like they're writing about it. They're not living it. It's the same thing you see with spiritual practices. You have a lot of people who memorize spiritual facts about spiritual deities and numbers and stars and shit. And that shit's awesome because we come from a fucking Rockefeller education indoctrination system of subject learning. But I'm talking about like, what do you dream last night for real? Like, 
I'm supposed to like message Lavar. 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 What is your last name? Bennett. Is that his last name? Shout out to the brother in Canada. The brother Lavar. I dreamed about him last night. I've never dreamed about him. We sit in the car, bro, pulling up on the back of a factory. It looked like an Amazon plant or UPS or some shit like that. And it's nighttime. And we're in a four, we're in a four court, we're in a four door SUV or some shit. And I think I'm sitting in the back right. And I think you're sitting in the front right. And as we're approaching one of these docks or these doorways, there's some nigga there. Um, look like he dropped a bunch of boxes or had opened a bunch of boxes, but you know, outside of the building, and it looks like beer. It looks like Jägermeisters or like uh, kegs or bottles. Like, and I couldn't tell if he spilt a beer delivery all over the floor, and he's trying to clean it up so you don't get fired, or if he's a criminal, or it's a side effect of something going on inside. Reason why I say that is because Mr. Lavar in my dream. He jumps out the car and he runs into the building before we even stop. Like the car is slowing down up to this entrance, but he jumps out before we stop, stop, before I get my seatbelt off. And he ran into it. I'm like, where's this nigga going? Who's inside? And then I fell asleep, woke up, fell asleep, woke up. And I was like, that's the only dream I remember last night. But that was with a real person I met in real life once at the, you know, the producer event. So I got to tell him that if he ain't watching this video, I got to tell him that and make make that mean something and he's gonna have to tell me yo you said it was beer all over the and you know you know how that conversation is gonna go i already know how that conversation is gonna go i ain't have it yet you see what i'm saying that ain't that that ain't what that box is the thing is that box is a piece of this box and i'm here yeah training your mind to notice the unnoticeable is the practice that effect he's naming it and, and you know what I hate about that? Because the brother J.U.G. is on point. I didn't know they had a name for that in German. But that, that phenomenon, the, once they make it a phenomenon, is now just a coincidence. You don't, you don't think you can control that. That's my problem with all of it. Nah, this ain't random. This ain't be just because I got the red car. Nigga, we can do that whether we get the red car or not. And I think that's what J.U.G. was saying. It's like, maybe you thought of that person. And then because you haven't thought about him in a while, you haven't seen no one that looked like him. I I flow with that in that box there. But on this outside box, that is not what happened. I looked this man in his face and he looked just like him. He was just the wrong race. I've never seen anyone that's ever looked like that. And I was trying to be polite in case they find this video later. No, there's not a lot of people that look like that, whether I thought about them every day or not. They were my neighbors, meaning I seen them every day. I seen her walking every day, trying to get better every day. So I would have been saw other people. If if that part of the box is true, then I would have been seeing people that look by them just by proximity of knowing who they were for years. I'm talking about from like the year 2000 to 2007. So it's been over 20, almost 20 years ago. You know what I'm talking about? This person that looks just like him looks like him 20 years ago. Looks like him the last time I saw him because he's 20 years older now, right? So that had been enough. But then the next lady behind him in the same moment is walking like the wife would walk. So not so I would have been geeked out if I just saw a version of him. But I saw a version of him and I seen a version of her. They're not and those two people in my reality aren't together. They're in two different parts of the manifestation. Me going, hmm. And then seeing her on top of that was like, Whoa. you know what I'm saying? It could have been one or the other, but it was both. It was a doppelganger of both. So it wasn't just the red car. It was the red car in the townhouse. <laughs> Not only do I see my car everywhere, but I see my townhouse everywhere too. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, it was, it was, it was, it was more profound because it was two. But, um, I kind of, I'm kind of in on that effect though. Like this, this is what law of attraction is. Like we can analyze the effects of law of attraction or we can understand that there's a law of attraction and what stirs it and what, what feeds it. And I think my original question at that point in the video was, I wish I chose those scenes to animate into real life better because it seems to be random when it's in the BOF box, when it's just like, oh, that just happens because you're thinking about it. I was like, nigga, it happens every day. I don't remember things I thought about every day happening every day. I haven't always had an everyday, you know what I'm saying? I haven't always had an everyday Bader Manoff phenomenon. But but damn it, if these days I don't. 
So something changed. Uh, what do we call it? An upgrade. There's an upgrade to that, you know, that system. And it, and and here's the beauty in that. If before everyone has it when they get a new car, now there's people who have it more often because they're learning law of attraction. And now me being a scientist with them, you know, because we've all been exposed to this new age fuck shit around the same time. So it's been 20 plus years for me. So 20 plus years into the shit that people said, nah, that shit ain't real. Or they said, ah, you know, that shit, ah, you know, people just got to, ah, like people don't want to receive it. I'm, I went against the grain for 20 years in a row. And what I'm telling you is like, nah, not only is that function happening for sure, even scientifically if they want it, but it gets better. I couldn't say that before. I couldn't say that reading the books because the books don't sell you no dreams. Uh, Henry Thomas Hamblin, Neville Goddard and them, they don't sell you no dreams. They just tell you as a matter of fact, like Jesus, like Yeshua, like, like the homie, you know what I'm talking about? You know, like the, the man's pots and pans whose great grandmother or grandmother was a Moabite, right? Ruth, Ruth's a Moabite. Don't, uh, you know, there ain't Mandela affect that shit. Moabite, which is a precursor to the Moors, right? All right. So there's someone in the bloodline pedigree already who, who has that ability. But niggas in that bloodline, like, eh, nah, nah. Well, we're going to leave that alone. Trauma, trauma, religion. I get it. You're scared. But once you get past 20 years of being scared of doing it, then I, no book said, like, at some point, shit just starts clicking even more. And that's where I'm at with it, where it feels like something has changed. The quality or the the uh, magnitude or the, uh, the, you know what I'm saying? My personal signal has strengthened for me. Um, and some other people may have started strong too. So it may not be, you know, profound for some people, but the fact that I had a weaker signal that has strengthened that alone, like, Oh shit, this shit gets better. This shit gets better. And I'm almost 40. Lord willing, what's that look like at 60? That's that's where that shit gets interesting to me, because if it gets crazy like that as you age with this technology, how how much further we can go, create, do and age, you know, this is the first time this generation is uh, uh, presented an opportunity to live longer than anyone known prior. First time you're, you're presented with that choice, what do they say? Our dumbasses just got to live for five more years, right? AI, AGI, all that shit by 2029 is going to figure out how to individually cure you of the fuck shit that's been killing you. At least that. So that gives you promise. Plus all the other shit they're doing with cybernetics and bio stuff, all the, you know, new world transhumanist agenda. That's an agenda of ritualists who happen to be these same people you borrow your money from. But even if that does manifest on some cyberpunk 20, what they say, 2077, right? That ain't a fault. That 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 ain't a long time from now, cause that that's you know right after this eclipse for real. So, in fifty more years, you will be able to replace all the human organs. So death, death by body decay is almost an extinct concept. Let's just take a minute and just appreciate that. <clears throat> whether that's God's plan or not, because we haven't figured out whether or not God Himself is technology. No one's done that. No one's done that thought yet. But whether that's the way we were supposed to go or not is immaterial when you're going that direction. We're going into a direction where everything in us can be replicated, respond, whether it's a clone of yourself, a clone of a pig, or something cyber, nanoparticle. Either or, they have figured out how to map these functions by hand with some help of the Egypt acubus that they've reverse engineered. Now they want to feed the rest of that to AI and let AI run off with the rest. And with over a decade or two of some trial and error and shit, and then the military stuff is brought to the surface. Humans, the tricky part about right now and us have running out of the mainstream novelty of things is that after this, guys, like after all of this communist immigration war, whatever the fuck dumbass idea this is, when that's all said and done, when everyone shuts the fuck up and gets to eat their cake and laugh on their drug of choice or whatever, you know, however they calm these niggas down. Within 50 years from that point, no one has to die ever again. 
What you need to understand is, and what I don't hear no one talk about yet because it seems so far-fetched because, you know, as Ray Kurzweil has said, we don't appreciate exponential gain. If our technology makes an exponential leap from this point, guys, being human is over. You know that, right? I'm not talking about us black people. I'm not talking about the Hebrews. I'm not talking about the people to vote. I'm talking about the crazy ass white boys out there that you know exist. They're going to start trying to live forever. I need it. Just, just hold that. Whether it's pretty or ugly or not to be determined. Because you saw how BBLs panned out. Those shits are hideous. But the BBL, I live longer than you, people, if we take any wisdom of our past, should not be the same people who thought it was a good idea to enslave people, lie to people, all in the name of a white Jesus. That's all I'm going to say about that. I don't think it's a good idea that they get to live forever. Since all their promises are in eternity, what happens? But the fact that someone on the chessboard today is going to be here 100 years from now because of these advancements. Because, you know, like they say, there's been eclipses. There's been Y2K. Nothing's ever ended. Cool. So we're still going forward, right? So Moore's Law and exponential gains is still going to keep going forward for all that we can hope and, you know, dream for our children, right? Nigga, they said 2029, it's a wrap. In 2029, it's a wrap, dog. Now add 50 years. 50 years after the wrap. Exponential gain. We're at such a curious time because not only is like, oh, Babylon's falling or the system is dead. Guys, the <laughs> No shit, Sherlock. It It's not ending because these motherfuckers are bad. I wish that was it. It's ending because this is the point of it. When you look at things in the vacuum of limited information, because they're lying to you about this being a corporation, if you understood and appreciate the gravity of piracy, we, we, we would have a different perspective to, to, to push this off of. But since everything's been linear, it's like, oh, the Romans existed at some point and then stopped existing completely all at once. It didn't fuck nobody else. Like, but their their economy and their society and when it ended, the money crash and we don't talk about Romans after that. So you think when the United States crashes, you ain't gonna be talking about United States no more. Like you ain't gonna have crazy niggas and racist white boys still. I love that for us. They're still gonna be around. But they're going to be around in a society that has an exponential leap in technology that Rome didn't have, hashtag allegedly. That the slaves didn't have, hashtag allegedly. You know, you could play Biofield 3 and see the slaves and American Revolution with the steampunk era. Hint, hint, wink, wink with that shit. Bethesda. But uh, as far as we understand it, though, everything is going AI. First time ever. We can't be the old system. The homeboy Fox. Shout out to you. It can't. It can't. It's never going back, guys. I don't know where the fuck it's going. Mind you, but I know it ain't going back to an industrial revolution. It's not going back to the white man from Ellis Island working for two years hard and then he could buy a house for his family and start fucking his bitch and pop out two and a half kids. That's not where it's going. You're not going to own more cars. They tell you this all the time. That's the World Economic Forum. That's the Kazarian Mafia, right? These are the people who think they're the people in the book that they're not, right? Mind you, they're the ones that keep it going and none of that's true. So, all of those dreams, all of those uh, American experiments, they call it. You can't, can't run none of them back with AI. Unless all of them were AI. I done created my own paradox. Oh, man, we're going to call this the MG paradox. That's it. The nigga logic can do it every time, bro. We don't even got to try. We're just philosophers fly right out the womb and then they want to test the boundaries and make it fit their system before they take credit for it. Ha! <laughs> Funny. Secret lo-fi chain. But we have a paradox. 
where from this eclipse forward or from this point forward where we're having this conversation, all the history before us, I don't know, we're going to follow the Christians. We're going to pretend that life has only existed 6,000 years in all my incarnations. We only got three, 6,000 years, 6,000 years of human recorded history, you know, give or take a flood or recent or thousand of them. And with that, we allege there is no AI. So the hallmark of our civilization for the past 6,000 years has been AI, has been getting computer expert systems and databases to start to gather the data, which was the age of information. And then now we're starting to use the data. And hopefully by 2029, we will create a system that uses the data faster than we can gather it or analyze it, thus us having a genie in a bottle, if you will, that has been rumored to have existed in Tartaria. Lord knows how long ago before these niggas had cars, but they had flying craft. Stay woke. But imagining there was no AI, this moment is the hottest moment in human history then. This is the hottest shit. It's whack. It's corny. There's some gay shit to it. It's cool. We all getting along better. But this is peak civilization. This is peak civilization. This is the most diverse groups of people. We don't rely on tribalism as much. We've created new tribes digitally or in thought. We have collaborated blindly to where like... I don't need to know that I like the nigga in China and India to pay my Verizon bill. So none of that racist bias, all that shit go away as soon as I'm trying to get my bills paid. So we've learned how to coexist optimally as a global world order, if you will, give or take some kinks. Like no one else has ever done this before. Let's let's put that out there. And, And mind you, hashtag allegedly. So we get to this point where, you know, it's the most chaotic, yet it's the most free. You know, it's the most painful, yet the most painless, because all the cool drugs we got now. We have a lot of shit going on for ourselves. We just are drunk with it. We, we're abusing it. We're greedy. We're, we're, we're eating too much. We're like a squirrel, bro, or, or, or a cat, a kitten that's drinking too much milk. We just had too much of it. That The problem that we have is that our bodies are not adapted to the regulation or our minds and our brains and our hormones haven't adapted to novelty. We're still running an old operating system, but the system itself, that's a product of that. You know what I'm saying? It's out of equilibrium. It can't create faster, cooler stuff without more data, without more experiences. And we can't vet that or resonate with that without more time. Cause we're used to being fed on a timeline Like, oh, you only get a Michael Jackson in the 80s. Oh, you only get this in the 90s. Oh, you only get a Jay-Z or a Nas. Oh, five years, 10 years, 15. We, our hormonal response to that is is a slow drip. So it's like someone who's in the hospital and they're on morphine on a drip. It's different than when you put the heroin in your arm and you put the whole syringe in that bitch. They're the same drug, but a different effect. We're on drugs right now. You feel me? We're functioning addicts. Know that. But this is still better than that dumb shit they were talking about was happening just 150 years ago. See what I'm saying? We overcorrected. Normal. We're, we're humans. We're monkeys. You know, we're super evolved monkeys. Hashtag allegedly. We did all that shit with no AI. I need you to know that. We did all of that without technology. By 2029, all of that, all that we went through, will fit on this. You know how crazy it's going to be to say, oh, human life experience for the past 6,000 years by all known humans. That's the next 6,000 years. The next 6,000 years is going to be a series of who gives up. Fuck, nigga. I don't give a fuck about no goddamn ancestor. I don't give a fuck. This AI era 
is going to be a I don't give a fuck era before it's anything else, because we're dealing with narcissists, vampires and demons. Don't you forget where you are. As beautiful as I may have made that sound. Age of belief. You couldn't pull this off unless you're in Aquarius. Because Pisces, everyone gives a fuck. That's why there are so many centralized narratives. This breaking point, you know how they said there's like a singularity. Mm -mm, this ain't no singularity moment, nigga. This is a split. This is a split between the old world and the new world order for real, my niggas. I ain't talking about no cute old white guy bullshit. I'm talking about how the way we function, bro. They, these, these niggas, you see how much shit costs, how much food costs, how much a combo at McDonald's costs, nigga. They lost a goddamn rabbit mind, but they don't have no choice. Because the next phase after this, guys, is death. I need you to know that. I need you to know that everything that has been trying to kill us is set up to die next. I'm talking about financially. I'm talking about structurally. I'm talking about like all the old mainstream surface level conspiracies about what's in your food and stuff. That's all cute and glamorous. Y'all y'all voted democratically in your mind when you clicked on those TikTok videos and YouTube shorts that you didn't want to have none of that shit. Guess what's happening? They're outpricing you who didn't want it. And it was hard for you to say no because what? You were addicted to it. Now it's too expensive to be addictive. Unless you got rich people money for rich people drugs. Ain't that right, Negroes? Oh, no. Nah, cocaine's for white people. That's a rich person drug. They didn't say it wasn't, it wasn't nice. They just said, I don't have enough money for that addiction. They didn't say they wouldn't have it. So we have that. We, we, society, we've seen all the brothers talk about the pros and cons of everything in Maya. And we obviously were just too addicted to end it. So now we use psychic phenomenon or AI, uh, you know, that law that the brother pointed out to me, phenomenon to make it so that your environment causes it to happen. That's why I'm not crying about it. it it's bittersweet. It's like, damn, it's over. But it was like, but what the fuck did you think it was going to happen when you bought a red car, nigga? You bought a red car, you see a red car. Like, why are you surprised? And that's what J.U.G. pointed out. Why are you surprised, nigga? You know how this shit go. They even named it. <clears throat> Correct. So we know the novelty of everything, mass consumerism, post-industrial revolution shit is out the window because it's too expensive. Why do things change? Price. The reason why niggas' behaviors change is because they get out price of that lifestyle, bro. We're in a lifestyle-based society. We're in a class-tier system, bro. They bringing in these foreign immigrants who don't have that bougie shit that we got. Those foreign immigrants might work hard for the rest of this summer. I ain't going to hold you. But by the time they buy that $20 piece of chicken that now tastes like shit, that's now being prepared by a homegirl who got purple hair or even high righted red hair and her attitude, they're going to be like, what the fuck are these Americans on? What the f This shit looks so much hotter in the goddamn music video. Them niggas in 2010 seem to have way more fun than I'm having right now. And it's my first week out. And I got this fat ass paycheck that I'm going to go spend with the companies that are going out of business because that's all they can do. You see what you see what the jug is? We're going to get the federal government to give the immigrants free money to spend at the corporations that are drowning. That's how you know the United States is a what class? A corporation. But niggas like me been telling you that and you think we're just saying that like it's like we're using metaphors and similes. No, nigga, they're paying themselves because there's no money. They're bringing in these people with those credits to keep it alive. Why? Dead internet theory. You know what else is a dead theory? Dead mainstream theory, nigga. So know that's where you at. It don't matter how, who did it wrong. It, it, if we could have avoided it, it, this is what is. I am inevitable, nigga. We're, I'm here. Like, goddamn, we're here now. Like, the type of people we are are here. It can't go back. Because I punched this nigga in the face for real. Like, you see what I'm saying? Like, it may have happened at some point, but we know it didn't happen with me. And if I'm just one of a fractal of many, then it can't happen with us. And, and knowing that and having peace and soliloquy with that, that's what all this other shit with AI and computers and that hoopla is really about. It's, it's about the fact that necessarily your whole life has to change because we have now opened this box. It may look like and sound like everything else. Like, because you see white people having a meltdown on social media that people have mean things to say about white men. I'm like, bro, I grew up with you. This is your first time hearing this? And when the media was making that hot in their movies and television shows, 
why didn't y'all protest? If you know that wasn't true to your nature. Because niggas protest everything that feel like someone's playing with our fucking names and likeness. Y'all sat back still and let your women, I guess, double team you and take the energy from your balls. I don't know. There's there's a dark 3 a.m. way of looking at it. You know, the demasculation agenda and all that stuff. And that's cool. That's like, so gay people will recruit lovers or something. I don't know. It, that seems like an ingenious idea. But at the end of the day, even that has a novelty wear off period. Because it happened in Myanmar already. Because it happened in Russia already. The same thing that our civilization is going through with the genders happened in other places. And guess what? They're past that. Guess what, America? You're next. It happened. They try to take it over with that wave. And it's going to fade out. Because Not because it's a right, wrong, moral thing. It's because of novelty. It's like, yeah, I tried it, whatever. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like the, the numbers are rebalanced. But for the first time in human history, that rebalancing is happening with the aid of technology. It's different. Because you could choose to live in a loop again in some virtual world of the 90s. They listened to enough of these streams to figure it out. You know, they had a critical mass eventually. What I'm saying is the, the possibilities for how people live their life is going to change dramatically. If we make it, you know what I'm saying? Lord willing. But that begs the question, this paradox, I can't see what the next 10 to 20 years with AI functioning as advertised. I can't even imagine what that world looked like, but I can imagine what this world looked like without it. Just like I can imagine what it was like to need a pay phone. Think, think of how crazy these niggas were in the nineties for real. If you're younger than me, my dad taught me how to walk home from school by myself. And first kindergarten, yeah, day one, really. Kindergarten was easy. All I had to do was follow the teacher to the playground and fuck around on the playground with the friends of my age as their parents were picking them up. And then, like, wait 15 minutes, walk to the corner, wait for the cross guard, cross the street, walk through the little cut in the forest, which was the most dangerous part. You could get snatched up and shit. Remember, people was getting on milk boxes back then when I was a kid. They had my ass walking through the woods. But it was real brief. Into apartment complex, um, parking lot. I cross their complex, cross the street. I'm at mine. I go inside. So it was like 15 minutes. Little nigga legs, too. Little nigga legs. My dad taught me how to do that shit by myself. But that was in a rural suburban area. Then we moved to the hood. And this crazy nigga was like, same, same. Dad, it is not the fucking same at all. That nigga's on crack. These niggas around here on crack. Those are prostitutes. This is not the same thing. This is not a East and South Brunswick adventure in fucking East Orange and Irvington. So my dad taught me how to safely go from school to home. That was a cool trick. That was first grade, second grade, third grade. He added some complexity to it. Now I'm fucking with this other bitch. I need you when you get off from home. Th th look how ill my dad was with the bullshit, though. This is how he had to do it, though. So I ain't knocking survival mode, but but people he did. So. When I would walk home third grade in East Orange, she was with a chick. I don't even know where the fuck the street is. I ain't been there so long, but it's near a shop, right? She lived on the other side of the town off of the uh, the highway exit toll booth thing. Like she lived, she lived, she didn't, she, if I lived with her, that would not be my school zone. So I went to my old school and I had from three o'clock when we got out until four o'clock to get to her apartment. Mind you, my dad is riffing with her. D d let's let's make sure we calculate all these details. So she ain't even home waiting for me no more because I'm his kid, not hers. That type of energy in the dancery. My dad peeped game. So he got her downstairs neighbor, Miss Lois. I think that was her name. She was like 60 something. Freaky old frog lady. May may maybe she's rest in peace too. Shout out to Miss Lois. I remember her. And I remember that freaky ass girl she had, uh, her little younger boyfriend, sugar daddy, Herbert, had a daughter. And, you know, I tell that story on another type of platform. But them niggas. So I got to walk there by four o'clock. Miss Lois is home. She's older. She didn't have a job. So what I was supposed to do, because we have cell phones. I had checkpoints. I get from home to the other side of town. Four o'clock check in with Miss Lois. Miss Lois had a phone that would ping my dad if my dad called when he finally got off of work around 30 minutes later than that. And then I would go from four o'clock 
check in with her, run to the back of the apartment, the other street on the other side of the city block, up to the corner, to the corner store, because you know I got to buy me my brownie for my fucking cosmic brownie when it was 25 fucking cents, bitch. Biggest brownie ever, 25 fucking cents. They can eat a dick for real. I remember. I got to catch that shit by 4.15 because now I got to take a city bus. So school, ex-girlfriend crib, neighbor, city block. And I got to go all the way from East Orange to Roselle Linden. If you ever been to New Jersey, you know they ain't the next street. He taught me that as a seven-year-old, that route. And, and, and anything could have fucking happened to me. One day I got in trouble though, because I didn't check in with Lois. So that was a breakdown in the communication pipeline. So when he called at 430 and I had not checked in with her, by the time I got the Roselle an hour, hour and a half later, he was pissed at me. Beat my ass for that actually. But he didn't know why I did it. But he didn't know why I broke the chain. I broke the chain because someone else was trying to whoop my ass. And that's how that's what I'm saying, how whimsical life is. You avoid an ass whooping just to get in an ass whooping. And then you got to ask God, like, yo, was my ass whooping inevitable? And then that's when you start getting clear with yourself and your decisions. Because because it seemed like it was an unavoidable ass whooping. I have i don't know if you've ever been there, brother, but have you ever been in an unavoidable ass whooping in your life where you, where you dodged the shit one way and then life just caught you, you know, and got you another way? Has that ever happened? What, like, what German box do they put that shit in? Like, what's the name of that phenomenon? Because a lot of people are overdue for an ass whooping in case you ain't catch the message. So, yeah, like, I had some bullies and shit. And I seen them. And the only reason why I, you know, missed the but you got you to gotta trust God in all his ways. You just, it, it, that, was a, that was a faith issue for me. I wasn't afraid to fight. So, this is a situation. This is Anthony. Little light skinned Indian nigga like me. Just one great hire to me. His best friend, which was a dark skinned nigga, different tribe. I forgot his name. He's like Jamaican. And then this bitch, the girl. Ah, uh, what's her name? She was a, a red bone. Like, you know, those kids that are born with golden hair? That's very common in New Jersey, but not so common down south. Uh, the people who have goldish red hair and they're really high yellow. I don't know what race or mix of niggas those are, but they pop up in dark skinned families and shit. Them bitches. Something wrong with them. Golden child ass niggas. You know who I'm talking about. Some of you are like that. No disrespect to you, but I've never met a nice one as a child. So as a child, um, she terrorized me because an old babysitter's kids was fucking with her older sister. So I'd be at these other people's place politicking until my dad came and got me and her and her funky ass sister would come over. And I never liked her because she was mad aggressive and mad evil. Like I'm, I'm dead ass. I'm like, I'm not putting no sugar on this shit. Like she was fucked up individual as a child. So she gets around Anthony and this dude and they're, they're pandering to her, you know, hashtag colorism, 1994, 1995. They're pandering to the light skinned girl. I think she ugly. That's just me though. So she makes these niggas flare up is what I'm trying to say to you. If you've ever been around niggas, you know how that is. You get, you get, get some mild manner niggas when nobody's around, but you put a bad bitch around, even, you know, relative to age and size, they act different. Uh, I, 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 do, I don't know if this message is for everybody, but if you had never noticed that, that's why they're trying to impress or show off. But when you're in the hood, the only way you can impress or show off is through violence. That's why that's fucked up. So I was like, you know what? These motherfuckers are never here after school together. These motherfuckers want to get on the bus. I take the bus because I'm not home no more. I'm going further across town, so I take the bus. On this particular day, I skipped the bus because I didn't even want to walk past them because I knew I would have to hit her. Mind you, I'm going to give you some more context now. I had no problem hitting the bitch, but I had just got into a situation where I hit a girl and it turned my classroom against me for a little while. Yeah, 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 yeah. Back in second grade, I had just learned this lesson. It was a tomboy girl. You know, today it would have a pronoun or something. But back then, it wasn't It wasn't as clearly defined. So I was dealing with a tomboy, tomcat girl. And she kept calling me niggy. And she pushed me. I'm like, what you want to do, niggy? And I'm like, the fuck are you talking about? Like, I'll knock your fucking head off. Don't fucking touch me. Like, I, I'm talking about in second and third grade, I'm like that. 
and she pinched me. That triggered another memory to a bitch that pinched me two years prior in kindergarten in that damn long walk I told you about through the woods. Jacumba pinched me. Notice how I remember all these bitches' names. Jacumba, Dominique was the one that pinched me in second grade. And it's just something about being pinched, bro. It's I can deal with the shoves. I can deal with the pushes. I can deal with the words. Like, I'm cool in words. But as soon as you pinch me, it's like you can see the effect. Sometimes it bleeds. And it's like a paper cut. It's just annoying and painful. And it's so small. As soon as she did that, I clocked her stupid ass. Um, and I checked in on her and apologized to her like 20 years later, though, by the way, by the way, ladies, I checked in up on her on like MySpace or something. And she's a girl, girl. I punched that boy shit out of her. She's a girl, girl. I'm talking about high heels, girl, girl. And she is like water under the bridge to her. But anyway, when that happened in real time, it wasn't water under the bridge yet. Made a lot of people mad, rightfully so. But they weren't the ones fucking pinch. So I made a resolution in myself not to punch a girl again. That's my operating system now. I learned already. Like, I I had to punch her then to get to this next awareness because I didn't have no I didn't I didn't know of any other choices. It was beyond shoving, you know, she pinched me, like drew blood from my arm, like, nah, you gonna catch this hand. I'm heavy handed, unfortunately for her. But I felt bad about that. So I stopped. I stopped even putting myself in contentious zones with females. From that day forward, I haven't even had one. If, if a chick tried to swing at me, I step back and she fall on the ground. I let my angels take care of that shit. I don't know. So I know this bitch is on the bus. What's her name, little evil blondie? Ah, what's her name? Ah, if it's off the tip of my tongue, I remember this demon's name. Oh, my God. This ain't the same girl I punched in second grade. The girl, I, Dominique, in second grade, she good money. This, this third one, she wasn't even in my fucking class. I only knew her through mutuals. And um, her sister was 14, 15. Her name was Shug. It was Shug, the dark-skinned one, and then the little evil light-skinned one. Oh, my God, what's your name, girl? If it comes to me later, I'll let you know. I didn't want to have to punch her in the face and go through the same situation I went through in my classroom in second grade with these two niggas who always been trying to bully me already. You know, this, 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 the, the pot is hot. This ain't a bunch of random events. All this shit's connected in my head. And my whole life has been connected in my head like that. Honestly, up to me speaking right now, like I can connect it from that or those moments. And um, so I skipped the bus. It's cool. I didn't always take that bus because I don't always live on that side of town. So I know where I used to live down the street from my school. This is Whitney Houston school, by the way. When I used to go to that school, walk down the street, take me like 15 minutes to get home. But from that house to my dad's future ex-girlfriend's house, it's another 15, 30 minutes down the main street. Like I'm going from East Orange, Springdale Avenue to like Lenox or uh, what is that? Shepherd Avenue, like on that side of town, if you know where ShopRite and shit is. Boom. So I'm going from Whitney Houston, Franklin Street to ShopRite, basically. It's a hike. So, um... What's crazy about that is that I skipped the bus, walked with my friend Tyrone Parrish at that time, instead of Wade Ray. <laughs> I had two best friends because I had hands, and um, but they lived on two different sides of the town. So I, so I remember having to make the decision to choose one or the other since I wasn't taking that goddamn bus. And I think I walked a long way with Tyrone. Then I caught up. And I, this whole time I thought this niggas and this bitch was on the bus. I get to the end of my street on Springdale and they're right across the street from me. So two problems. I need to hurry to fuck up before I miss the city bus to Roselle. But these niggas who I'm avoiding are walking in front of me and I can't speed past them. It's a long, that's a long walk, buddy. That is eight city blocks that we're all going the same fucking direction because we're all on the same goddamn bus. They're going to turn around doing a backflip being kids and see my ass. It's a wrap, nigga. It's a wrap, nigga. I'm going to have to fight these motherfuckers. And now I'm scared. What does that mean? I'm going to have to hurt them. So as I prepare for my untimely demise or theirs, I stop real quick. Like right before I got to the corner and they could see me. Now they're, they're catty corner. They're going across. They crossed already. Now they're going left. 
All they got to do is look left and they'll see me across the street looking stupid. And I see them. I stop and I pray. I told God, like, I don't know what's going on in this universe right now, but I can't afford to get into this fight. Not just because I got to fight them, but because my bus is at four o'clock and I'm already running late. See, the bigger batter wolf wasn't the niggas in front of me. It was my father waiting for me. So I'm so I'm on Mission Impossible. I'm dodging two ass whoopings for the price of one. Y'all don't even know it yet. Like, I'm not even there yet. This is just coming home from school, bro. I don't think y'all heard me what I said. I'm like eight years old. Like that type of, you know what I'm saying? That elevated fuckery, that elevated consciousness, that elevated awareness of violence and and, and consequence at eight. We're talking about third grade, second grade. Make sure it's got me green apples. My help came from beyond the hills. No sooner than I closed that prayer and opened my eyes, there's a car beeping at me. Beep. Uncle Carl, truck driver, never home during the daytime. He just so happened to be in his Honda today. At the time, he's never around. And he just so happens to be driving past his house, which I used to go to after school. And he sees me on the way to do something he normally doesn't do. And then he pulled down his car window. He had a, uh, what was those Hondas called? Because you know how it is with strangers and getting abducted and shit. He had a rare car, so I knew it was him. He had like the hatchback Honda. I don't know what the fuck they're called, but this is 1993, four. He had a hatchback CRT type Honda. So I knew it was him. And I talked to him. He's like, where you going? I said, I go to Iris house. By four. So... I drove past my ass whooping and he took me to Iris house actually to check in with Lois. Remember I got to meet that four o'clock. No, I got to meet a four thirty phone call. My dad's going to do inevitably after I'm gone to see if I did it for whatever fucking reason, bro, because I was high off life that I prayed and got an answer when I needed it. And then that took me to the next situation or next segment. And I bypassed the bullies. I think I just was just high off the adrenaline or energy and I just kept going. I was like, because remember, I don't have a cell phone. Keep in mind, I don't even have a watch. We talked about 1994. I don't have a watch. I don't know what time it is. All I know is that if Carl's car had a timer on it and I read it and it says something like 344 or 350, I wasn't going to fuck with Lois. Because I still got to get my fucking cosmic brownie for 25 cents across the street from the bus stop to go to Roselle. So I think he dropped me off and I just took a beeline through the parking lot and all that shit. Got to the main street, got my cosmic brownie, got to the bus. We in here, squad. Just for Lois to have panicked that she didn't see me, which is my fault, to tell my dad, ooh, and then my dad have to like, be a dad and, and, you know, discipline me because all that dumb shit that he set up because he living wrong. D- don't miss the dancing bear here. I'm diving all these hoops and shit because of this nigga. It's not even my own karma yet. But I still got my ass whooped. That's what life is like. That's what Saturn is like. That's what Jehovah is like. That's what the Old Testament is like. Can't nobody talk to me about no Hebrew shit. My life Hebrew is fuck. Even when you write you wrong. Not everybody going to know those stories and not everybody going to care or believe them. But that's why it's important that you take inventory of that shit and that you, they, they call it like the inner child and healing and stuff. I don't take it to that. I don't take it to the feminine side of it. It's it's not, oh, tragedy that happened to me as a young boy. Oh, where was your mother? Mm-mm. That's one version of reality for sure. But ultimately, given the nature of this beast, I was just aware much longer than most people who have yet to have their ass whooped by life. <clears throat> life whooped my ass fresh out. Just just taking your mother away is an ass whooping. You know what I'm talking about? Growing up in East Orange, Camden, 
just even if you had a great life there, that's an ass whooping. Like you talking about slavery and them beating the slaves and shit. That's why I believe that shit. Cause life was already whipping my ass in HD, my nigga. Like I can imagine a white person that don't know you or love you doing you bad. Life is doing me bad. And that's me talking to God. You feel me? That's what I'm praying about. That's what I'm talking. I'm talking shit to God for real. Low key. Not trying not to be blasphemous. Like, hey, yo, my nigga, like, I just, I just promise you I'm gonna hit no bitch again. And when I avoided hitting a bitch again, I ended up getting my ass kicked by my dad. You need to break down how that worked. Prelude. You got it, Pat Lee. A Honda Prelude? No, it was a Honda CRT, CRX or some shit. <laughs> Shout out to Billy Batson. He says, sign and acknowledge. Oh, you dropping likes? Saki, Saki Mono says, is Lucifer coming? I hope not. Shout out to Jaler. He's a brother, MG. Life is whimsical and capricious, like women. Come on now. You already know the story. My life more so than some others and not as bad as others. I tell you that. I've seen I've seen polarities. But on average, this nigga, I'm on the other side of that bell curve. Billy Bassett said, life stays smacking me up like that. 2020 body to brother. Shit. Me too. Hashtag me too, nigga. I'm, I might be entitled to compensation from life. 2020, 2019. Like I said, as soon as like Missy dropped that project, I knew life was over. I was like, life as I understood it is a wrap. Like, this shit is mid, and this ain't supposed to be mid. There's nothing on paper that would make me think this could ever be mid, and it is mid. Therefore, something changed. And the more I try to grapple and wrestle with these changes, the more I really, you know, it's futile, in fact. But in, in the futility of trying to wrap your mind around all these changes that we've just endured, you know, you get an appreciation for how much it really changed. Rather than people just like, man, life goes on. Like, oh, man, I wish I had that. You know what I'm saying? My brain won't, my brain don't accept that as an answer. Like, man, there is no man hand. Nigga, it changed. The fuck is going on? Why y'all playing? Because you know what it is? I think what happened with me, like, as an observer, like, trying to, quote, unquote, come up with solutions for the people. I know it's most of the people who kind of write off and man hand the real difficult or deep or important stuff. I noticed them maybe relatively be a little bit happier in ignorance for sure, but their lives are so I think it's a side effect of looking for meanings. And I don't think that everyone's narrative requires meaning. And I don't think it's no coincidence the same way in the macro of me walking around East Orange as a child without a cell phone. And being, you know, us to a civilization that's addicted to cell phones. Like, I'm not lost on the nuance in that. And uh, I had to pay attention for whatever reason in those areas, you know the roads less traveled. And that has helped me see other things that I didn't go through, or I can kind of use that base level of experience to shine light on other things that I may not be directly privy to. I have a way of knowing things now because I was never disillusioned into, oh, well, I was never disillusioned into coincidence. I was never disillusioned into, you know, space or whatever, like none of the, none of None of those people talking to me had enough conviction in their spirit or had enough answers for me to to trust. So because I can't trust it, then I question it. And then when I started questioning it, I end up questioning the people. And then you get to a point where you're like, oh, NPCs. And then you realize how many NPCs are in your life. And that might even be a coping thing, too, right? Because there's got to be a different way to live besides the way that I live in order to make the novelty of the way that I live novel. So I hate boxing people as NPCs, but to say it, you understand exactly what I mean. Like a lot of these people can't think and that hurt me. I don't know why, man. I meet because of my predisposition to this type of stuff. I meet so many 
would be smart people. And they treat it like it is an advantage. Like it's weaponized. Like being smart for dorks is like a superpower to them. To me, it's just like, I'm not even sure we smart. We just buying all the bullshit easier than the regular people, if you're honest. The nigga skipping school to go fuck on that bitch is a little bit further ahead of the curve than me and you are, especially if the commandments to go forward and fucking multiply, nerd. Uh, no. Only a few Hebrew Israelites. But yeah, so like, nah, like, nah, most people weaponize intelligence or gatekeep information. It's the same thing. It's the same fear. It's the same lack. And I seemingly, conditionally, erroneously go the other way. When I should go that way, when I should monetize, when I should keep it to myself, when I should narc 48 laws to degree people out of it, when I should, you know, Sun Tzu art of war people more often. And the reason why I can't is because I told God I wouldn't hit these bitches in their face no more. And y'all missed the whole play. You feel me? The reason why I don't smack these bitches in the face no more is because I promised God I wouldn't smack these bitches in the face. And by bitches, I don't mean women no more. So, this that's, uh, it's a sign of weakness to me to have to put your hands on a bitch. To me, and I've done it. And I've done it. Because my weakest moment as a second grader was my ego that I couldn't let this girl get away with talking bad about me. And the bitch probably liked me. I learned that shit at second grade. You feel me? So not everybody learned that that way though. And and that's where I'm kind of like appreciating like, yo, you know, it's, it's not on us, it's in us. We're not the same. Literally, we're not the same, obviously. That story ain't your story. So I need to stop acting like we're the same. And that's been my ministry. And us healing and coping with that requires us to tell our story and not somebody else's. I think that's where I'm going with that. (laughs) Because I didn't watch these stories and these lessons on Everybody Hates Chris. He had, he had a whimsical life in that story, but my whimsicalness was violent. That is trauma. That is PTSD. That is militant. That is, all right, now let's go back 50 years. All right, all right, now let's go back 100 years. That was required for my people because there's white people here. Everybody points the fingers at niggas and is trying to figure out, like, what's wrong with these niggas? I'm just able to articulate to you exactly what's wrong with us. What's wrong with us is survival mode. We're in survival mode because what's wrong with you? Don't kumbaya that shit and and, and brush it under a bridge. Don't fucking threaten me with a good time and talk about, uh uh-oh, you niggas finally got your own voices and healing your trauma and identifying who your ancestors are. Now it's time for the world to end. Nah, y'all eat a fucking dick for real. Y'all need to suffer a little bit longer. Nah, y- y'all ain't just about to skate out into the new world in a thousand years. Nah, 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 nah. Nah, we've been rocking like this since at least the American Revolution. It's over now that we up. Nah, y'all eat a dick for real. I don't believe none of that. And it don't make sense. God caught me slipping out of one ass whooping and gave me a worse ass whooping. I hope you ain't miss it. Me getting to fist the cuffs with that girl and them boys, they may not even be able to fight me. You feel me? Especially if I if I had rocked off on Anthony first, like I planned on. I wasn't unprepared. If I would have dropped his stupid ass, she'd have been like, oh my God, but she would have tried to encourage the other one to fight me. And he a bitch. So all I had to do was drop Anthony for real. Don't get it fucking twisted. I just had to get there undetected on some solid snake shit. And that's where my fear came in. Because they about to see me. If them niggas had never saw me, I would have caught him lacking. That's survival mode. Guerrilla warfare. Where would we get that from? Why would a second grader know all of that? 
And if I'm willing to do that with these niggas and these stars, you think I wouldn't have been able to do that in Africa if I was from there? You're not hearing me, though. You're not hearing me. So, yeah, I know I know we're different. Our stories are different. We had to endure this differently because the circumstances are different. And they're old circumstances. Yet, they're the same modern benefits that everyone else gets, though. You see what I'm saying? It's like, oh, no, all the bad stuff is old. But all the good stuff you got from doing the bad stuff is, is still here, brother. You don't let go of that privilege? Of course not. Because you're in survival mode, too. I ain't forget. And you see? The trauma passes on to the trauma. Hurt people hurt people. You see the loop, right? That's what I'm saying. I can't do this shit with racism. I can't be a black supremacist. That means I'm a bitch. Because only a bitch-ass nigga would think he better than me. How you go from discovering me to being better than me? You even have time to get to know who I was for real. And my whole life is mirrored around me getting to know who you are. No one prioritizes anyone getting to know who we are, which is why people who aren't from here can say we're all the same. Because you don't know who the fuck we are. You know what Jewish people think we represent in media. You don't know our stories and our adaptability. You don't know that pain. You don't know how the people who were brutalized adapted and raised their kids as a side effect. And you want to say, we are the world. It's all over none. Jesus gets to come back now because you're just now getting uncomfortable. Go fuck yourself. You're not hearing me. And I apologize in advance, but I got to speak for my people on this, only on this matter, right? You can fast forward it. But who the fuck do you think you are to suggest that the world has to end now because it's just now getting uncomfortable for your bitch ass. Fuck you. And fuck any spiritualist, scientist, Christian, whoever's on that wavelength. It's pussy to me. The good news is we'll see who's correct. Because I have a feeling this shit's going to keep going. And with that being said, eclipse be damned. One thing's for sure, two things for certain. You ain't getting away from this ass whooping. Nah. Nah. Impossibility. It's impossible. It's impossible, bro. I I tried. I tried my best. I tried my best to get away from an ass whooping. And I prayed to God about it. Don't miss the don't miss the silver lining. My yes be yes and my no be no. I have no reason to ad lib a stupid ass story of my trauma. Shout out to Troy Laugh. Shout out to Haru on the track. Baby Kids. Men in Black 2. Will Smith was like, K, who talks like that? <laughs> Shout out to Shogun. I see you, King Davis. Texas in the building. F is in the building. Pat Lee, I see you. Tyrone Sellers. What's the best? What's the best you talked about? Tyrone, since I've been watching you. Thank you. I'm not bad after all. Oh, that's the best that I've talked about over Tyrone. Yeah, one of my best friends was Tyrone Parrish, man. And you know what's crazy? I left. So I always had to make a choice between Tyrone Parrish and Wade Ray. Wade Ray went on to California to go to Stanford to be a nerd because he was. He was a, he's a glasses wearing nerd, but he was the coolest nerd ever. And he probably had the coolest black dad I've ever met in my life. Mr. Ray. And um, so Wade lived on one side and Tyrone lived on the other side. At a time, Tyrone lived across the street from me. So every time we go to school, we walk together. Um, Tyrone had a sister and two brothers, but they were older than us. But me and Tyrone were cool. But Tyrone was a little ornery, though. Tyrone had a little more nigga to him. <laughs> I can't explain it. They're high yellow Indian type niggas. But they're like, Ur, like, like thugs. And they had a house and everything. Two, pa- two parent home, East Orange Dream. But it was, it was, it was coming. Pause. And I say that to say, I found a lot of my, my that part of my childhood choosing. You know, I'm going to walk away because it's closer to where I got to go now. Or I'm not going to turn my back on Tyrone. Because I could still get home if I walk with Tyrone. I just 
we lived on my school was on the same block I lived on basically. So, you know, you just pick which corner of that block you walk home from. You, as long as you walk around it, you can get back on the main road. So this is near uh, East Orange have a spot called Uppsala College. If they don't know what Uppsala College is, they wasn't from East Orange. Tell them to eat a dick for real. I'm really from there for real, for real. I'm telling you. I used to see Vinny from Naughty by Nature at Brenda's. For real, for real. I was really outside for real. But it was not at a time I could have capitalized on it because I was in fucking third grade. But I remember everything. So, yeah, I would just choose, like, either I'm going to walk on the north side, get to Uppsala College with Wade, or I'm going to walk with Tyrone. He cuts off early. And I continue to walk to the end of the street, make a left, and get back on that main street anyway, just two blocks further down. And I, would choose, and I don't know why, but my spirit was like, Tyrone need a friend more than Wade does. Mm. Because my whole function is safety, right? Remember, I'm the biggest kid. Like, not, not tall, but you know what I'm saying? I'm fighting already. A lot of kids my age weren't fighting. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I'm like big brother. Then I started school late. So I'm technically older than most of these kids, at least by six months. So Tyrone and whatever his shit was going on through his childhood, I didn't know what it was. I just felt it. So I walked with him more. And then the times when I would walk with Wade, because I'm trying to get home fast, he'd get really upset and emotional almost. He wouldn't show it, but it being his spirit. And I didn't know I was an empath. So I would pick up on it. And because I'll pick up on it, I try to patch it up type shit. Long story short, had I continued that walk, had I continued to walk with Tyrone, I know where Tyrone ended up. And no disrespect to Tyrone or any straight stranger of imagination. But um, like I said, Wade went to Stanford and Tyrone was gangbanging. There's two kids, three of us, three amigos. Same kids, same favorite Power Rangers, same Ninja Turtles video game, and three very different outcomes. And like I said, the one with the good dad had the most on paper um, result, better result. Tyrone had his whole family, including his older brothers. But you know what that story is? His older brother, Pete, was a crip. So of course Tyrone's going to be a crip. He thinks he's Pete. Me, being a protector... I already know the rest of that story. I don't need to know it because I have a cousin that stayed behind and I saw what happened to him. I have another female cousin who was my protector. She stayed behind. She's she's strung out on crack. I have another cousin who came down here a year before I did. He still ended up strung out on crack. Like, I watched that shit destroy my tribe. For real. And I had to walk in the same streets and make the same turns they did. Same inputs. So, nah, fuck these niggas. They think shit, like, just just white Jesus is going to come and save them because shit's getting a little uncomfortable. I got people whose lives are destroyed in modern era because of the fuck shit and benign neglect. I go up top. And it's like the fucking bat signal goes off. My cousin that strung out, she finds me within 24 hours. My yes be yes, my no be no. She don't be around. I'm asking like, where's she at? When's the last time you seen her? How's she doing? She clean? She, you know, is she in, you know, a lot of people who are like long-term addicts, they have, sometimes you can catch them not slipping. Don't nobody be knowing. And then I show up. Guess who's in town? Guess who was down the street? It's always her. It's almost so bad that I feel like I don't even want to do that to myself. Like, I need to go there just to see that she's still alive. That's my protector. That shit don't make sense. But I know when she fell apart. Because I was there. Yeah. Shit's, shit's heavy. Shit's heavy. It's real, though. That's real shit. There ain't no Tyler Perry shit. So Eclipse. 
changing the channel. I don't know. I've seen it change. <laughs> I, I talk about that shit. I guess right now. I have to feel it right now. But that's not my life right now. You know what I'm saying? It's like I'm looking at very beautiful trees turning white, red, and all the other colors. I don't have nobody making it uncomfortable for me to go home, walk home. I ain't got to worry about where my food coming from, for real, for real. At least not right now. It's the best part of my life, almost. Close. Relatively speaking. And the only thing that changed was time. These next couple of years are going to be critical. Because as all the weird shit plays out, all the hateful shit that lacks power, as all these narratives play out and they shuffle out and then AI sweeps in and sorts it out and whatever, minority report, thought police, all that cool shit that you see signs of, as that starts to happen more, you have to remember that it's just regular flawed humans leading it with a fraction of the experiences. So that necessitates that there's going to be a time, a process to get this shit right, just on average. But your life will never be the same. Because it's here already. AI is here. They say by 2029 and then 2039, 2049. Whoop, whoop, whoop. You're not going to, we're not going to, like I said, I don't, all that up, that whole shit that I went through with the bullies, the girl and my dad, all of that, like literally bar for bar, that whole episode cannot exist in this timeline. Had I had a cell phone, had I had a chat app, had I had a a video game or YouTube, because they would have been distracted. Like them kids today ain't got to go through that, Lord willing, ever. Like there's no context in which that reality can manifest itself. That's what I think about, like how much of my life and my experiences are in, are not invalidated, but uh, are are phantoms because th- you can't create the same storm again. You can't, you can't, you can't do American Revolution 2.0. That don't make no sense. The first one was a lie. You know what I'm saying? The people who started it weren't the people who suffered and lost. So the people being who feel that they're suffering relatively are not going to be the victors in a war they historically are borrowing because they weren't the victors then. And if life is that fucking silly that they're just going to loop it anyway by pretending to be something they're not, and then the results are predetermined by the loop, then you really got to step aside on some 3M ship and ask yourself, what the fuck is really going on down here? How they keep falling for the same fucking loop. And it seems indiscriminate to the truth of the matter. You're not the niggas of that book and you're not the niggas in that war. But both of you have the same fucking common denominator. You love these violent delusions. You motherfuckers want to end the world. Ain't going to happen, Captain. And you motherfuckers want to chop your dicks off. You see what I'm saying? Now, now let me go deep because I'm a trauma. I'm a traumatized person. So I had to go dive in deep to keep it so I can keep going without crack. I'm going to tell you about these other traumatized people. Only reason why your woman would be crucifying your penis symbolically through policy, through media, repetitively, they're chopping the white man's dick off, right? Ain't no one lost on that, right? I'm not talking about transgenderism. I'm not talking about how you feel inside, nigga. I'm talking about the symbology of the mainstream media of it. In the movies and the DEI, like it's all about who who's being affected negatively the most. The white man. Why would why would the white man's great mother chop his dick off? You only chop the dick off a bitch. Unix. We know we know pieces of that story, but we don't appreciate the loop, because it's a loop, right? It was Unix who did the Boston Tea Party. Don't you fucking miss it. So why would women, white women, turn on white men? 
I'm talking about in terms of narrative, right? I know there's some great white people out there with their great families and great kids. Awesome. Fucking keep it up. But for everybody else. With a man, the power starts with his dick. Or his balls is the way we describe it, right? That's where all the contention comes from, right? That's where the prostate is. That's where the testosterone is being generated. It starts there. So if I chop your dick off, what happens? Even symbolically, I'm taking away your authority. I'm taking away your base in your chest. I'm taking away your pride. I'm taking away your role, a critical role in the manifestation of our tribe and generation. So if the white women are pushing feminist agendas with the Jewish people that result in less white babies being born, who is going through whose genocide right now, class? They denied it when it was us. Oh, there was no genocide of your people. Oh, there was no paper side, genocide, ethnocide, brown paper bag side of your identity in tribes. So we've been taught by their own logic and narcissism what qualifies for suffering. They taught us how many suffering points we accrued and how it wasn't enough to acquire a promise of a treaty, 40 acres and a mule. We didn't suffer enough for reparations, but the guys who had a three bad years with Hitler get money to this day from people who didn't do it to them. We're not allowed to have any recourse for any of the wrongs. And I know on a legal lease level, on a paper tape level, they, they cannot because of how they organize their corporation. But I'm just talking about even how they justify it or not. They've taught us that we haven't suffered enough to be made whole. Now, for everybody else who's been suffering, now that they're suffering, we're like, you didn't even meet the threshold to talk reparations yet, so keep suffering. Getting your dick chopped off is the worst thing you can go through as a man, especially if when you go through it, you keep living. And I'm not talking about by a man who didn't want the parts and the smoke. I'm talking about the one who lives in it proudly. For someone to take that from you, that's you take everything. You can't go forth and be fruitful no more. So you have no purpose. If you're not procreating as a man, you have no purpose. If you're not building as a man, AI, you have no purpose. And if the bitches ain't fucking you because your dick ain't whatever or whatever, you have no purpose. If the white man in our demonstration, as we understand it, has no purpose outside of patriarchy, which is control. If the so-called white supremacist demonstration is over, which it has been, then what job does AI fulfill? So white guys who are developing the AI, when you guys are finished, if you're not done already, you already don't have a purpose no more. The AI is white. AI is going to tell you everything a white boo, a white dude who went to college will tell you. The AI is white. Don't don't get it fucked up. There's no nigga logic in that shit yet. I tried it. AI is a bunch of white boys, which is fine. M mind you, what when I'm saying white, I understand the difference between status and color and European and pedigree. Get it? I get it. I'm talking about the people who identify as a color, as white, in this demonstration today, 2024, 3 a.m. Be damned. I watched while I thought I was struggling and overcoming these traumas. We are watching these white boys get fucking castrated in real time. Like we're watching the eunuch process of their own generations. We're watching the ethnocide and genocide of white people for real. And everybody quiet about it. Now you got to learn from that, though, because what was the question that we always had? What happened to us? And you go back in time, and I showed you those newspaper articles about the niggas, the Negroes from Africa, the Moors, and the horses. 
and how they said the Moors were proud people and they're showing off and showboating and shit. You see how like us shining too bright will cause people in the shade in the shade and the shadows to plot against you. Am I preaching? Because I learned that watching white people teach me that they knew what happened. And then I watched them knowing what happened as they claim to have done it happen to them. And even when they're in the middle of facing genocide, it's still fuck niggas. Shout out to Starstruck. He said, am I holding a spirit? Yes. It's a spear that holds the microphone. But then you get all this reverb. It's still fuck niggas. That is... That is like, if that's not a sign, <laughs> if that's not a sign of something, I, I haven't made a conclusion yet. I haven't made a conclusion yet, but if that's not a sign of something, bro, like all the propaganda and energy is still focused on countering what niggas have done while they're under attack spiritually, you know, as above, so below. It starts spiritually, then it becomes physical. Um, and I don't want to live through that or see that. I don't wish that for nobody, let alone myself. So what I'm trying to say is we can't even celebrate that. It's, it's the least rewarding, uh, position to be on, on this chessboard, right? Because like the way the story, the hero's journey is written, like someone has to win, someone has to lose. Because obviously compromise is not in the vocabulary of any of these niggas in this country. So I can't even celebrate when my oppressor is out of here because I run the risk of looping the story back to myself. So I'm being fake nice because I punched that bitch in second grade. You don't hear me, though. What if I punched her in the face and the classroom didn't turn against me? What if I punch her in the face and Tyrone and Wade give me high fives? What if I would have punched her in the face and the teacher gave me a sticker? What if I punched her in the face and at the end of school that day, surprise, my dad came and picked me up? What if I punched her in the face? You get what I'm saying? These people have been getting away with punching us in the face for a long time. So it's not so much that they don't believe in karma or retribution of a cumulative action on a universal divine principle, you know, eclipse be damned, right? They're so used to everyone telling them it was okay to punch us in the face that their whole view of life is fucked. And that's not something you can reprogram. I haven't had a girl since. But if I was enabled, then what? That's what's happening. These people have been enabled through narrative because they weren't there. You see what I'm saying? These are new zygotes. These are people who didn't live who didn't live as a slave master or a slave. And they still have that air and pride and privilege that seems to be spiritually, you know, they don't they're not aware of it, which is scary, scary. Which is how we stumble into the fact that there's someone behind them too. But they don't know that. They don't know it's not them. They're going to suffer the same. The same thing with them people looking for a red heifer. They don't know that shit ain't their story. It'd be so much cooler if they just did their story. Whatever the fuck that is. But now they're going to have to invoke a, what, a jealous God or a Saturn Yahweh type energy. that Because it's not the real thing. So it's something symbolic of that. It's all about discipline. You want to invoke Yahweh right now? Like... At the peak pornography AI generation capital you want to make? You want to do you want to do Yahweh right now? You sure? 
You want to do Saturn right now? Are you sure? Or they, or do they have a choice? We don't even know that conversation. We don't even know if their own psychology is compelling them on autopilot or if it's an organize, organized, you know, patriarchy or matriarchy, wink, wink, hint, hint. We, we don't know because it's all a conspiracy. It's all fake. But I tell you one thing, sure has got me green apples. All the results are real. What, what, <laughs> all right. So it's not a spiritual thing because all that shit's made up and non-scientific. So why are they uh, fucking vacuuming and losing power rapidly? Why is the narrative that they control turning against them? And how come they can't stop it? You got to think about it now because we've been, the whole world's been pointing at us, waiting for us to get right. Cool. So there is no spiritual component, no hidden world, underworld, deep state component to the fuckery of the white man. Seems convenient. So who's doing this to him? Because the reason why they're going through it is because we ask how. Don't miss that. That's probably the takeaway here. It's happening because you wondered how, just like I wondered about this person, I seen him, and then I wondered about it being confirmation, and then I seen her. So the universe has winked at me twice to make sure I didn't fucking miss it, so I can tell y'all. So if I'm missing all the winks from the universe and I'm the white guy right now, who's doing this to me? If it's not the stuff that I say was taboo, you know, alleged conspiracy, unproven. If it's none of those things that niggas are saying is what I'm saying. To keep it simple, who's doing this to the white man? It starts at home. If someone, if, and I, I'm going to be as careful and sensitive as possible when I say this, because my, my narrow ass life path didn't give me all perspectives. I don't know everyone's internal dialogue or struggle, right? So I can't overstate this fact that I'll say some shit time to time that's flippant based on my experience. But I do not mean to dehumanize or push down anyone, especially strangers I don't fucking know. So, you know, caution. But when it came to this transgender shit, the only people I really see push it for real, like pushing P on it to be like so that I feel bad for having something fucked up to say is women. Nary a nigga has ever made me feel bad about banging on the idea of a transgendered person, right? It's never like I'm with my niggas, my family, my people, and they're dudes. And I'm like, why does nigga dress up like a bitch for real? You know, that's how niggas start their bullshit. Like, why the fuck does nigga think he look cute in a goddamn dress? Nary a nigga hits me and says, don't talk like that. Don't judge. Nary a nigga has ever made me feel bad for wondering why a nigga is dressed like a girl. I'm talking about my whole life. In fact, it's been a little bit more heavy handed the other way, right? I remember I grew up through when this wasn't normalized and I lived through when they said they were normalizing it and everyone else, particularly women said, why would they normalize something like that? No one would choose to be like that. Th that's women who said that shit. First of all, it wasn't dudes. I've never heard a dude say no goofy shit like that about none of this shit to me. So it's always been women. It's been feminism. So, uh, so a byproduct of independent, bad bitch, feminism wave, communism is a bunch of niggas chopping their dicks off. Don't miss that, Myanmar. You, you, why you think Thailand got an over, a, a overflow problem? Y'all wasn't doing the history on that. I get it. Not your fault. But once you do. So who's doing it to the white boy? Who's telling the white boy it's okay? You can chop your dick off. His mother. Whoa, Black Betty, Bama Lamb. Black Betty had a child. Bama Lamb. The damn thing went wild. Bama Lamb. Black Lives Matter. We know black don't mean black. Black means white. It means pale. Which is why it's so proliferate over the mainstream media because controlled by the Gazarians. Because they know the spell work, right? Don't miss it. Hashtag Balam, right? Don't miss it. They invoke that energy. Shout out to Kaepernick, right? You remember. And also another hybrid. Don't don't miss the loops. 
It's always a light-skinned nigga trying to change the motion of the ocean for the original people, but we'll get past that too. Hashtag colorism. But that's just how they like to do it. We're at the Frederick Douglass. So, be it as it may. It's the white girls who caused the United States to fall. I don't want nobody to miss that. And I know not every white girl, not all of us is Daquan, not all of us is thugs, not all of us did crack, not all of us joined gangs. I know, but I know the ones who did. It ain't me, but I know who did it. And it's clear to see that we're living through the the, the revolt of the white woman versus the, the white man. There's an unspoken trauma there or unspoken social condition amongst white men and white women that's not being addressed like in a white woman and white man way. Right now they make white people are so arrogant about life that they think all of their problems is everyone's problems, which why when you hear me speak, I'm always making like little pie slices and boxes for myself. But white people don't do that. White people are the standard. They're the de facto standard. They're the averages. They're the nine out of 10 scientists. White people is, is the voice of narrative. I'm talking about narrative now. I'm not saying that's how you wake up and how you act and how you treat people. White people also are the first ones to miss nuance. And I don't know what that's about. But white people, this is your show. The United States of America acting as a company, corporation, country, is y'all shit. Demonstrably. Most of this 3M shit is about white people because they centralize themselves and all the shit that we're 3M. When we're trying to uncover black history by looking at American history, you notice we only get white history. So that means United States history is only white history. It's not black history. That's why none of our shit is in it. And we've been running that way for over 150 years, at least according to the white people that taught us. I don't know the real story. I wasn't there. I don't think it adds up, but I like it. So we're going to rock with that. White people, the white man and the white female are not on the same accord politically. They're not on the same accord financially. When they talk about the averages, like more women are making more money and going to college, they're not talking about black people. Or it's not exclusive to us. We have a lot of sisters that are nurses and got educations and businesses and eyelash techs. That's awesome. If you got to survive in a system that's raping you financially and you rather do that than face the truth of who you are, I guess we're fucking winning. But when it comes to white people, none of that, none of that, they don't have the same catalyst or they don't, they don't land in the same box because they're not classed as black. So even when they try to say we're the same, these smart, well-to-do college educated legalese ass niggas can't even admit that, that we're all the same. But as long as you're black, we're not. As long as I'm still calling you black. On the census, as long as when CNN comes on and the votes come in and there's black votes, we're not the same. Because that's the surface. The surface is the interface with the politics. The back end is the code and the goddamn laws. There's black laws, nigga. The the fucking dictionary for it is called black law. So on a legal standpoint, black people, white people act like they don't know there's a difference which is very dishonest, super duper dishonest. Get Candace Owens out the fuck out my face and teach me and show me a white person that knows there's a difference between being white on a passport and black on a passport. Until they're willing to tell the truth and shame the devil, I don't hear none of that kumbaya we're the same shit because y'all liars on that level. And maybe that's like a, like, Y'all don't appreciate that because it doesn't affect you. So you're not even lying. You just don't know. And you don't care because nothing, none of that sounds like you need to change it. What I'm telling you is cool. You haven't reached the minimum threshold of fuckery yet. Then You're not ready to grow. Most of us is waiting for, I'm going to say this flippantly. Most of us is waiting for white people to grow up. Where to Yacoub? The whole story of white people is about someone, some nigga, choosing them and raising them. There's no other version of that story, by the way. And I'm going to give you a few examples so you can catch the pattern. 
All right, MG, what's another example of niggas waiting for white people to grow up? Yakub, Jacob, the Moors in Europe, the people who saved everyone on the Mayflower during the winter, Thanksgiving hashtag. The reason why Congress went to see Medea in the 1800s. The Bacon Slave Rebellion. At every one of those points and turns, there's a black man there trying to help the white boy out. I'm talking about the Buffalo Soldiers, Dreadlock, Rastas. I'm talking about City Muhammad to George Washington. There is no history where white people have power when they're not having their hand held by a nigga. I'm not saying that's for everybody. I'm saying there's no history of that. Do it one more time. There's no history of it. As long as white people have been around, there's been niggas with them. But as long as niggas have been around, not all niggas have had white people with them. You know what I'm saying? We, I'm not Jacob. <laughs> I'm not King Arthur. They had white people. As far as I know, we didn't. Know that we're not all the same, even in that. That's that's a that's a glaringly big difference giving today and what we're living through as people who didn't have white people forever. That's not hate. That's not disrespect. That's just the, the little bit of history I can dig up about white people because they don't have history that they want to share with us. All the white history that you assume is white is categorized back into nationalities and those nationalities don't mean white. We imply it to be white. Thus, white people are satisfied with the narrative. But Portuguese and Spain after an Iberian king, are still niggas. And you white people didn't say you were Spanish or Portuguese. So how is this your story? How is this your country? How are those your treaties? How is that your land? You're not even the niggas that came here first. So the whole history has been there. Get what I'm saying? The, the whole history is niggas on standby waiting for what white people are about to figure out and do. Up until this eclipse... Niggas, Dolo, Red Pill, Blue Pill, MG Pill, all these niggas been telling y'all about how important the sky clock is. Where did Crow Triple Seven? But you notice, like, all of a sudden, it's white hot. Get it? White hot. Now that it's white hot, now the mainstream media is talking about it. These same bitch-ass niggas were shitting on Mercury Retrograde just a couple of months ago. I ain't forget. Everybody was shitting on us for talking about Mercury Retrograde. I ain't forget. And then McDonald's has a Mercury retrograde menu. And now motherfuckers want to talk about eclipses and the ramifications. Eat a dick. But that's just the inner child in me. That's the inner East Orange in me. And the reason why I flare up like that is because of all the chastisement I got to go through just to say some white people shit first. I say this shit as a nigga. It's different. I got to fight and prove and show pictures and resources and pull up real books that cost real money to shut somebody up. But white people can say it when they feel like it, when they get ready to say it and no one questions it. That that's the framework here. Whether that's true or not, doesn't matter. White people know that niggas know that. And if it's not true, y'all have not done anything to show us differently to make it untrue. True. Those are the problems. AI can't solve that. That's You see what I'm saying? Like, no matter how groovy AI is, that condition where white people are tone deaf to niggas narrating their whole life, obviously. And now the fact that white women and white men, red pill, are at each other socially, politically. And, and mind you, I know marriage is a scam. I know marriage is a scam. Don't miss me with the bullshit, white man. I know that getting that Roman certificate signed and sent in signs your wife's eggs away. I get it. I don't think you know that. But we both agree it's a scam for some reason. I ain't talking about that. I'm not talking about the institutionalized version of marriage. I'm talking about your women has streamlined the motive that they no longer want to raise men. You see it in the damn podcast. Don't act like I'm making this shit up. Don't put this shit on my credit card. Don't strike me for being fucking Captain Obvious out this bitch. I watch these dumb bitches talk on these goddamn podcasts. 
I watch these niggas bring their interview cell phones out and ask people dumbass questions. And every once in a while, you catch a feminist. They have a recognizable spirit. It's the same fucking spirit, by the way. Get, be more original, sis. And whatever that spirit wants, however they give it up, whether it's the fluidity of sexuality and accountability of those decisions, or if it's just an, how we don't need men because we have an economy that's being upheld by lying ass men. And the moment you step into a real economy, to my sisters out there, keep that same energy. Because you got to get your ass whipped too. Because you thought it was appropriate to go follow the white girl. That ain't on me. Niggas ain't shit in dot com forward slash we know. I was running away from niggas since I was in second grade. I know they're not shit. They ain't all of them though. But how many do you need if you just getting your ass kicked once? I get it, sis. 20 fights later. <laughs> you started following the white girl after one fight. I'm still not going to punch you in the face. And I'm and I'm hundreds of bitches disrespecting me later. Notice I changed. The women didn't. Ashe, Ashe. Shout out to Dominique. Um, but... Yeah, the transgender, the transhumanism thing was the code word for it. Hashtag Bilderbergs. And the Atis worship and the Statue of Liberty is science of it. Clearly, symbol symbology, symbolism of it. But to actually watch it uh, propagate and manifest in the people, average people, is very, very alarming. Because you see how the agenda that doesn't exist works. You deny that it's an agenda but you still spoon feed it over and over and over again. And then you use the cool people, Hollywood, bad bitches, things like that to kind of normalize it. Even if they're vehemently behind the scenes against it. Hashtag Lizzo. Lizzo was a big hefty wide back bitch. That was kind of like the identity of the, the trans movement vicariously and stupid people didn't catch it. And I understand that, but I don't assume you a listener stupid, but she was trans, right? She, she she was trying to trans out of the fact that she was fat and unattractive. We're not talking about having a cute face. Y'all women gotta stop doing that shit. Y'all don't give a fuck about a nigga's cute face. So why the fuck we need don't do that. But she's trying to trans beautify her celebrity. And it didn't work. The white girls try to push that shit. The media try to push that shit. But niggas was like, nobody in a, a barbershop trying to fuck on Lizzo. Get the fuck out my face. Like, and I got to say it like that because I'm a real nigga from a real time when God was still making real niggas. So, so don't get me fucked up, right? I'm not, I'm not trying to get in trouble with the thought police. I'm just speaking as a real nigga because there's few. Nah, that hefty bitch wasn't all that. In, in no universe. We can name a hundred batter big bitches because we're not saying that big bitches can't be beautiful. That's, no one's, no, nary a nigga has ever said that. We're just saying Lizzo won't that. Let's be honest. No. Just to find out through her own people, through her own sisterhood, that Lizzo don't like big bitches. Y'all was too worried about me trying to convince and mind fuck me that she's something she not when she herself don't like bad big black bitches. Meaning she don't even like herself. And we knew that when she was showing her ass everywhere because it's the same symptoms, love. In psychology, it's a pattern, it's a repetition, you get a diagnosis. In Hollywood, you call out the obvious diagnosis and you're a bigot. That's how the white boys be sounding. We show you these damn mad per capita about you niggers and you're fucking saying I'm racist. I'm not racist. The numbers aren't racist. It was like, but you won't say that to your wife, little bitch ass nigga you. Because if white men kept white girls in check, niggas wouldn't have to deal with the shit we're dealing with with our women now. Let me know if I'm lying. If the white man kept the white woman in check, then the white woman's tantrum would have not infiltrated our community when it did. If they didn't force the integration, there'd be no reason for them to listen to her anyway. If they didn't sell the mainstream lifestyle, she wouldn't be having nary a Karen to keep up with. 
let me know when I'm wrong. So my whole tragedy on this plane is a side effect of me waiting for white people to grow up. Let me know if I'm lying. What's my problem? How long do you got? It's no individual's fault, though. So I don't even have nobody to beat up. It's just what happened. It's just, it got away. Like, that energy did that. And maybe our sisters manifested that, right? Maybe our sisters manifested that. The same way we try to live vicariously through the white boy in, in mirrors or patterns of success, it's quite possible that some of our sisters were vicariously living through this white girl and getting her to turn on her man. And that's when she start getting saucy and spicy because what if I, what if witchcraft enters the chat? I'm just saying, what if? What if witchcraft enters the chat? And now you're dealing with the spirit of Oshun and Oya and those type of things attaching themselves to white people. Baba Luaye, panic, right? Saw Ricky Ricardo reciting that shit to a bunch of white people. I Love Lucy wasn't a black episode, you know. That was in the 80s, Nick and Knight, when we caught on. But we were not their target audience. Unless we were, shit, the way this life go. They're always on niggas' dick, but they said there's only like 10 niggas in Utah. But what if black mag what if black magic enters the chat? And then you see, well, if I can't punch this white boy's face off without certainly being murdered, then maybe I need to attack something else. I want y'all to walk with me. Listen, this is a scary walk. This is me walking in New Brunswick through the back to get to the apartment complex and worry about someone kidnapping me and stealing my booty hole from me at seven years old now. It's that scary. But walk with me if it's black magic. Well, I can't punch this nigga in the face because I'll certainly die, right? They, they, for they will certainly kill me, right? That, that's what Cain said, right? We're descendants of Cain, right? Canaanites, Moabites, don't miss it now. So in order for Cain to have to survive, my forefather... Who was a murderer, by the way, right? No one denies that niggas don't kill shit. We're just saying, you know, it's different. <laughs> but if Cain needed a mark to, to, to cloak himself so that they would not make the connection to him of what he did or is, more so probably is than the murder, because they're murderers, right? Murderers aren't afraid of murderers. They, they want to get at him because he was in the garden. He, he, he didn't grow up in the hood. Okay. What if there was a way though to 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 attack somebody and them not know that you're attacking them? How would that look like historically? Like, because there's no clean, clean, cut and dry story of how the replacement of Europe happened, nor the replacement of niggas in America happened. There's no exp explanation for it. There's none. None of those wars give like. France fighting Canada does not give white man Texas. Like, none of those are connected. So there's no clean story or war or loss between the caliphate, the Moors, and all that shit. There's, it doesn't exist, right? But what you can see, in the paintings at least, is that it goes from these chocolate-ass niggas in the 1400s, and it starts turning into these light-skinned niggas in the 1500s, 1600s. So I know right off rip, somebody started changing who they was fucking on. They think I nothing to do with paperwork and treaty. Someone's fucking different because their children are coming out different, right? Queen B. Queen B gives off a pheromone, aka Wi-Fi signal through her biofield, that all the other worker bees flock to. Same thing with the ant. And I don't know if I could prove it yet. But I'm almost certain the reason why we're amazed by that when we observe it and talk about it is because the same is true for us. We just don't know 
who's the queen bee per se, per generation or however it really works. I think it's, I think there's a there there though. But <laughs> they started dry snitching on this for a while now. So the first one, when you, when you look at feminism and what it's done with the white girls. Well, one of the biggest things that feminine feminism to me as a dude listening, the first thing that jumps out at me as a dude is that they're trying to be unaccountable for who they fuck on. They don't want no one to judge how many bodies they have because some handsome Chad somewhere gets all the bitches. But the guy that she's going to marry didn't get all those bitches, but he has to deal with her past. Like, that's the triangle of fuckery niggas have to deal with in this narrative, right? Like, oh, well, that guy over there fucked all the bitches. Why shouldn't I fuck all the niggas? You're talking to me. Like, my the love of my life left me for Chad. The fuck do I got to deal with that shit for? No one can answer that, by the way. But be it as it may. The precursor there is that there's been no sexual accountability amongst white people. Particularly college educated white women whose rites of passage is is to fuck on niggas. You let me know when I start lying. Because all the sisters are saying it. All these all these dudes around here got a white girl. The white boys are saying it, but they're saying it on 4chan with memes per capita. They try to figure out if the white girl looks abused in an Instagram post, it's her boyfriend black. Or if the white girl's a single mother, her boyfriend's black. So they're troping it. They're coping with it that way. So it's a it's in their mind, right? Because by default, black, black, all the negative shit. It doesn't matter if it's negative or positive. All that matters is that they have accepted that white girl is sucking black dick. Don't matter what the consequences or the, the all that's just being cute and clamorous. It's coping. All right, cool. If your rights of passage is to fuck on niggas at parties, college, whatever, go through the hood, buy some coke, whatever. I've seen white girls cheat on their man with niggas all the time. Like, y'all ain't going to sit here and start lying to me. And then second place, how white girls run through Mexicans. But y'all not ready for that conversation. If the white girl has a persuasion through cocaine, she's going to be with a Mexican. I'm not here to judge. If a white girl has a persuasion through weed, she probably won't be with niggas. But I'm not here to judge. Don't miss me with the fuck shit. I'm talking about in real life. Cool, 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 cool. What is that uh, insignificant DNA discovery that they made? Although our grandmother told your fast ass to stay in the house and stop sleeping with all these niggas. But what was this scientific discovery they announced during the pandemic and didn't do no uh, The View or Oprah talk about? That women hold the sperm of a lover up to seven years. Women can also impregnate two eggs at once. So if you're holding sperm, DNA, and you're being injected with DNA, and then you're still fucking on somebody else. And it's been years now. You've been graduated college and the wall's at 28. You graduated at 21. So within seven years now, don't you fucking miss it. The prerogative of a white woman to go through her sexual rites of passage as a feminist is to fuck on Jose and Daquan by 21. By 28, she got to be married or she damaged good. She got seven years, kings. After, after that seventh year, shit gets weird, don't it? That's what you're seeing on the podcast, right? That everyone has laid out and everyone knows the logic for, but everyone's going to be in denial with these crazy bitches in the meantime. And that's cool. And that's cool. Let us know no judgment here. It's just frustrating for it to be so fucking predictable. So seven years into this shit, she finds simp daddy, whoever, with, with a promising future and career to have kids with because he's going to take care of those kids. <laughs> It's, it's, it's barely been seven years. Are you sure those kids are his? Exactly. So you don't just have like so when so when women become sexually liberated by default, just just by working, just by walking through the workflow. And I know, guys, everybody doesn't live like that. I don't either, nigga. But in real life, when you're looking at everybody else and how that does indeed affect you, there's a lot of kids born of a split mind as a side effect of their different daddies. 
And and if their daddies have smoke with each other, and that's stored and trauma is stored in the DNA, and both of those DNAs are present in the copulation of this child, what do you think is going to happen to the brain of that child? All right, MG, what are you talking about? I don't know. If 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 it's on site in the physical and it's on site in the spiritual, why wouldn't it be on site in the blood? Now, what are be symptoms of someone fighting themselves, MG? If, if this has been a new push, then there should be a new results because I'm just an observer of it happening over and over again, right? So now that it's happened to us in our generation, what are the results? Does it seem like some of these new kids are a little retarded more than usual? Does it seem like a lot of these new kids are having identity issues? Does it seem like what, no matter how white and suburban this kid is, he want to listen to Young Dolph and NBA Young Boy? Does it not seem like, at the very least, there's a little Daquan and all these niggas? Because we're not talking about them emulating the traits of the good, smart black people. White girls don't fuck with the good, smart black guys unless he got a lot of money to invest in her. Uh, when white girls are getting they nut off in college, they fucking Daquan and Pookie in them. I was there watching them. They find the most opposite type of nigga ever. They find the nigga I'm looking at like, y'all don't understand, that's not the nigga you're supposed to have kids by? Like him. And they don't have a kid with him. But he has no self-control, so his sperm is still being stored somewhere for seven years. Okay. And then you live in a society, we live in a world where there's a little Daquan in everybody and wonder how we got here. Communism. That's why you got to wait for white people to grow up because communism was written by more. Whether you think he was self-hating or not is immaterial. If more is writing it, he's using nigga logic. White girl. Why are you trying to be an arm of Chinese whoever needs Jewish communism? If communism is to overthrow the patriarchy so that you could return to some type of control and show the black girls you finally did it, because that's what this really is. Don't miss it now. Don't miss it now. No, mm -mm. no. White girls are trying to show the black sisters who used to be. We was queens and shit. Don't forget now. The white girls trying to updo the sisters now with the BBLs, with the dancing, with the booty and with how they control their men. It's a silent it's a silent competition that niggas ain't even part of. That's the ill shit about it. So then it tells you who really has all the power. But we're going to keep pretending for communist sake that men have it. Men don't have the power. Men have the aggression to punch you in the face. That just means you can't push a man, but that doesn't mean you don't control them. <laughs> goofy as hell. We can't be the same. But in case we are. So you you got the white girls trying to outperform the sisters and queens and shit. And how are they going to get the white man and whoever man? And, and shit, the shit's getting bloody. They're not even just taking the white man no more. They're taking the black man. They're taking the black kings from the black queens, right? That's the narrative, right? The, so that's how our sisters inter interpolate this occurring recently. Before it was the white dude, white girl who was kind of like a hippie and the nerdy black dude who the black girls didn't feel. He didn't have no swag. I remember I was outside. Thank God I was outside to watch it. I watched the shit, bro. I watched them make fun of it on um, Don't Be a Menace in the Hood while drinking your juice in the hood. I saw my milk of magnesia and what type cast and stereo cast on the type of niggas that they would put on these white girls. It wasn't Pookie and Daquan yet. Now it is. That narcissism just carried on right through. Narcissism is the gene that passed on. I know that. You can see it. It's clear, it's clear as fucking day. Self-centered, entitled. You got to see the world the same way they do. That's narcissism. And that's why their social justice is capped. Because it's narcissist. You can't be narcissistic and have injustice in your speech. You don't know what justice is. You're full of shit. You're, you're, you're uh, what do they call that? Uh, virtue signal. Everybody call when I'm cooking, bro. Nobody call when I'm hungry. Um, damn it. The white girls competing with the black girls for Daquan. 
It's the crazy. It's the crazy. Is what a time to be a Daquan. Is all I gotta say about that. Uh, you know the Pookie and Ray Rays, man. Even their little late in magic and being, you know, chastised or undervalued by society for nothing more than dick and balls. Like they're having their day now. Like this is peak Daquan Pookie era. Like oh, they're not smart enough for this, or they don't know how to do that. But they fucking everybody wife. Who's really winning? If the only law is to go forth and, and be fruitful, nigga. Yeah, white people made that shit complicated. Niggas had to figure it out. But anyway, so that's the that's real feminism. We're not talking about the ideals and tenets on paper. We're talking about how it manifests in real life and how it affects your kids. We 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 don't get here if there's no little secret competition that white women are having against black women. Point blank period. And if white boys weren't goofy enough to nip that shit in the bud, point blank, period. But it must be reminiscent of something that we also went through just before that amongst our ancestors. You know how I know that? And I think that's what I was getting at uh, earlier, the proofs of this. If we just turn the clock back to pre-civil rights we get into this weird era in black populace where grandma has a light-skinned child for no fucking reason. You, you get the trope of grandma sleeping with the milkman. Watch out for the milkman. Well, like th- all things niggas do, there's two meanings to the word. What's a milkman? If in Don't Be a Menace, it's milk of magnesia for the, for the honey and the whole tech nigga. The milk is symbolic, symbolizing white skin. And even in the depictions of the 1950s and stuff, the milkman's a white guy who looks like a post office dude with a glass of bottles of milk, right? So watch out for the milkman is watch out for that light-skinned nigga. Watch out for that fair-skinned nigga. Watch out for that white man who's fucking on your bitch when you're not home. So far, so good. Don't miss this now because this loop keeps happening. This loop is a short loop. This ain't like a 200 eclipses it happens. This happens like every other generation. So... My great-grandfather and grandfather had to watch out for the milkman. Why? Because there's a propensity that grandma is going to step out and fuck on one of these Rico Suave niggas who self-identified as Portuguese. Does this sound familiar to anybody? Is it? Is it just me? Y- y'all ain't got that light-skinned ass, blue, gray, green-eyed ass auntie that has to go through the colorism and self-hate of her family? For no fucking reason that ever makes sense. Because black people can give birth to all the colors. But that didn't seem to be a gnosis of 1940 to 1960. That those children were the, get it, black sheep of their family. Because they were literally the black people of their family. Ha 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 ha. So, 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 so. As much as they give in grandpa grief for putting his hands on grandma out of fear that she's slopping down the milkman while he worked to death and paid all her bills and she didn't have to work. So all she could do is the housewoman stuff that a lot of brothers miss and are thirsty for. But don't miss the fact that some of those sisters who all they had to do was whatever for that man was still sucking and fucking on other dicks. Don't forget that. Have your cake and eat it too. So instead of having that version of reality, they want it more. But mind you, they're holding the seed up to seven years of whoever they was fucking on. And then you get this phenomenon of black men acting white. You get this phenomenon of all of a sudden black people want to enter white spaces, even against their own health. Let me sit myself in front of this place where everyone hates me and act like I don't know what's going on and hopefully they give me justice. Nary a nigga has ever said that in a goddamn life. You know who think like that though? White people. White people ain't afraid of shit. That's what makes them so fucking awesome, low key. We're way more afraid than they are of everything, including the eclipse. It's just, it's just gene swapping, bro. A little bit of Ted and Rico Suave showed up in us and a little bit of Daquan is showing up in them. And it's all because women are sucking and fucking on whoever the fuck they want. 
What would you? What would we need to? We're not normalizing. You know, my feminist communist wave. Y'all not normalizing that. Y'all been doing that. Y'all been selling feet pictures and on OnlyFans. What do you think the goddamn the the bathhouse was? That was ran by women. They, they showed you that in the Shogun series. What the fuck do you think Madam C.J. Walker is? She been selling pussy before niggas could. Like, like the internet ain't fuck up the pimp game. Women always control the pimp game. And I'm talking about even back to when I went to Atlanta and I'm face to face with my uncle and his favorite. My uncle was her main bitch. She had hoes, not him. So miss me with the fuck shit with that revisionist history. In real life, women have always been in control. Because the queen bee, because the queen ant, like the pheromones and the orders have to be coming from a woman. That's why it doesn't make sense. And, you know, we had a, a we're at a top or le- we're at a top or level now because now we're talking about the difference between logic and feeling. None of these agendas make sense logically, so none of these agendas are masculine. Let me know if these agendas make sense to you. You see some nigga logic in any of these events? Who's who's doing all the um interest rate shit and the hiking and the federal debt? That was a, what's her name? That's a bitch, right? We go into the UN. There's some bitches there now. They weren't. They may not be there in your memory, but in real life, there's a bunch of bitches over there. You go into your military. There's a lot of bitches making moves in the military. This is no disrespect, by the way, to women. That, that don't. But we got called a spade a spade. We keep acting like the decisions that is fucking society is a result of a patriarchy when all the decision making for my whole life has been from a matriarchy. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about not only are you in the loop racially and you're not just in the loop religiously, but we're also in the loop in terms of gender, which is why the subject for this decade has been identity of gender over the identity of, you know, the law and status and citizenship. It's backseat to this gender thing. Cause, Cause, everyone's wondering who the they is. So just like everybody else have to have they come to Jesus moment and get their ass whooped. Now the sisters who have been hiding behind this power, they're necessarily going to have to have their asses whooped too. Cause it starts with them. Life starts with our sisters. Period. I don't know what it was like in Atlantis, but here today, nigga. The buck begins and ends with the women. By hook or by crook. Nary a nigga gonna do a goddamn thing if ain't no pussy involved. Period. A nigga ain't about to be the smartest, hardest working ass nigga, best for society ass nigga. We ain't no George Washington Carver eunuchs raised by white people. We talking about in our natural state. You ain't getting a nigga to get from the fish creek to do shit if ain't no pussy gonna be there. A nigga ain't spending six months in Dubai building the oil refinery if he can't check out on the weekend and fuck a bitch at the club, even if he got to pay for her. Niggas ain't doing it. Stop playing with me. Stop acting like we're something we're not. So women ultimately have the power. Women are pushing to invert this power. So then what happens, class? This is so fucking predictable. You overcompensate and put too much stock into the masculine version of reality. Coming from that reality myself, I don't think you guys are really prepared to get punched in the face as much as you're about to if things go your way. In your way, it's don't punch me in my face. I'm entitled to do what I do. In the masculine way is you're definitely entitled to do what you want to do, but I'm also entitled to do what I want to do too. And today I want to punch you in the face. That's the difference. Masculinity goes, everyone could do what they want to do, including getting punched in your fucking face, nigga. And I hope you got hands. That's the masculine approach. The feminine approach is be like, you can all be what you have to be. Accountability be damned. There needs to be a balance. We absolutely positively have to have and need each other. And it, it, this ain't this ain't going up no other way, unless we're just all fizzling out <clears throat> in favor to the AI. So where the AI gets to curate certain amounts of types of humans for certain tasks or input, and then 
it's some weird ass predator time travel bullshit. I don't believe in that. But it'll look like that. <clears throat> and I just I don't I don't I think we're cooler than that. I think I think I think we have enough information. I think we have AI at the ready to help us analyze these things. I think we've had enough integration in crosstalk over the internet at least. Cause even like the shit that niggas is finding out about white people or the shit that white people get insights with with niggas over the internet and these type of things, even this is like even this is like a metaverse for real, bro. Cause it's a controlled it's, a, it's still my controlled narrative. Like, there's so much stuff that I wouldn't say to you on the computer or not. Some shit you just got to see for yourself. So, you know, because I'm not even paying attention to, like, the, the brother and sister were saying earlier in the chat. Like, even in the moment, you don't see everything. So even in these moments, I didn't document and store and repeat everything that makes it unique to us. So, yeah, bro, like, this shit, no devious evil plots work because no deviously evil person is intelligent. Not today. They seem to have missed the plot. Everybody wants to dress up as girls. The the strongest men in power that you have want to be bitches. Listen, I am not judging whatever that vice or nudge or, uh, Pathology is. I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I know I don't have it. Law of polarity. Some people do. I don't. As a person that doesn't have it, I don't understand it. That's okay, right? Like, it's okay that I don't fucking understand it. And you shouldn't want me to. Why? Because if everyone's fucking lost a goddamn mind, being fucking weird, touching kids, no, no parts, nothing is going to change for the better. Because those are package deals. Let's act like it's not. You can't open the door for one part of that. The same thing that causes a person to question themselves and evaluate whether they're this, that, or another is the same thing to have people question everyone else to see if that age is appropriate or not. Stop fucking playing. Like we're grown. Why am I waiting for white people to grow up to figure that shit out? What agenda? Well, you know the real agenda is if they normalize all this shit, then he might as well just normalize the age differences. It makes logical sense when you think about it. I mean, if I can't choose that I'm a fucking walrus, then I definitely can't choose who I love. And love is universal and beautiful since we're doing religion now. And, you know, you know, you know, back in the day, you know, when you look on Ancestry.com, your grandmother was married away at 12 to 14. Yeah, I remember one of my grandmothers or one of those girls. So that means this happened already. The same time the eunuch Statue of Liberty was erected. So that means it's happened already. You don't just get to loop the beautiful part, nigga. It's one thing to be at 9-11, taking pictures downtown, doing your thing, waiting for the blueprint to drop. And they look back on that picture 20 years later, in the background, there was a World Trade Center. But in real life, nigga, those buildings ain't there no more. So that picture hit different when you when you add up all the costs. The price of that picture is different because those buildings ain't there no more. I got one of those pictures. World Trade Center. You know there's niggas who are alive right now up north who haven't ever seen the World Trade Centers. In the same reality I'm in. When you couldn't miss them, even if you were in New Jersey. That's how all this shit is. Remember, if it's an eight, I don't know if I got to that part yet because I was pontificating about my paradox. My paradox is, oh, by the way, is that how this pivot, pivotal change in technology changes everything. The paradox is the old is the new. The old world is the new world, meaning the constant has been technology and AI. AI is not new. Whatever. We can get into that another day. Maybe I can talk to Neil deGrasse Tyson and change his goofy ass mind. All right. But yeah, if, if we're worrying about eights, like what is tomorrow's a four eight, <clears throat> you can read that as four eight twelve. You can do this shit. You can reduce it, right? Or you can just look at it as four eights. 
you know. What is that? What is that number? What is that? I got down 32 reductive. You know, five. Well, four eight. It's four eights. So everyone knows what eight is, right? Like for real. Like if you're not being cute and clamorous in this bitch. It's the infinity loop. The infinity loop, you know, when you try to transpose it to linear time, you think like you're going to do this forever, like 10,000, a million, trillion, however long time is, that's what infinity represents. I submit an alteration to that gnosis that infinity can indeed represent timelessness or the abundance of time, but maybe in its calligraphy and its symbolism and its significance and number numerology and all that isn't the fact that infinity is forever, but more so the fact that infinity or eights represent that no matter what time it is, nothing changes. The infinity is that it's the same shit forever, not that forever is forever. It's It's highlighting the fact that not that you start here at zero and you get to here at a hundred and you die and come back and you just repeat zero through a hundred. That's the old, what Newtonian view of infinity. Mm -mm. I think infinity as a symbol is showing you that even if you start here, you end up here eventually. And when you get there, you're just going to return back home. If your stupid ass live long enough, the infinity is really inevitability. It's not speaking on how old you are, which is why I think a God and infinity doesn't make a lot of sense to logical minded people because how chicken or the egg, right? The universe is constantly expanding. Well, bitch, what is the bowl holding it? There is no bowl. Then what's on the other side of the universe expanding? We don't know. Then you don't know anything. Why the fuck I'm going to school with your stupid ass? That's the most important question. You dumb bitch is expanding and nothing as it creates it, as it contracts and slows down. Shut your stupid ass up. You're just trying to rewrite it based on where you are in your sterile, your your, your spiral staircase. Come on now. Y'all have seen affinity before in different shapes, brother. Come on now. We walking up them steps to the Statue of Liberty that we can never do. But my dad remembers taking me and doing it. Whatever. Mandela effect. But what's happening is you're telling me the good game over here. But now that we're standing here on this side and I got questions for you, you don't want to answer that because you haven't been paying attention to the left side. You've been paying attention to the right side of your staircase. And it can, tends to be true every time you're on this side of it. But now that we're over here looking this way, you don't know what none of this shit is. So you're just going to deny it despite your fucking nose and tell me it still says one when it says two. That's infinity. Infinity is a, is a variable of uh, inevitability, not of possibility. We've been treating uh, these loops like they're possibilities, right? That's the whole uh, string theory. This, my, mind you, this is white people talking now. Listen. I got questions for my mom when I see her. So we've been entered into this demonstration falsely by treating infin infinity as possibility. And that's not what none of life has showed me so far. So far, I could be wrong because the staircase, you know what I'm saying? I might be on a bigger ring and I haven't seen it do something different yet. I may never see it do something do different, which is the tragedy here. But as it stands, for me, from what I've noticed, infinity Four eights, eights, all that shit isn't the infinite possibilities of things. It's the inevitable ability of things. It don't sound too different, but it's very different. Way, way different. You know what I'm talking about? Like having unlimited possibilities and not limiting yourself for what tomorrow can bring is different than I'm in the spring and pretty soon tomorrow will be summer. You see what I'm saying? If you're on a four season cycle, nary a nigga wake up going, it's spring. I better prepare. Tomorrow is winter. You know why? Color people time? Because niggas know you still have to go through the summer and fall first. So, yeah, it's spring and winter is inevitable loop. But I got to get through summer and fall before we get there. So I'm not even I'm not even going to vex myself in my practice and my 
stewardship of my plantation or my any of those things. I don't need niggas, aka slaves, working 24-7 because I can't even do any work 24-7. You lying pieces of shit. We're talking about pre-industrial revolution. We're talking about pre-long-term storage. So, it's a different mind state. The winter is coming, but it's way the fuck over there. For Jon Snow, that was pertinent. You know why? Because these motherfuckers is telling us in the goddamn, uh, I want to call this shit Lord of the Rings so bad, but you know what I'm talking about, the dragon bullshit, Game of Thrones. They talking about the winter is coming. Bitch, there's already snow on the ground. Like, y'all got to let me know this shit is coming with a little bit more buffer, bro, because Jon and the Night Watch are in the snow, dog. Like, they got werewolves and shit locked up in the snow, my nigga. Like, talking about the winter is coming. That's what these niggas is like right now with this eclipse. It's like, oh shit, last minute, winter is coming. Last minute, inevitability is coming. Last minute, certain changes, timeline adjustments are coming. Last minute now. We didn't worry about this in the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s. The whole time the CIA has been propagating and paying attention to it. But this week on CNN to C-SPAN to YouTube, winter is coming. The eclipse is coming. That's how, you, you see what I'm saying? Like you start to understand how a child mind work. You start to see why they lying to you the way they lying to. And you can either cooperate with them and their imaginary friends or you can whip their stupid ass. I come from a tribe where we just whip your stupid ass. And that may not be the healthiest solution, but it gets us past the bullshit. I don't think you have nothing really to worry about tomorrow. Because tomorrow's not the, what they say? Tomorrow's not promised. A, tomorrow's not promised to any of us. But B, because these niggas can't even worry about tomorrow. They haven't even really, they haven't proven sufficient enough and talk about yesterday. Like you ain't even want to predict my, you can't predict my future because you don't even got my past correct. That's what 3M has been doing, right? It's, it's been adjusting the clock while everybody was sleeping. Ah, you got the past messed up. So I know you're not clocking, coding, AI incorrectly for the future. So I know it ain't going to be all. I know this generation of nerds working on AI ain't going to be the gods of AI. Because there's so much they don't have because they don't see. So nary a nigga who ain't got the past correct could sit here and start talking about what the future holds. Nary a nigga who has not identified their own bloodline and tribe correct gonna sit here and talk about what's going to be the fate of God's chosen ones. I don't want to hear shit from you. Don't miss me with all the bullshit because because by default it's fear mongering because you're stupid. Nary a nigga that can tell me what's going on in their life right now and, and, and make a case for why shit has fa fa fallen apart. Whether it's sperm staying in your stupid ass brain for seven more years or communism is a predictable infinity loop that has a predictable and infinity post-communism drag to it. No, no, nary a nigga who has not acknowledged the inevitability of this loop could sit here and talk about they have stomached, processed emotionally and logically a solution to everyone's shit. The most thing that nary a nigga who has a name for what he's doing or she is doing can do is tell me how they're going to manipulate everybody else to give them their way. Because I ain't forget about narcissism. All I have seen in these social demonstrations is narcissists give you enough nut rubbing together to get you to go on their coattails to follow their agenda because you haven't done enough work to create your own. That's where all of the errors start. They call it idol worship. All the errors start when you start trying to live and be somebody else. Correct me if I'm wrong. All the errors, I'm talking about the internal errors, I'm talking about the emotional errors, and maybe some of the errors that we're seeing in the children today is them constantly being bombarded with not just somebody else's way of life, but everybody else's way of life. Maybe it's too much for their minds to handle, like we've been saying. Because it's too much for your stupid ass mind, and you're an adult. That's what this shit reminds me of.
It's it's a reminder of the inevitability that at some point you got to walk home and at some point you're going to get your ass whooped. But you don't know when yet. So you try to hedge your bets and your paths accordingly. Nobody running anything today has done that. So all of them are going to get their ass whooped. Four eights. It's four of them. Yeah, it's four ass whoopings overdue. So when when they get into that bag, like, oh, the eclipse is going to bring whatever. When it comes to, like, the absolution or the destruction of something. Mind you, it's a, it's a build and destroy universe. Like, the destruction of one fucked up system is the birth of another fucked up system. Don't forget that. The fuckery is inevitable. Loop. If if the white man has given us anything kind, it has been the fact that at least that the history that stood out to him to catalog and teach all the kids has been the fact that every civilization is on some fuck shit. It gets to a point where people start getting desperate and greedy at the same time. The greedy people, Shogun in the in the TV show, the greed for the power almost happens at the same time the desperation for survival happens in the others. And that is the conflict. The conflict is in in, in swapping the throne. Always. Always. The eights are crowns. Oh, man, this nigga here. I know, I know. Slow down. We'll talk about Saturn in a second, too, right? <laughs> you know, because you, you can't you can't you can't put this on Yahweh Saturn's credit card and not pay attention to Saturn through all of this, because all of it's about Saturn. That's the son of God. Notice Saturn is a sun and not a planet. That's all you need to know about NASA. So Saturn, the sun, as we understand it through the religious system that we all observe through Judaism is Saturnism. Y'all know that, right? So like when they're telling you when I said earlier, the ritualists, who were they? When I said earlier, they're a death cult. Well, who are they? What do all of these things have in common? Uh, don't, don't, Don't you raise your hand. It's already on the goddamn board. This is all Saturn worship, baby. All of it is about Saturn. The rituals are to Saturn. The death cult, time, loop, cube, time travel, sci-fi, all of it is Saturn. Who's Saturn, though? You already know our man's pots and pans. Act like you fucking know. The the ancestors attribute it to their God. And then the white people did the same. What what, 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 what our boy, uh, what if heaven was hell and vice versa? Yeah. What if you go through this whole situation and you realize the whole time you've been worshiping Satan? Who's the ruler of Earth? Who's the ruler of Earth? According to all, I'm talking about my people in the entertainment media. Who they tell you is the ruler of the air? You know, our, us music people, we're always, we're, we're doubly tapped with this fucking gnosis because uh, we want to be rich and famous making music or something. So we want to take a bargain with the devil. And he controls the airwaves, and that's the radio, and the XM, and the Wi-Fi, you know, the ruler of air is, come on now. Uh, who, who, who was tempting Yeshua, saying, I'll offer you all these kingdoms if you just bow to me, you know, bow bow down to the king, kiss the ring. Ain't they a, Isn't there a movie about bowing and chasing a motherfucking ring? 
Well, who did that ring belong to, by the way? With the little, with the little short, little hobbit ass niggas. So, Lord of the Rings. In my household, my grandmother brought me that book. My my dad's girlfriend, whatever the fuck, she was like, "Oh, you know, she's pagan. That's that witchcraft." Oh, why? Because because it's a knee jerk reaction. Lord of the Rings seems like a witchy ass book. And I was like, bitch, learn how to read. But to my ignorance, she's right. Lord of the Rings is just as a witchy ass book as the damn Bible she loves to read. Because they're telling the same story. The Lord of the Rings is Saturn. Yahweh is Saturn. You haven't learned a religion that's not Saturn worship. That's the spooky part about life and loops and inevitability of you having to come to Jesus moment when eights deal with time and there's a time for everything. There's a time for love. There's a time for, you know, contention. There's a time for peace. There's a time for war. Saturn told you that. So if you go back in the Bible, right, and you get some of those cool, fancy maxims of a prophet interfacing with God, and instead of saying the Lord said this, you know, the Lord of the rings, instead of you in your head going the Lord or the Lord thy God and all that dumb Shakespeare shit you never spoke, you American nigga, you read it as Saturn said. Once you do Saturn said, then go to your astrology and cosmology about Saturn and tell me if they're the same. Because you're going to find out, yes, they're exactly the fucking same. I'm talking about in symptoms and in, in, in traits. Because nary a nigga is going to sit here and tell me I'm wrong and then introduce me to Saturn. You lying bitch ass nigga, you. You ain't going to, you ain't introducing me to God or Saturn. So don't act like, you, you know what I'm saying? I hate that energy too. We too old for that. Anyway, so ritual death time. Yah, ruler of air, bow to the rings, kiss the ring. Satan. Saturn and Satan is the same word. So if Satan's a devil... Because remember, Satan is not Lucifer. Lucifer is Venus. High Isis, high Ra, high L. Is that not your big three? We, we, is, is, is it a sun, moon rising or whatever the fuck? Is it not? Astrology. Is that not your natal birth chart? Is that not the Holy Trinity? Your birth chart from your mama, right? Mother and child, right? Venus and the stars, right? Venus and her son. Crescent moon and five-pointed star, right? So far, so good. I ain't lose nobody, right? So it seemed like everything that these niggas is jocking off of my ancestors is the same thing these goofy bitches on Twitter talking about. Yo, $20 for your birth chart. Hit me up in the DMs. You let me know when I start lying. Keep me honest, please. Is it not the spirituality that you're scared of? Oh, I'm what, what this how does this how this how it crept up in my lifetime? And I'm only speaking for my lifetime. Before they used to say, well, spiritual people, you know, that's stupid. There's no such thing as spiritual. They're talking about I'm spiritual, I'm not religious. And this is Christian people saying that. Christian people had a problem with people saying they're spiritual, not religious. Because it's a demarcation, it's a line of separation. You know what I'm saying? And most people with good intents want to believe we're all the same but no more than a narcissist who thinks they're doing good for you. So everyone was like, nah, I'm spiritual. I'm not religious. Why? What does religious mean? I'm not ritualistic. I'm not guaranteed to do the same thing every Sunday or Saturday because I do it per how I feel, how the stars and the moon move. I'm spiritual. I'm observant. I'm seeking, but I'm not, I'm not locked into the matrix of what man today is saying because man today didn't make this stuff up. They're a bunch of followers. I'm not following followers. So far, so good. And then it transforms. And then through that spiritual opening, people allowing themselves to be spiritual, if you will, you get your crystal chick stuff. You get your shea butter stuff. You get your warlock stuff. You know, you got Travis Magus, like five foot eight with the Akuma beads trying to put love spells on the bitches. And then through that highway that's created, you get to entertain more ideas and ideas is not just like the devil or some evil shit it's just for me i haven't ran into evil yet the only evil i ran into has been people but i've ran into the ability to think longer more often about things that most people shut down 
that's what being spiritual has done for me is allow me to think about more shit that would have been taboo or kind of like triggering a cognitive dissonance or worry or concern about, oh, if I think too much, God is going to be mad with the brain he designed. Oh, my. You know, that's all spiritual did. Just to come to find out that at peak spiritualism, I'm talking about peak crystals. You got the Levite tribe. Peak tarot, you got casting of lots. Peak all the things you ain't supposed to do word to Yah is exactly all the things that these people in that book are doing. Who are the children of God? It's the children of God who keep doing the same shit that's being written about. That's how you figure out who it is, by the way. Not so much to say that you have to believe that or in that, but you know that book is written by the people who blindly, no matter where they are, always return to what? Egypt. They always return to their practices that they learned from the Egyptians and Chaldeans. Fresh out of captivity, Moses. They return to their old customs. That's Israel. Israel always turns back to the devil. It always goes back to the devil. The devil is just Saturn, though. Because it doesn't mean devil like evil. It means adversary. You know what adversary is? Accountability. I have 10 laws for you. That's Saturn. I'm going to hold you accountable at 10 different points. That's Saturn. And if through my transit, you can uphold these, you will be rewarded greatly because none of those motherfucking planets in your damn chart give you the same type of blessings that Saturn will give you. But it's polarity. It's a double-edged sword. None of them other planets are really going to punish you like Saturn punish you either. But he like Drew Hill. He never make a promise he can't keep. The Saturn, bro. Saturn. How many letters are in Saturn? <laughs> I'm not in my G Mantra bag. But hold on. Don't don't Saturn got don't they like oh did the CIA show you they took a picture of Saturn's clouds? Cap. They ain't got no space probe next to Saturn. They took that picture from the ground. Shut your stupid ass up. The six letter Saturn got the six the six pointed star? Of course it does. Why wouldn't it? Six. The six god. Saturn. The six god of today had a bar mitzvah, right? Dedicated to Saturn, right? Okay. And then you're worrying about the three six mafia, right? Where all y'all want to do y'all new take he fuck them niggas upside beats, right? Three sixes, right? Three six mafia, six 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 mafia. Your your mama didn't catch that bop bop chicken head because it was a bop. Three six. Three six mafia, bro. Saturn mafia, dog. It's the guys of Saturn. It's six six six. It's not some stupid ass nigga in red with horns. It's Israel. Now you could transpose it one more time and you want to get a different version of that story. So you got this Pokemon card, but then you have the holographic version, the shiny version and the unevolved version. So if you, if you switch Saturn one more time, you gonna get other deities. You can get set. Fuck it. Come on, chat GPT. Help a nigga out. I, I got you. I'm going to take y'all home. Don't worry. Don't worry. Cause, cause now that we're talking about the sun, then maybe we could talk about the eclipse too at the same time. So let's ask ChatGPT what it know about Saturn and uh, Saturn set is the is 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 going to be the coup d'état of it all. But I need to do Saturn and Chronos first. Time loops.
Shout out to Zenith. Daydream Glitch says, so Saturn, Samyaza? I probably ask that next Daydream Glitch. Shout out to you. Just Nudgeo, Peace to the Tribe, tuning in from work. Shout out to Just Nudgeo's work. Zenith said, like Drew Hill, you heard me. Shout out to King Lowell. Shout out to uh, Charles 13X. Great Britain is controlling current pop culture by way of Canada, which they technically own. Yeah, you're talking about uh, the Tavistock Institution. Yeah, the Tavistock uh, people, Legacy, was in uh, from the UK. The Beatles Invasion is their first experiment. But um, Tavistock also created sci-fi. Tavistock is responsible for the uh, sci-fi books, which um, ultimately became sci-fi radio shows and movies. So that's the Tavistock. All the cool shit that niggas love is Tavistock, for real. I ain't gonna hold you. Music, pop music, pop pop culture. There we go. Pop culture in terms of media consumption and hero journey shit, aka Kalipov Kabbalah. I'm I'm sure if I look into Tavis stock, I'll find fucking the same, bro. That's why this shit's so disrespectful, bro. Because what I have noticed in hindsight is that the things that they deny and play off are the border pieces of the puzzle. And they don't want to give you that, right? They don't want to give you, like, don't cast your pearls to the swine. They don't even want to give you the border pearls. Because, like, once you get the border fit figured out, you can fit in the rest of the shapes. Like, it's not... <clears throat> finishing the border means you're closer to finishing than you're not. Or you're closer to understanding things than you're not. You're no longer ignorant. And a lot of shit they push off and say is not true or is not that is the border. They never deny the heart of the matter. Even the devil demon worshipping niggas wouldn't deny its existence for real. It has to deny the borders around it. They have to deny that this means that. They're, they're playing word games with the symbols. And that's part of their thing. That's that's also a narcissistic thing. They're gaslighting you. But even if they could see past that and they're on a more pure intellectual way with the same science, they, them denying or talking around. I think Freemasons do this a lot. Playing stupid. But what happens if you play stupid too long? Everyone becomes stupid with you. You become stupid first because you're playing stupid. And then once you start playing, the shit starts getting cute. And you keep people around you stupid. And then you just reproduce stupid because your wife is cheating on you with a stupid nigga. And you're about to have a stupid baby. Same, same, bro. Like, over and over. Like, they, they, they did this to themselves. But figure out the border pieces. Once you get the patterns and the border patterns down, the rest of the shit is like is like clockwork. You get 3 a.m. anything. You get 3 a.m. anything that has an observable pattern, which is what the brother was saying earlier. It's like some type of, I got a red car, now I see red cars. Mm-hmm. I got the pattern for the devil, now I see the devil. I got the pattern for God, now I see God. Like, it's the same thing. So, you know, don't let, don't let nobody trick you out the patterns, for real. Fuck them niggas. LDS Hands is not the dragon bullshit. You know what I'm talking about. Shout out to Game of Thrones. Jalert. MG acting like a white walrus. Top tier. Oh, the Bobbles are the Builder Birds. David Owens. Facts I refuse. Raw. No. Daydream Glitch says, no, I'm Detroit. Been down here, but the boys in Texas just act hood for no reason. Oh, oh, oh. oh. You talking about like a different type of hood niggas? Yeah, yeah. Detroit niggas are. are, are notoriously dangerous but notoriously cool like that pimp culture and it's funny because i think there's a portal from detroit to to the bay area i think y'all niggas used to teleport back in the day from the great lakes to the bay area that's why y'all niggas got the same beats and the same pimping and the same y'all grandma probably got the same house or something like them bay area niggas and them detroit niggas are a different type of dangerous i don't like it i don't like smooth criminals that's what them niggas are so but you go to Houston or places that used to be a little bit more uh, uh, like that, like D.C., North, Philly. Them niggas are just niggas. Like, <laughs> you, you don't have to guess where they're coming from. They're loud. Same thing with Baltimore. Like, it's contentious. So, you know, you know if there's contention. Them other niggas who are calm about it, they don't want contention. 
And I guess they notice when niggas are being contentious for no reason, more so because they're trying to avoid it. So like, why are you acting like that? I don't want to have to do you in. And I am because I'm really dangerous. You know what I'm saying? It's all how we evolved to our, I guess, regional traumas. I was forced to go turn around and fight the bullies. Others are forced to like uphold some type of man code. Others are forced to uphold respect above all things first. Like this is these different maxims of hood shit that we that we've created or passed down to ourselves. So noticing the difference, we kind of like regulate each other too in that way. That's we you know the migration of niggas and niggas fucking on each other's bitches and the pillow talking and and, and the recipes that are shared through that. You know the next generation kind of changes or or gets molded in that same same repetitive loop because the eight is an inevitabilities not possibilities we inevitably going to average out chronos since i don't know <laughs> netter else has punched a girl waiting for my cousins at five years old got run over by a broke leg never been right since thanks for sharing shout to netter l damn so uh so all the so all the little boys who've been hit by who, who have hit girls have all learned the same heavy handed response from from nature. Ain't that a bitch? Aog says it's a whole lot of freestyling going on. That's what it is. Shout out to Aog. That's what that's what life seems to be. It's like everything's a freestyle, but who got the best flow? Mister Now says MK Project M- Project MK Ultra all over again. This time no trauma needed for the split. Just whoring around. Mm-hmm. Because, they, well, I think Panic kind of uh, he screwed the pooch with this one. Shout out to the, to the OG. He said magic is, 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 three, is three tenets of magic, right? Uh, repetition, which is why there's rituals. Is you're just repeating the practice. You're repeating the spell. That's why there's rituals to commemorate it, right? So anytime a church or religious group does a yearly, seasonally, equinox, eclipse-based Ramadan, any of that stuff, it's a ritual because it's a spell. So repetition is the anchor of magic they're using when they do rituals every year. It's a yearly spell. He said, uh, trauma, repetition, and symbols. White boys will tell you your life is ruled by symbols. They're talking about the Freemasons. They rule by symbols. On the doors, on the gateways, the the pillars, all that stuff is communicating something, if you pick up on it. But that's how they communicate, through symbols, which is why some people will look at the news media and be like, oh, you saw that blue and red? Because someone leaked that they're communicating through purple. Or someone might say, well, you see these numbers always add up, like the brother Wyatt and all of them. It's because someone leaked that they're communicating through the symbology of the numbers. But the thing about that being classed as magic is that you would think those are the only three branches to perform magic. And you may even think out of the uh, the severity, left-hand path of those three things, right? What's the most severe of them? Symbols, repetition, trauma. Trauma is the one that seems to be the alarming one, right? Because trauma can happen in so many different ways. So you automatically get a negative connotation with magic if you know that trauma is a key ingredient. Because I saw someone earlier, I think Mr. Now was talking about MK Ultra. MK Ultra is onset by trauma. So we're used to a trauma based reality, which is why Boys in the Hood exists, right? Like it wasn't about the black man saving his house and saving his community, it was about the nigga who didn't do nothing wrong being killed anyway. That was the moral of that story. Word to John Singleton. He did no wrong. He was the Jesus of their family. And he was sacrificed. It's the hero's journey. But. I forgot where the fuck I was going. I was cooking. Boy, boy, I was. I was out. I wanted to come back, though. Boys in the Hood just took me somewhere else. Because that's fucked up that they programmed us with that shit, too. Everybody want to do Tupac because of it. A.K.A. a martyr. You don't need to be a martyr. You need to be smarter. Oh, yeah. So the three tenets. 
but the highest form of any magic society or system that gets the yeah. you, you you can you you can substitute trauma in in uh and if you substitute trauma and you increase repetition and you put sex into that you get something totally different and you'll understand that sex magic is the real magic I just I kind of explained sex magic when science told you the woman holds the sperm of another lover up to seven years. And I never even read it enough to know if it's at least one. Because I've heard of babies being born with three partner DNA. You've heard that too. I ain't making that shit up. So like when your grandma was like, be careful who you swap spirits with, you know, the spirit is coming from the sperm. That, that's what she's talking about. She's talking about your fluid. Because those children that are a product of that spirit swapping are usually bad seeds. And, and, and then you just follow the agriculture of it, of cross-pollinization and interspecies things and stuff like that. And you get bad batch of crops every once in a while if you do too much of that shit. That's what grandma was pivoting on. Why? Because grandma was taught what? Agriculture. Why? Because she's a slave in a field. It's easy for her to create that construct and then look and observe life and observe her job. You think she was like some wise, crazy woman? Nah, she, the, the, the metaphors, just like the same metaphors in the Bible, they're all agricultural. If that's your job, your job is to see it through agriculture. That's what niggas do. We parallel everything through our experience, like I'm doing. That's what we do. That's, that's what makes us us. See what I'm saying? It's not, you know, she didn't have a stethoscope. She didn't have a micro. No, she observed nature. She returned to nature. And it was your grandmother's wisdom that said, keep your legs closed. Had nothing to do with white Jesus. I digress. So the sex magic. The freak off party. The most rich, famous, ritualistic people you know all come together and fuck on each other. More than any other vice you can assault them with, whether it's certain type of drug use, murder, you know, like stag films and stuff we used to find on Kazaa. See, y'all haven't been outside for real on the internet, and, I, and that's fortunate for you. Unfortunately for me, I was finding that shit at 14 years old. I've already seen the crazy rich white people just kill people on VHS tapes for fun. I watch white people do that. I'm not saying that to say that black people don't have something similar. I'm just saying nary a white person could tell me about statistics is going to mean nothing. It's deaf ears to me because you could download these videos too and identify them FBI. And I don't think you've arrested them. So your, 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 your grounds for morality and justice ain't the same as mine. Cause that's some terrible shit. They call them snuff films and they film them at snuff parties. And that's known in the CIA community in Hollywood, right? So far, so good. Don't miss it now. They almost did that shit with Brad Pitt, didn't they? Was that a Quentin Tarantino movie with Brad Pitt? Bruce Lee? You know, man, the main character, Leonardo, Leonardo DiCaprio. That was Brad Pitt and Leonardo DiCaprio, man. That movie. The, the damn end is a snuff. It's basically a snuff film, really. That's the era of time in which that was happening. That these videos on Kazaa were highlighted, by the way. So I remember that, Faces of Death, all that, all, you know, some boy shit. But it helped me come to terms with life faster. Like, yeah, I think I would have been better off if I didn't see it then. But I have a more grounded view of life because I've seen it now. Death does not, uh, does, does, does not uh, bend to your pleas. That's what I've learned. Um. Yeah, yeah. Off that though. Off that though. Shout out to Lumbraj Moon. Lumbraj Moon says this took a turn. You funny as hell. It really don't though. If you're new here, it did. But everybody know how I do. They do much. They mix stuff, but studying up. But I ain't trying to sound like Logic or J Cole, Jill Scott, J Bird. Oh, you talking about the big girls? Yeah, every, there's some niggas got like a big girl they in love with. Tell them to stop playing with us. Shout out to the brother White. I see you. Shout out to Haru on the track. Zenith, all of them. Dot Hex is Gemini Claw, Chat GPT, GPT for all. I guess it's more than the music connection. Of course. 
it's the magic connection. These are these are ritualistic parties too, because your ritualistic award shows also align to the astrology. You're in a ritualistic society of what? Back to the back back to the top, guys. The death cult under Saturn worship. And who's and who's at the head in charge of the Saturn worship thing going on in modern day Babylon? Besides the tiny hat people who call themselves Isis, Ra, and Eel. Well, they're not Moors, so I know they're not Eels. They're not Venetians, so I know they're not doing Isis, and Ra must be the sun. This must be the Saturn part of Ra, which is gives you y'all. Hello? There's no L in Japanese. Two L's together in Spanish, Moorish Latin gives you Y. Ya, Ra, La. Same, 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 same. Hebrew culture. Hence, 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 I know it's not them, but they're pretending it's them. Cool. Let them be Yasharael. Let them be Saturn. Let them be the death cult. That is literally what we were being freed from out of bondage. We no longer had to submit ourselves to mental bondage. Thus, we no longer had to artificially die. Egypt's not a place. It's a mind state. We were in Egypt. And those who did not have the resolve to overcome the change, the eclipse of Saturn, they couldn't let go of Malik. So let's act, so let's find out if Malik, Molek, is Saturn. Let, let's see if there's some con connections there. Because I bet you, I bet you, I bet you, golden calf, huh? So so this happened during the age of Taurus. That's when that's when Saturn was you know. Invigorated the most? Okay. Saturn and Kronos are indeed similar figures from Greek and Roman mythology, but they are not entirely identical. No shit, Sherlock. They are often conflated due to similar roles and attributes. Kronos, also spelled Kronos with a C, was the youngest of the Titans. Saturn, in Roman mythology, was associated with agricultural wealth and time. Mm -hmm. That's why all the metaphors in the Bible are agricultural. Kronos overthrew his father, Uranus, which is a Titan. Oh, and if you haven't caught on, uh, Saturn, Kronos, and all that shit, that's Zeus. Zeus as in, as the Mexican persuasion, Jesus, like Jesus, the son of God. Well, if Zeus is the prefix, I don't know, like Sori Toyama or uh, Goku-san with the apostrophe, son Goku. Hey, J, Zeus. Because there's no J in Hebrew. Hey, Zeus. Or Yeshua. Or Jesus. Y-E. J-E. Ja. Jamaica, man. Ja. Ya. Yashria. Jesus. The son of Zeus. So far, so good. Don't miss it, nigga, Roman you. However, fearing that his own children would overthrow him just as he had done to his father, Kronos devoured each of his own offspring, and they were born, except for Zeus. There you go. The sun! We were saved eventually, led a rebellion against Kronos the Titan, leading to his downfall. So that is the Greek version. What is the Saturn version? They're just describing him. He was depicted with a sickle or scythe. That's um, the Grim Reaper. Death Cult. Okay. Just like Kronos. Saturn was believed to have ruled during a time in peace and prosperity known as the Golden Age in Roman mythology. So Saturn, the son of Zeus, Jesus, and all of his qualities, the sun, existed in the Golden Age that already happened. The same Golden Age that is predicted to happen in the same Saturn-worshipping religion called Revelations. So the time that Revelations is documenting, the thousand years of the Golden Era, the Romans already had in their lore, in their narrative. Like, that golden era of revelations already happened with the same characters. Yet we still here with the bullshit. Saturn was believed to have ruled during a time of peace and prosperity known as the Golden Age in Roman mythology. Luke 8. The similarity between these lie primarily in their association with time and agriculture, agriculture being the biggest one of the Old Testament, and their roles during that mytho mythical golden age. Both are depicted as figures who preside over a time of abundance and peace before being overthrown by younger generations of gods and in television, you know, uh, American gods. 
So while Saturn and Kronos share, oh, nigga, you don't have to clarify they're different, bitch. Uh, hold on. Any overlap with Babylonian gods, especially Molech? That's what I need to know. So GPT says, there's no direct overlap between Saturn or Kronos with Molech, who is a deity mentioned in the Bible associated with the ancient Canaanite religion, rather than Babylonian mythology, my error. However, there are some thematic parallels and associations that can be drawn between certain aspects of these figures. Molech was a Canaanite deity associated with child sacrifice, particularly by fire which is what we saw the Bohemian Grove and the Bilderbergs. The worship of Molech involved sacrificing children, often by burning them in a ritualistic manner. This practice was condemned in the Hebrew Bible, correct, after getting out of bondage mentally. So if you're in a society that's currently, allegedly, perhaps, doing children's sacrifice again, you know, when a tunnel is found and there's mattresses with blood on it, which side, which side of the Bible do you think these people are on? pre-bondage or post-bondage because it's like these niggas just learning how to do the shit all over again like how the fuck the book in front of you tell you not to do that and in 2024 you the niggas that are doing that but you saying you them niggas in that book so Molech involved sacrificing children and most of that adrenochrome and all that alleged stuff that's happening or has happened in narrative is surrounded around the same cult even though we got out of Zeus's house and Saturn's house, we still in the Hebrew house. Don't miss it. Saturn and Kronos are associated with agriculture abundance and time rather than child sacrifice. But are they, though? Let me make sure I understand that correctly because I know what they're saying. But is the agriculture sacrifice any different than the child sacrifice when both sacrifices are required to either God? Because the ancestors sacrificed children, according to the America's book, so that they win wars and get over famines. Ephesians 3 and 8, I believe, of the Old Testament, God says, shall a man rob God? Malik, that's funny. <laughs> the book of Malik. Malachi 3 and 8, not Ephesians. So, Malachi, Molechi, 3 and 8. Will a man rob God? Now, I'm going to do you one more solid than that, because we, we offer that KJV shit. I'm sorry, Hebrew Israelites, brothers. I do not follow y'all over that cliff, but KJV is a dummy mission, in my opinion, of reading it for years and years and years and going nowhere. Awesome. Here we go. Word to Adonai. So you get the names of God. Mal Malachi, 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 Molech Kai, three. Read. Look, I'm going to send my messenger to clear the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come into his temple. Yes, the messenger of the covenant in whom you take such delight. Look, here he comes. Says Adonai Tezva. Tez Tezva, Tezva, Tezva. Look like Bar Mitzvah. So, vitz, viz, viz, vizat. Adonai, viz, I'm not saying your last name, Adonai. You play too much. Adonai. There's a very particular Elohim. Probably Saturn. But who can endure the day when that comes? Who can stand when he appears? For he will be like a refiner's fire. So, a fire god, right? A thunder god, right? Word to Zeus. Like a soap maker's lie. He will sit, testing and purifying the silver, moon. And he will purify the sons of Levi, the breastplates with the crystals, refining them like gold and silver. Mm -hmm. So they can bring offerings to Adonai uprightly. So this part of the story is dedicated to this particular tribe of Israel. Not all of Israel, because all Israelites are not Levi. So th this is this is dedicated to Levites. I think them the niggas that are, are cute and clamorous. They they had the they had the war gear, they had the crystals, I think they had the instruments. The niggas had everything. 
So they can bring offerings to Adonai uprightly. So to whom much is given, much is tested. So they have to do the ritual. Then the offering of Judah or Judah in Jerusalem, which I was saying earlier with Yah, this will be pleasing to Adonai. And as it was in the days of old, or as the years has gone by, remember, eight inevitability. So you notice the God is always referring to the same thing has happened already. Then I will approach you for judgment. So when will I approach you for judgment? After I send the prophets, so there's always going to be messengers first. And then there's a temple involved, hence the red heifers and all that dumb shit, rebuilding the temple. And then, and then, and then judgment comes and it will be, and I will be quick to witness against sorcerers, adulterers, and perjurers, right? Bitch me. So know that right off Rippy loop. If this is a loop and this is inevitable during those times waiting for an eclipse, they're waiting for Adonai to show up and destroy who? What is the first thing that Adonai is coming to destroy? What, what is the first thing that comes to this Hebrew's mind? Sorcerers. Right off rip, we got Diablo 1, 2, and 3, and 4, and 5. We got all four Diablos real quick in the book of Malachi. Like, he ain't he ain't worrying about the, the drug dealers. He ain't worrying about the murderers. He He's skipping past gold. He said, I'm chopping up the sorcerers, the adulterers, and the perjurers. This 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 is Hollywood. Your sorcerers, your adulterers, and your perjurers. This is your legal system. This is your your elite class of idols. That's what they are. They're they're gonna fall in any and all of those three categories, right? Let me let me make sure I'm erudite with the perjury. In law, 14th century, the act of swearing to a statement known to be false. Oh, when they put that on God, when his word is bond, but they full of shit. Willful utterance of false testimony under oath. So your clubs, your masonry, your Zeta, Gamma, Eltas, Elton Johns, Anglo-French. Oh, the black French, of course. Perjury. Perjury and false witness. False oath, false witnesses. Clubs, oaths, whoop. Oh, oh, that's funny. It's in the Bible already. Dumb niggas. The same niggas that are catching hell right now. As above, so below. But it's really just inevitability because it's an eight. Against those who take advantage of wage earners. What, what's the big conversation right now? Your, is your economy suffering because white people saved money and did the right thing by the people or because someone was being greedy? People who took advantage of wage earners. Widows and orphans. Against those who rob the foreigner of his rights and don't fear me. Uh, we're having an influx of foreigners right now, right? Do you think those foreigners are going to give a, a fair shake of their deal once they settle into their American dream? Did you? Okay. Says Adonai. So this is a promise from Adonai. When these things happen, he is close. Saturn's close. Because I, Adonai, do not change. Come on, God. For the sons of Jacob will not be destroyed. Woo! That's bad news if you misidentified yourself, though. Since the days of your forefathers, Jacob, Yakub, you have turned from my laws and you have not kept them. And I promise you, the forebearers today are not keeping them either. Return to me and I will return to you, says Adonai. Check that out. Return to me and I will return to you. For, the, for, for those of you who are persuaded of the American diaspora of Hebrews and Phoenicians, the part of the, in order to requalify or to resubscribe or to restart your Netflix subscription with Saturn or the Most High or Adonai, the God of War, which is Mars or Aries, right? But when you talk about the, the calf and the ram sacrifice and you get the Sony PlayStation, I ain't trying to do that to you right now. Easy, step by step. Return to me and I will return to you. Resubscribe and I'll resubscribe to you. That's it. And, but this is him voicing himself to the children of Israel. Because that's who Jacob is. Yaakov is Israel. So the children of Isis, Ra, and Il. You just throw bondage Egypt in there if you want to. Can it, you throw all that in there. And you're going to know for one thing's for sure, two things for certain. You're dealing with niggas at that point. Because of what all that shit means. So 
all niggas have to do technically is resubscribe to Yahweh. Know that, or in this case, Adonai. We're, we're not sure if they're the same. It sounds like they're the same. It seems like they're the same, but Inky had a twin brother, just like Cain and Abel did. But ask you, in what respect are we supposed to return? But that, He said, but you asked me, how do we return to you? And then this is what God, this is what Adonai says. Can a person rob God? Yet you have robbed me. And you ask me, how have we robbed you? In tenths, involuntary contributions. A curse is on you, your whole nation, because you robbed me. What is tenths and voluntary contributions? That's called tithing. Notice something, though. In the book that they write, the tenth is the voluntary contribution to a system. And the system these bitch-ass niggas made for us to follow, the tenth tithe tax is mandatory. And you don't get the seven to 49 year jubilee of the clearance of it either. So when we go back in time, when they said them people who took advantage of wage earners understand that that's the precursor to an unfair tax system also prophesied to be grounds for punishment. But they would know that if they them people. You see what I'm saying? That, and, and, that was the, and that was the straw that broke the camel's back for me. Like the niggas who say they read this book don't understand these curses. But you want me to believe that they understand that they're cursing themselves through their actions and deeds. Because this is everything that I'm showing you is what people are bitching about right now. April, ain't it? A curse is on you, on your whole nation, because you have robbed me. Bring the whole tenth into the storehouse so that there will be food in my house and put me to the test. So the test is resubscribe by bringing your tithe back to me and see what I do for you. So it's not even spooky. It ain't even like, yo, you've been robbing me. You've been cursed. Shit's been fucked up. It's been fucked up because you ain't been doing right by me and my covenant I created with your homie Jacob Abraham and them. But go ahead and test me out. Since you're not familiar with what uh, Mr. Adonai is about, go ahead and fill up the storehouse. Why is the storehouse important? Back to the top. Because God is the protector of who? Widows and orphans. So the storehouse, who benefits from the storehouse that's been robbed? The widows and orphans. Meaning, with the Most High Adonai set aside socially or politically for the people who need help, the Pharisees or whoever stole from that. So now the tears and the sacrifice of the orphans and the widows and the sex trafficking and all that is a side effect. That is the corruption you go through once you rob God. By In, in this context, it's not necessarily robbing God's pockets. It's the system that was created. We put the 10th tax tithe in place to take care of everybody else who's not a high earner with talents hence why the agriculture story of talents appears out of jesus mouth and jesus was like yo bring me that nigga here and kill him hashtag allegedly they want to say it's the guy that jesus visited whether it was jesus or not them was some rap scallions so by stealing the tithe and repurposing it you have robbed God, widows and orphans. Now, this is the warning, I think, because I think literally when I get with people who want to play literally with this book. So my brothers, my Hebrew Israelite brothers, you know, I know Hebrew Israelites kind of circumvent this by not collecting the voluntary tithe. <laughs> but a lot that do, you have to report that to who? 501c3, who's that? Rome. Who's robbing God right now? Rome. And who's helping them? You. You're an accomplice. It's probably not your idea, but you're an accomplice. Your tenth of your storehouse is going to Rome, which you have transposed to mean finances. And this time, we know it's not finances. It's agriculture. It's a tenth of your flock. It's a tenth of your wheat. It's a tenth of your corn. So that the widows and the orphans who have lost people in the wars can survive and grow. But we have transposed that erroneously to finance or fiat. And even in the spirit of that, you have been robbing. You see what I'm saying? Even gang members have a kitty, my nigga. Bring the whole tenth into my storehouse so that it'll be food in my house and put me to that test, said Adonai. See if I won't open up for you the floodgates of heaven and pour out to you a blessing far beyond what you need. 
For your sake, I will forbid the devourer to destroy the field from your soil, and your vine will not lose its fruit before its harvest time. Says Adonai, all nations will call you happy, for you will be the land of delight, says Adonai. So how do you turn around your nation? By making sure you take care of the smallest people in your tribe. It's one thing to be smart by yourself. It's another thing to bring up everybody else up to speed with you. And that's been me just trying to like in my own flawed, broken way. I do these dumbass videos as a tie the most. Like, because I be bitching like, how come no one taught me nothing or told me nothing or, you know, said it blunt, frank, wrong, indifferent so that I can start thinking about it. So, you know, it's a letter to myself for real to make sure I'm doing this part correctly. Story of talents, like what are your talents? Like God gave me time to understand and feel and research, cool, for free. Now I can give it back. What happens when you do what you're supposed to do? All nations will call you happy for you'll be a land of delight. Why are you a, den a land of delight? Because you've taken care of and made sure that the lesser amongst you are taken care of. That, that, that's what I'm saying about inevitability. The reason why those eights are important is because where you start, what you put into it is inevitably how it's going to come back to you. <clears throat> the karma isn't calling, is not, is not the law of causation from the, from the sense that, because like, because sometimes you have to activate karma. Like you don't have a choice but to activate karma. Like my situation as a kid. I didn't want to hit that girl in the face, but she pinched me. I didn't want to avoid the bullies, but they're bullies. But I had to activate karma by making a choice. This, 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 the, all these scriptures get at that is that you're going to make a choice and you can make a good choice or you can make a bad choice. But no matter what the choice is, there's an inevitable loop that you're going to circle. And the funniest thing about the Hebrews who wrote these books, they reminded you of what the loops are at all times. Just like before. You know what I'm talking about? He tells you first, like, just like the days in the old. So it's been a while since that generation of Hebrews were interfacing with Saturn. So we know we're talking about pre-Babylon captivity off rip because we know what happened to them. They ended up with Salmanesser, right? We know that's Tartaria, right? So this is written when? During or after Tartarian captivity. Cool, 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 cool. So while these niggas, don't miss this now. Why these niggas who no longer are observing or keeping this part of the covenant because they are now in Babylon or Assyria or wherever, Saturn shows up again and there's like guys because they're writing about him. And Saturn is, is or Adonai is saying, fuck with me, you know I got it. Question. If this happened during captivity and they changed their ways in Malachi and Ephesians and did what they're supposed to do, and then the return on investment is try me out because God is asking you to test him. Return to me and I will return to you. That's a promise. But you do what you're supposed to do and see what will happen. Are the children of Israel in captive in Tartaria no more? So, so it work if you work it. The proof is in the pudding. How and why and all that shit, that ain't my bag. But I know this is a series of curses and formulas. So if you could find your problem in the Bible with your society or your people or even in your individual situation, you could also, if you find that problem, you could also find the solution. So let me simplify this for you. If you're in a situation where you're working aimlessly in a corrupt system, then the best thing you can start to do is take the provisioning that you do have and share it with others less fortunate than you. That's how you hack that cycle. You don't address the system and worry about vengeance on Hollywood or whoever, or politics or Bill Gates or whoever. You counter the energy by celebrating the little that you have left because they're squeezing you 
and in defiance of being squeezed, you still let it go because now you're not in the seven deadly sins. You're not being a glutton. You're not being greedy, right? So this is all universal law. These are Tahuti principles, nigga. You're foregoing the pain that's associated with these sorcerers squeezing you and you're still taking care of those even less fortunate when everything in your being is telling you to look out for yourself. These motherfuckers ain't write this book. They don't understand it. That's crazy that niggas do, though. So, all nations will call you happy if you return the temp to the storehouse. Now, in a literal sense, we're not farmers no more. I don't even think we're allowed to really do that. And we don't, and we can't agree with shit. And we can't really come to a physical Levite centralized storehouse, right? We don't even believe we're the Levites half the damn time. With all the damn crystals we got. With all the damn music that we make. With how much we like to fight. We don't know where the Levites are. But if you fucked around and realized you might be, then what your ancestors believe is that you overcome the situation you're in now by giving a tenth back to someone less fortunate. That's not obviously not ingrained in calves no more. It could be fiat, but it could just be in any work in which you feel like you're being blessed by the most high that you share that work with other people. That's like one out of every 10 beats is free, niggas, in case you you fall asleep. And any way that you can begin to guide the karma, the inevitable eight, in any way that you can contribute to the swing back, not punch you in the fucking face, in any way you can do that, a tenth, he's only asking for a tenth of that energy, attention, sacrifice, right? If you understand that. So that there will be food in my house. Put me to the test. That's 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 Saturn asking you to test it out. Do it and see what I'll do for you. You have spoken strongly against me, says Adonai. Yet you say, how have we spoken against you? By saying there is no point in serving God, what good is it to obey his orders or to walk about as mourners before Adonai? So this is like getting into the little blasphemy and blasphemy is not forgiven. Well, they're doing it, nigga. And this is years after. These aren't the days of old. We consider the arrogant happy. Also, evildoers prosper. They put God to the test and nevertheless, they escape. Is that not what we all say right now? Like if there is an energy or, or or alien or mother plane or Scientologist or shapeshifter or reptilian or something that's on the moral oral side of life, why are you letting all these evil niggas rock with their blasphemy? See, all this stuff is addressed. We consider the arrogant happy, narcissist. Also, the evildoers prosper, 48 laws of power. And in their existence, they put God to the test. Yet, they escape what? His punishments. Because I tell you, I tell you real quick, like the difference. And in, in, in this is whether you're a believer or not. See, I'm not a believer. Like, I try to, I try to step out of that because beliefs have you like you gotta like have a, a top 100 questionnaire to make sure you believe the same shit some nigga believe. Mm -mm. I'm not a believer. I'm a knower. I know this math maps out. I don't understand it or contextualize it all the way how I need it to be. But I've seen it happen so many times that I know enough is enough. Like the eight is going to be fulfilled no matter what. If that Saturn doing that, I should learn more about Saturn. And that's what got me into the other shit. But if it's a God intelligence doing it, then this is what's driving me to it. Either all roads lead back to Adonai is what I'm saying. If, 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 if you're the people in this book, I can't speak for all the other people in the book, but everybody in this book, all roads lead to Adonai, right? That's what you would have to stand on. But instead of believing that you test it. And if you test it and it tests you back, then you know, it must be true. At least this part of it, right? 
And that's how you rock. It's called testing the spirit. It's borderline blasphemous. But it's but but it's worth it. It's it's worth it's worth you testing it out and seeing if it's a there there, then you just writing it off because you ain't never read the shit. It's a it's a it's a spell book. You know. I don't get too much deeper than that. I don't want I don't want to throw you too far off the reservation. Once you realize what power is carrying this out. So boom, we got we got all that. Come on, stop. We, I can't I ran out of free highlights. Really? You gotta log in to get a free highlight? That is Nick, that's some nigga shit. Anyway. And then Adonai said this. Then those who feared Adonai spoke together, and Adonai listened and heard them. A record was written in his presence for those who fear him, and they have respect for his name. They will be mine, says Adonai. On the day when I compose my own special treasure, I will spare them as a man spares his own son that serves him. Then once again, you will see the difference between the righteous and the wicked, between the person who serves God and the one who doesn't serve God. For the day is coming, burning like a furnace, when all the proud and evildoers will be stubble. Remember, this is Zechariah. This is this this is a Adonai calling back to uh It's still in the book of Malachi, but it's Malachi 4. We're about to run into it. Oh, we're about to run into it. Never mind. We're about to run into it. It's Malachi 4 and 2. We're about to run right into it. For the day is coming, burning like a furnace, when all the proud and evil doers will be stubble. That day is coming and it will set them ablaze. I will leave neither their roots or their branches. So this is talking about their legacy. But those who fear my name, the son of righteousness will rise with healing in its wings. Notice the son of righteousness is not a callback to Jesus, niggas. There's an actual change in the polarity of the sun. The son of righteousness, a, a modality of the sun, will rise with healing in its wings, and you will break out leaping like calves released from the stall. You will trample the wicked, and they will be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day when I take action. What, what else is what chakra is in the soles of your feet? Remember the Torah of Moshe. Moses, my servant, which I enjoined on him at Horev, laws and rulings for all of Israel. Look, I will send to you Elihu, the prophet, before the coming of the great and terrible day of Adonai. So the great and terrible day of Adonai had to have happened already because we already had Elisha and Elijah. Story happened. And those are the stories with the UFOs, by the way. So Malachi is preparing you for the UFOs and Ezekiel and Zechariah and Daniel. But we, I'm not going to keep code switching like that. It's already confusing. So, boom. The, the, the terrible day of Adonai is coming. What is that terrible day? When he burns these niggas up with the sun. Back to Genghis Khan. Back to the Mayan calendar. That's a day determined. Whoop, 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 whoop. Where he will be punishing the sorcerers, adulterers, and liars. Which is all what we've been talking about in Green. So... So, so if if you just zoom out of this real quick and you just follow the workflow, the workflow chart, what is the order of events of how you know the time is changing? Like, like if you took this at face value and you said, let's see if there's a there there. What are the different modes you'd have to follow to understand that things are going a certain way? Like, what are the requirements for this to be true? The first things first. I'm going to send my messengers first. Do you think at a time like this that the Most High has sent messengers? All right, cool. And then you test the messengers. What should the messengers be telling you? It should it should have something to do with this, right? Sorcerers, adultery, perjury, windows, orphans, foreigners, immigration. All those events should be happening too, right? I remember like one of the things I had to do, like right before I lost my car, right? Because that was like getting punched in the face too. Um, is that I had to come to the realization and acceptance at the very least that I too have committed adultery, although in a benign type of way. Like, you're not committing adultery because you're fucking. You're, <laughs> you're committing adultery because you're fucking with a married person. And I've been in situations, I guess, where some of the girls were technically married. They weren't with that person. They weren't building and actively living with them, but they were still under contract. And Yahweh don't honor nothing. It's a goddamn contract, as we have seen. So they're still in covenant with these men. Meaning, 
my influence mentally, emotionally, or whatever is is pulling them away from that contract, causing them to send themselves because they still have the option to return back home. You know, in the Bible, there's no divorce. They just send you away. So these these women weren't properly sent away. And I thought about it and was like, well, yeah, I mean, everything's everything. He without sin caps the first stone and I can't lift the rock because I'm not I'm not confident enough that that doesn't qualify. And I'm not cute and clamorous enough to act like I'm above it. So, yeah, I've been caught up in adultery. By definition. And I feel like. That was a turning point for me. Big turning point. And I kind of swore off married women since then. Like, I don't mean like they were actively married and I saw them from their husband. I'm talking about like processing a divorce or they have kids and, you know, all that extra shit. So, yeah, bro. I had to test that shit. And and that's the ill shit about it, yo. As soon as I realized that's where my error was, uh, I lost my car. You know, God still punched me in the face. I can go on and on forever. Like most of my injury to self is, has been me realizing where I've been fucked up at in terms of like what I think or feel God is trying to get me to do. It's like, ah, you learned a lesson. Ah, we're going to chip your tooth. <laughs> now I have this, this fucked up pain until, you know, either it heals itself, which I do believe it can happen. Uh, Baba Luaye. Or I get enough money to remove it. You know, that type of thing. But it's with me forever. Like I'm going to remember forever what led to it. So that's just the breaks though. That's the breaks when you don't have breaks. Like too little, too late, a day late, a dollar short. And, and we're seeing this pattern emerge, this eight. And and it's connected to Saturn and it's connected to Yahweh. It's, it's back in the Bible for some reason. I don't know why I'm here, but I'm going there. So just like it's been before, it's about to happen again. All of this has happened. They've been destroyed before. You know the other time they've been destroyed? Babel. You know the other time they've been destroyed? Pharaoh. You know, a lot of the time they've been destroyed, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. It's always when those things pop up the loudest. Something's about to happen and someone's about to get destroyed. So how do you sidestep that destruction? And that's why he sends the prophets, the messengers, Daniels, and all of them to start telling you, you need to build your UFO. You need to build your ship. You need to, you know what I'm saying? Y'all niggas need to go to the wilderness or something. That's even if that's like in jest, like that's a, a symptomatic of normal day-to-day -day human interaction. Like every civilization as a collective produced this pattern, right? You could take the oneness off of Yahweh, Saturn, or God. You could just say, these are some brilliant niggas who peep game and gave you a formula. Even if you approach it that way. But, but the thing about universal law and appreciating that the sages and magi who wrote these books originally were on that level, and not on a, I'm going to elementary school level, you have appreciation with the fact that at the very least, these writers knew more than we give them credit for. So they're not writing it. Ver it it's, it's not a story. It's a formula. It's science. Cool. So anyway. You're speaking strongly against me. And you had a good, you had a good point. The arrogant were happy. The evildoers prosper in this society. They've been putting you to the test and they escape the punishments. Then those who feared Adonai spoke, they will be mine. And then Adonai said, oh, so what you want me to do is to destroy the people who've been playing in my face in order for you to believe me. If that ain't what everything we've been talking about. God, you said you want us to get back on the eight. You want us to get back on path. All right, all right, cool. We ain't got no problem with that. But what about these people using your name in vain under perjury saying they're the people of the book? How come they all fucking simple and clean and shit? We're the Final Fantasy. All of a sudden, there's tunnels everywhere, ain't there? All of a sudden, you ain't feeling that pharmaceutical shit no more anyway, are you? All of a sudden, the mainstream media, their cash cow is, is crashing out. So, suddenly, Hollywood, they birth child for programming in amplifying their spells, that shit ain't hitting like it used to so far. And then the last one, which I always tell you is the last one in any endeavor, music. Now the music ain't sticking. You got Kendrick Lamar versus J. Cole. Finally. Ten years too late, by the way. 
and niggas is talking about, but this is like a bunch of nerds. <laughs> like, what? What? 2015, you would never. But in 2024, a lot has transpired. A lot of energy, a lot of hunger has emitted since then with the widows and orphans and shit. Where now when you want to act on it, now when you want to capitalize on this energy, fucking nerds. You know why? And I'll tell you why, even if people haven't said it yet, is that no matter how great those brothers are, individuals, and no matter how good the beats are, how good they're rapping, they all missed a very powerful opportunity. They ignored the end of the United States in all of their songs. They completely ignored the tone of what's going on, what's going on in the room. They've completely ignored the lockdown. They completely ignored Red Pill. They've completely ignored everything that we all have lived through. So now they're toned up. The, the tune of their 808s no longer matter. They're still making beats in D-flat, C-sharp. We on a whole different key now. So it don't matter, Nary, what these niggas say. Because it's no longer lock and step and resonant with real life. To the fact where the guy was like, they're dorks. Because it's a bunch of upper middle class people who no longer relate to the struggle. Woo, woo, woo. Maybe they do. But they didn't take advantage of the time to rap about it. And that's what you're supposed to do, prophets. You're supposed to rap about it. You're not supposed to rap for the sake of rapping. You're not supposed to rap to say that you can do it like Pop, Biggie, or Jay. You're supposed to use your talent that God gave you to tell the story that God gave you. And many of you have missed the mark on that. And I understand it's easy one to miss when you're chasing evil. When it looks like the evil way is the good way. And that's what you pattern yourself on. Even if you haven't identified it as such. We did it for you. So you can't say you didn't know. I've been saying this shit. Every Illuminati YouTube video been said. What are you, crew now? Well, this ain't funny, so don't you dare laugh. Just another case about the wrong path. I was outside, nigga. So, unfortunately, it's the end of that. It's not the end of us. It's the end of that. And because it's the end, seatbelts come off. Someone else is going to sit back in and, and start from all over again. And, and the beauty of a restart, and the beauty of a resync, and the, and the beauty of a timeline shift that reconnects the timeline to a more desirable outcome, you know that we're going to start all over. It's inevitable. So let's start it like this. And let's hold on to, this, on to this and let's produce a figure eight that looks and feels like this this time. Instead of going through the same 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, the same, same, like y'all ain't ready for something different. Especially when you start putting the blood in it and the no-no parts. Like I'm more, I'm more traumatized by the fact that these niggas is willing to do it. Fuck the effects, nigga. Like you're willing to do that with a child for real? weird like i don't even like i said that's not my advice in my story so i don't want to judge that more harshly than i can but it's weird to me so yeah like we can't do nothing cool without that i get that's more importantly that's the weird part that the weird shit's a prerequisite for fame like you can't just have niggas talented making great music without fucking on people who don't want to be fucked on like what is that like, I don't, I don't even understand how this innocent, fucked person causes this person to get more favor. Like, there's a random person. I can see if you're, like, fucking a particular person. Like, hey, if you want a shot, you got to fuck me to get it. Like, that's, okay, all right, Diddy, I get it. But when you start fucking people who ain't even on the fucking treadmill with you, that's weird, bro. That's weird, bro. I'm so, I don't give a fuck what a nigga talking about. That shit weird to me. That shit's weird. Oh, it's an adrenaline rush, and they get off on the taboo of, you know, taking something from someone who didn't want it or, you know, having that club. Like I said, what happens if them niggas give me high fives when I punch Dominique in the eye? Guess the world would never know. But I, I'd probably be a different type of nigga until the eight showed up again and I had to make another choice again. These niggas see the eight coming and they're like, oh shit, let me take my clothes off. Bro, the eight is coming, dog. 
what is a seven, eight, nine, nigga. Like eight, eight is here. So I won't say that the eclipse necessarily is a prerequisite or means that, but at least its symbology and its attention and its energy highlights all of this that I, I tried to cover as much of it as I could in this video. And so much more I can do, for real, for real. But, you know. He will turn the hearts of the fathers back to their children and the hearts of the children to their fathers. Otherwise, I will come and strike the land with complete destruction. Look, I will send you Elisha before the coming of the great day. That's, that, that's the workflow. Shit get wild, shit fall apart. The bonds are recreated and everything else gets wiped out and then you get back on the eight again. Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But how have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. You robbed the devil. Y'all funny as hell, boy. As much as you describe this nigga as a bad guy, I don't know why you would do that. <laughs> okay. So there is no direct connection with Kronos and Molech. However, during Saturnalia, there we go. There we go. Don't lie to me. I know it's the same bitch. Saturn and Kronos are associated with agricultural abundance rather than child sacrifice. However, in Roman myth, there's a festival called Saturnalia. Mm-hmm. Yep, we know. They made sure they let that cat out the box within the last 10 years, didn't they? Oh, I can't do Christmas no more. Whose idea was that? You niggas done fucked up the goddamn vibes, for real. I don't care about video games without Christmas. Christmas was like when the new games were coming out. Like, that was the checkpoint. Now y'all are like, we can't celebrate these pagan-ass holidays. Like, what's pagan about Saturn if the same thing you're saying is pagan just to go to Sunday church? You sure you got away from Saturn by going to Sunday school? Because Saturn is what? Saturday school. <laughs> Hello. Well, we, oh, you're, we, we really shook it up there. Like, we, we, we made it a fucking new day. Like, weird as hell, boy. Weird as hell. The Sunday, Helios Day, I guess. Or there's another name for it, for this one. The one that's being eclipsed. And then Saturn Day, of course, you know is Saturn, so. We ain't got to get cute and climbers. The son of Saturn and his son Helios or Jesus or whatever. Jesus, Helios. There we go. We, we, we're we worshiping. We're worshiping the son of God rather than worshiping God himself. You see how the new Christian Constantinian thing is real slick like that? But whatever, right? Like common sense be damned. So Saturnalia is what they're saying is the overlink with Molech, by the way. Don't miss it, Malik. Which was celebrated in honor of Saturn. During Saturnalia, there were some rituals involving role reversals. You know, transgenderism. Gift giving, Christmas. And feasting, Christmas, Thanksgiving. But they were not associated with child sacrifice. Oh, 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 because we forget that child sacrifice and child sex are substitutes. So, Saturnalia plus pedophilia. I don't even think I want to search that in my damn search thing. Never mind. I know for a fact, and, and, and Google be damned, you can, um, well, my password is sacrificed. Oh, my bank account password. What is my bank account? I don't know that shit. Anyway. Saturnalia in the gymnasium of Rome, they're fucking kids. Don't miss that shit. Like, that was the whole thing that, like, really got niggas off of Christmas. It wasn't the Saturnalia and what that mean. It was the fact that you realize what it mean. And on that day, it was okay for role reversals, including the child bride that you see continued in masonry. And then the homosexual acts with the said child, right? So that the women want to get pregnant. You get that whole Greek Roman narrative around that shit. True or not? Like, I don't, I hope that's not true. I hope these niggas with the smartest philosophers aren't that fucking stupid. Pull out, you, you fucking slouch. But they were fucking kids. So, like, I don't know if sacrificing the kid uh, physically 
with blood versus traumatizing the kid and puncturing that part of him. The same effect, by the way, in Crowley witchcraft. Don't don't miss the dancing bear. Why? Why? I don't even need them to agree with me because I know that's what Crowley gave them. The sex magic. Why are we killing these people when we can just sexually, ritually abuse them to access those dimensions? This is a, it, it's it's it it's worse, I think, because I think they do both now, right? Like that's where we're at in the game. It's not one or the other. Is they do both? They fuck them, take their adrenochrome, then kill them. So allegedly now, this is this is what the movies and all the narrative is saying. And this is telling you the same thing. Well, in one hand, the Malikians will kill the kid. In the other hand, the Saturnalians will probably fuck the woman. Today, they're doing both. I say that to say they're too close not to be the same. So whether they want to tell me Molek is Malik and Malachi and Cain and Canaan and the, the, the Baal and all, Beelzebub and all, I don't know. Y'all doing the same shit. Y'all doing the same ritual, the same sacrifice, the same repetition on the same cycles. So, you know, you call them whatever the fuck you want, but why you keep doing this to us? See, you got to talk smart to the GPT. It don't want me, it don't want to make that connection. It said it was indeed marked by revelry and sometimes lacks social norms. It's not primarily associated with child abuse. Uh, the hell it is. It's worth noting that in any society where norms are relaxed or reversed during a festival, there can be instances of inappropriate behavior or excess, including potential mistreatment of children. This would not be an inherent or intentional aspect of why they're doing the festival itself. The accusation of child abuse or sacrifice in relation to Saturnalia may stem from criticism of early Christian writers who viewed the festivities as pagan and morally corrupt, which looped again, right? Don't miss this. I'm trying to get it to make a connection that we're talking about Malik, but it's saying like, yo, even in a society where the genders and the pronouns are a little bit more lax, the only people you have really beefing with these things are the Christians, right? The believers, if you will. But they're saying maybe the believers put some extra spin on some of that stuff. Now look at modern day time where you have a large millennial population around proximity of black church on Sunday. And now people are saying, well, we can't do Christmas with our kids no more because that's pagan. I was like, now you niggas sound like the Seven Day of Venice and the goddamn um, print Kingdom Hall niggas. They're like, nah, 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 fuck. Because for real, the Greeks and the Romans is fucking on the kids, so we can't do that no more. And that's why we stopped doing it. That's what the number one reason why we don't do it. But but keep that in mind. You thought that shit was a Christian holiday the whole time. So this time it was the Christians that did it, right? If you, if you think about how crazy that is. Back then, the Christians were criticizing it. In my lifetime, it was the Christians who celebrated it. It was the Christians who were doing Saturnalia. It was the Christian church that was doing Santa Claus. It was the Christian church that told you to behave like you were listening to Yahweh so that you get your gifts on the way. Passover. Oh, y'all not? Y'all, oh, y'all didn't know? Yeah, because that's what I'm saying. These motherfuckers are stupid. What's the real Passover? They said it's Easter, right? Ishtar, Venus, right? I Isis Rael, right? Why are we putting Passover of Eshu, Zeus, Jesus, Venus, son? Why are we doing the observation of Ishtar, Easter, which also child sacrifice, by the way? The red eggs and the painting of the eggs. Don't, don't, don't have Chat GBT have you fucked up out here. Why am I worrying about the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the Easter bunny? Why am I why am I observing him during Venus fertility worship? On a spring New Year equinox. On the new year, right? Jesus is born or reborn on the new year. Don't miss this, niggas, because this this is how stupid these niggas are. Because you think the new year is Janus because of white supremacy and the overthrow of Moors in Al Andalusia in 1492, you have lost track of the fact that December 25th. 
Passover for the new year is not the new year until now. We're at the new year now. So that means Jesus' birthday just passed. But they're telling us ISIS. It was weird to me, although they're related, right? But if you go back to the new new year, the January 1st, right before that, you have what? Another Passover. But you call it Christmas. You call it Saturnalia. What happens on Saturnalia? What happens on the Passover of what? The sun. The sun is on a cross for three days. It's at its lowest, it's absent from the sky until three days later, and then it rises back up. That's December 25th. That's Saturnalia. That's the observation of that. And it's being borrowed for Easter, allegedly Passover, Jesus, all this cool stuff. Ramadan be damned, right? No disrespect. All of that is happening around the real new year, where it's supposed to happen. But for years and years and years and years, at least the entirety of my life, I was taught and told and conditioned to believe that that occurred December 25th to January 1st. But the only thing that occurred December 25th to January 1st was niggas fucking on kids and people overthrowing the Moorish Empire. So imagine how tragic that is, for real, for niggas. Like, that's disgusting. So, swap a roof, switch a roof, Saturn, go, Saturday goes to Sunday too, niggas. You get what I'm saying? It's the Sunday church people who's saying it's now. And then it's the Saturday church people who was saying it's in the winter then. Whose line is it anyway? I don't even know who, I can't even keep up with who did what no more. The accusation of this morally corrupt pagans, however these accusations are not supported by historical evidence and are likely exaggerations. Uh, as, a, as a fucking sodomite is writing this damn answer to me. Liar, you're a fucking liar. I had a whole book about that shit. But it's ritualistic. And Chad GPT might not deal in magic and rituals. Again, it's going to be white boy smart. So anyway, so Saturnalia Sunday, Ishtar, Easter, which you're celebrating now, or we're in the midst of. We got Venus, she show up in that shit. We get the mother, the son, my son, masonry. Yeah, you know, you get, you get them together. And this whole time, dad is like, what about me, nigga? That's kind of gay. You can't have a son without me. And that's Saturn that would say that, by the way. Or Set. Set in the lore of Egypt or Kemet, he was a hating ass bitch ass nigga, wasn't he? he? Who was he hating on? He was hating on Osiris, his own brother. So then you're going to jump into that shit again. Before we even tell that whole story, you're going to look at Cain and Abel all over again. You have to do Canaanite God Saturn, Canaanite God Set, who was the hater on his own brother and killed his own brother, Abel, Babel, Babylon. The Canaanites versus the Babylonians. And then you wonder why the descendants of Canaanites are in captivity in Babylon. Don't miss the dancing bear. It's always a there, there, nigga. That's 3M for real. Like, in real life, once you unlock that shit, it's everywhere. So it's like, all right, let's, let's, let's see what set is about. Let's see what, why are we changing days. Any similarities of the aforementioned with set. Mr. Now says, lots of Crowley hidden in Harry Potter 2, written by J.K. Rowling. That's hilarious. MS1 says, all witnesses, no matter how it's nice. The cult of the eight, a ten, a nine, a ten. Shout out to you. Baby's kids broke their covenant. Yes. Shout out to MS1, King of Well, Haru on the Track, Dot Hex, Just Nudge I appreciate all y'all for sticking around to this part of the video. We six hours in. Let me wrap it up. Pause. Mr. Now says, speaking of Sodom and the Eclipse on 4812, Silo and 120 Days of Sodom gave away half the story. Yes. Um, the brother Aurelius, Eben, Bent, Ben, Yapef, 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 Thomas, Eel. Male and female can be a cow, dog, snake. People are man and woman. Free white is a more white male is a slave. They catfish all the pictures, and we're not the slaves. Stop calling the nationals. White means nationals. Well, my brother's on his uh, Moorish Temple Science of America kick. We're not even in that part of the story, but I appreciate you for reminding us with those maxims. But doing none of that's going to change none of this. We, 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 too, we far beyond the pale. Like, Saturn's already on its way back. It ain't like, we can't, we can't prepare them for impact no more than... Noble Draw Lee prepared us a hundred years ago. Like that was the preparation. First a prophet shows up. 
<laughs> and then it's your ass's grass. You feel me? So, uh, nah, we we're in the your ass's grass phase of it, and it feels fine. It, we're gonna be all right. But um, yeah, shout out to him though. Like, so so I asked it out of all that weird shit. Talk to me about set then, which is also sat Saturn. Set's association with chaos and disorder. Set is often depicted as a god associated with chaos, storms, and disorder. The storms give some a link to Zeus, which gives us a link back to Saturn. Similar in Greek mythology, Kronos is associated with the idea of throwing order, chaos. He castrated his father Uranus and later consumed his own children out of fear. I did not know that. I did not know that when Kronos overthrew the titan Uranus, that he also castrated his own father. Why that's important, MG? Because the United States government, which is not our government, which is the European demonstration, they worship Addis or a, a version of it. And in that Addis worship, right, you have the self-harmed, mutilated boy, Addis, who's technically a god. This is the Kabbalah. This is Gnosticism. So his like it's like his aunt or his mother Wanted to be a lesbian lover with him, but you couldn't have his penis or something. It was a real twisted, fucked up story. But it's in that vein. Like, well, what if Addison do it to himself? What does it look like if someone else castrates you? Word to, you know, word to Muhammad. And then you get this story, which is the word to Muhammad. Because I ain't even get into that shit yet. We talking about Venus, stars, and moons and shit. And you thinking this stuff is Christian. You won't easily find out this is all Muslim stuff. But don't let me be the bearer of bad news. But, um... So they're saying that Uranus, the father, was castrated, aka had his dick chopped off by Kronos. And that's intense because we get the same thing with Set and Osiris. Osiris had his dick chopped off. So like when they find his dick and put it back, Washington, D.C., phallus, you have a return or a restoration of what? Patriarchy. And I think like when women be like, oh, we're under a patriarchy, we're under a patriarchy. They're thinking it's like under the power of pussy and humanity. I think you're under a patriarchy, perhaps spiritually. Or was. And that and that spiritual patriarchy was signified by the erecting of those phalluses. Osiris's dick. Or in this case, Uranus's dick. <laughs> we chop the dick off of Uranus. Bro, these niggas is nasty. Like just their wordplay is vicious. The association with chaos contrasts with more orderly deities such as Zeus, who is Jupiter, in Greek and Roman mythology. Negative connotations. Seth, like Molik, or Molek, has negative connotations in myth. Seth was often depicted as a disruptive or malevolent force associated with violent and conflict. Molik, or Malik, also mentioned earlier, was associated with child sacrifice, a aberrant consideration in many cultures, especially ancient Israelite society. Especially amongst niggas. So set in the ancient niggas who came from the ancient civilization that had a set. Same, same. It's like the the thing that niggas get off on the most is the thing most closely associated with violence. Ding, 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 Hotline, hotline. Whose kids are you anyway? Rolling mythological conflict. Both set and Kronos plays roles in the mythological conflict. Set famously killed his brother, Osiris. The god of the afterlife. Uh, what is that? Pluto? What is that? The other side, the waters. After, well, no, that's afterlife, not underlife. Underworld, afterlife, not underworld. Although, Shah to Shah Khan, they kind of merged together. Egyptian mythology leading to a prolonged conflict with Osiris and Horus. Because Horus came to ride out for his dad. His dad being sat, or being sacked by Sat. So, Osiris and Horus. We're about to get Israel real quick, ain't we? We're about to get Israel bingo from this. Kronos similarly played a central role in the Titan, Titan no Maki. So instead of a patriarchy, you got a Titan no Maki. The war between the Titans and Olympian gods in Greek mythology. So Kronos was playing the same conflict as Seth with his nephew. While there are some thematic parallels and shared attributes between them, I could probably force it to get out more, or we can just go to Ancient Deities PDF and look it up. Come to a similar conclusion. But it's the same thing. It's the same situation set up. Some hating ass nigga that you love. 
is it's you you you're usually set up by a hating ass nigga that you love. I don't want you to miss that. So if we were ever betrayed by anybody, it is probably those hating ass niggas that we love that betrayed us, and not some ops that beat us in a war. It's, it doesn't follow the story at all. It's somebody crossing the ocean with no resources and no technology beating our ass in Missouri. Doesn't doesn't there's not enough time or materials to fulfill that prophecy. Whereas if some cool niggas came over here with some shiny things and they're playing nice and we were showing them the ropes and we were coexisting and out of their fear or hatred turned against us, that fits the goddamn story every goddamn time. Especially when you've been through situations like that in real life. It's always that. It's, it's never the nigga that you know is an op. It's always the nigga who's acting like he ain't. I haven't felt for that in years, but I've seen it. I've seen it. I've seen it try to happen many times. And I'm like, this op ass nigga. But what's the purpose? Like, why do you want to be set in this story so bad? How come none of these bitch ass niggas ever want to be whores? They always want to be the easy bad guy. They never want to be the righteous one. That's what be disappointing me about these niggas. But yeah. Eight. Peter Pan, the crocodile named TikTok. <laughs> so big. Holy oil, crocodile tears. I'm sure I have another query about eight. Let's ask it directly. Does the number eight apply to any of these, of these what? Not stories, but characters. Let's see what their numbers are. The number eight doesn't have a prominent uh, association with those gods. In Kronos, Saturn is associated with three, representing three cycles, past, present, future. So, loop. However, there is no direct association with eight in their myths, which is fine, because eight is the loop. So, three represents the three states of that loop. Where you're at, what's in front of you, and what's behind you. What's in front of you is what's behind you, and what's behind you is what's in front of you. As above, so below. As before, so without. Like, that's infinity. Molech. In ancient Canaanite religion, Molech was associated with sacrifices made in his name involving fire. With the number eight may have significance in numerology or other belief systems, there is no context with Molech in this context. Set in ancient Egypt, he's associated with number seven, lucky sevens, which held significance in Egypt. Egyptian cosmology and religious symbolism. Set's role moves around conflicts with other gods, particular Cyrus and Horus, rather than... Yeah, no shit, Sherlock, because all these are planetary alignments. It doesn't, it doesn't, Chad GPT doesn't know how to do cosmotheosophy. Cosmotheosophy, a term that refers to the philosophical and religious exploration of the cosmos and its significance, could potentially involve discussions of celestial bodies and their mythological or symbolic associations. However, the specific figures mentioned were primarily understood within the context of mythology and religion rather than representations of celestial phenomena. I got to remember chat GPT is not a nigga, so it doesn't know that there is no division between that. Religion and mythology is cosmotheosophy because you're laying down in the field that you're working all day and your television is the stars. It's common fucking sense for real. But um, yeah, but anyway, I'm not I'm not going to try to blue pill the, the blue, the blue AI. But you have no reason to worry about it taking over the world if it's this limited. Janus, the Eightfold Path, J, Eight, Ogdod, Hermopolis, 
eight sills of Jesus and the eight triga- trigrams of Taoism. Shout out to Zenith. Janice and the Eightfold Path. I like that. That's interesting. Octo. There's eight, right? Well, we got three eights, four eights. We got plenty of eights. We got crazy eights. There's sevens. You need three sevens to hit the damn jackpot. 21, three. Yeah, there's always three and sevens. That makes sense. Are they stupid? Um, three, six, nine. How many times you got to do eight to get a three, though? Because you just do eight twice and you get seven. You do eight six times. There it is. That's it. This is eight six times to get three again. Three six nine. Real, real fine. Yeah, yo. Eight six times is 48. 48 is 12. 12 is three. It's They all connected. Why they play with me like that? Only in like that. Try to play with me and my math, nigga. I did the I, I know the polynomials, nigga. Uh or whatever the fuck. Prime numbers and all that dumb shit. But yeah, uh they te- they taught us that for no goddamn reason but to learn numerology for real if you think about it. But yeah, man. That's where we're at, man. Eight represents the gate, the letter H. MS1, Mr. Now said that. MS1 says eight on the flip is infinity. You got that. Zenith says, right view, right aspiration, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, right concentration. Those are the steps. Got you. Of the uh, eight trigrams of Taoism. I like that. I might have to get into that a little bit. I'm trying to think of anything else stump jumps out or stomps out at me about this eclipse since tomorrow. We'll know. <laughs> One thing's for sure, two things for certain. We'll know if any of the other more surface level concerns occur because we're going to. It's close, but my my spirit and my heart feels the sun being more optimistic. My heart and my spirit's telling me it's just another day in the neighborhood on some Mr. Rogers shit. So like whatever you was doing before, you could just still do, but do it better. Like, you know, when they talk about alchemy, like what's the purpose of learning this alchemy thing if we're all just victim of what the energy is presented as? Like if we're all just presented carbon monoxide and can't convert it to oxygen we're dead so like just to breathe you got to be an alchemist for real for real so if this energy is coming with the with the promise of saturn's promises type of energy uh which is just discipline but saturn is dope though because it's the disciplinary plant parent that punishes you when you fuck up but it also rewards you when you do right Unlike the narcissistic parent, which just wants to fuck you up no matter what. So we ain't got to worry about that with this guy. But, um, yeah, I feel like if you've been doing your thizzle and you've been doing your thing and you've been trying to stay above the water, then this energy is going to carry you back to shore. Like it's going to take you out of that water, out of that and put you on a new timeline. We had a similar timeline jump. I was waiting to see if the brother popped up, but Antonio McKinney. Um, this is during the time of a clubhouse a couple of years ago. One of the one of the, one of the things of that time was the portal of what was it, December twenty first or some shit like that, like December twenty first, twenty twenty one portal or some shit. Niggas was talking about. I think it was twelve twelve twenty one. Correct me if I'm wrong. If it wasn't, it was twelve twenty twenty. I think the portal happened in 2020, actually. It had to. Hold on. Let me go inside my silly ass brain real quick. Today's the four. Last year was the third. The year before that was the two. Into the 21. So it wasn't that December. It was the 20, 20, December of 2020. Uh, December 20. 20 portal nigga it was like a eclipse
twelve twelve portal, December twenty twenty twenty. It's on a clubhouse server somewhere. But people were talking about that time period and that thing the same way they're talking about this eclipse. I will say, like, once you subscribe to it, though, and because we're talking with people we never talked to before and we're going back and forth with these ideas, me and Antonio were kind of like, yo, it feels like we're going to go through this portal. And I only remember this event profoundly because at the same time, you know, talking about synchronous synchronicity and shit is that I uploaded Fortnite or I'm sorry, updated Fortnite to, you know, I haven't played it in a while. So I was updating Fortnite and I watched the movie and I never watched those update movies, but I watched this one. And the whole premise of that Fortnite was people going through a portal and they ended up back in a time where there's like dinosaurs or some shit like that. Like whenever they did those ugly ass shotguns and SMGs with the dinosaur stuff, that was that portal led into that version of Fortnite gameplay. And I was like, this is stupid. But the story, though, like one person jumped through the portal, one got st stuck behind type of thing, and we're going to rendezvous later on a certain ecliptic or on a certain pattern. Like, this is once in a lifetime, but the cycle repeats itself. So if it's anything like that portal, um, things did dramatically change for me. That didn't manifest until maybe 45 days later, though. So, like, the whole moon cycle and a half later. So, I imagine if you're, like, trying to measure these type of events out for real, for real. Um, whatever your intentions are today after this stream, I do challenge you to write some things down. Like, think of it like this. We want we to approach this shit like a lottery ticket, like a scratch-off. If there is a potential that you can modify, edit, or add to your life at a time like this, then we must take advantage of that. And in taking advantage of that in the most innocent way possible, you can do it through your prayer, you can do it through your affirmations, or you can do it with writing. I suggest writing just so you can get in the habit of seeing the time. So get you a piece of paper or notebook, write the date, write how you feel, what time it is, what song you're listening to, any notes to self for the future to help you remember. And I usually tell you where the sun is, hashtag allegedly, and I put where the moon is, hashtag allegedly as well, just so that if I had to go to an app and pull up like what the conditions of that time was in the future, as I learned to appreciate it more, I could. Like, oh, the sun was in Aries and the moon was in Scorpio. And that means something when you write that a thousand times. So you'll start noticing your intentions and then you start paying attention to where the moon and the sun is when they manifest. But that only works if you write. I don't write down when every time something manifests. So I'd be missing the fucking, I'm saying this to myself. I'd be missing some of those portals. Like, you ever notice every time the goddamn Mercury retrograde is in the goddamn Libra, Zebra, Cheetah, Cheetah, some shit, the chicks go crazy. Then you ever notice like anytime you need some extra, extra money, there's like some Leo or Libra. Where is that in your chart, young man? Like, keeping track of that. Just just in case there's a there there. But even with this like ritual, like when you you write it down and you prepare yourself, and I, I I'm telling you as a as a person who went through that 2020 December portal, like I remember writing shit down. I remember joking casually kinda with Antonio about it. And then I remember 45 days later, my life was totally different than it was until I did that. My life was changing. I had some injury. I had some things I was going through, but I wasn't sure how I was going to get to the other side. But from that portal onward, as sure as God made green apples, my entire life changed. Because what happened? I ended up in Houston, Texas. Just that part by itself is a dramatic change from where the fuck I was. So I know 45 days from the end of December, I was no longer in North Carolina. Or maybe a little bit longer. No, it was, it was, when I leave, I left before March. So yeah, 30, yeah, 30 days would be end of January. I think I left in February to be honest. So yeah, like 45 days. So a, a whole moon cycle, a whole, a whole two full, well, not two full. Yeah. The second full moon later. And that's all. And that's off a of solstice. That was why, that's why that, some, that's why that winter solstice was important. It's off a of solstice. This one right here. It's off a of solstice. It's off a of new year, a real new year, spring solstice. 
So that energy is even more like, I think they, they want to connect the end of this energy and its portal opening and closing to like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if it's the summer solstice that it, it cashes in on. I don't know if it's October it cashes in, but at least 45 days from now until a solstice, right? So it's no longer than that, right? Usually for these portals, it's like eclipse to eclipse, moon to moon, solstice to solstice. So a month and a half is what I'm saying to you. So I like to be realistic, unfortunately, with manifestation, although that's counterintuitive. But what I mean is, Based on what how, what how my life has changed, and and, and listen, I'm t- I'm preaching to the fucking choir. My life has changed right now. You know where I'm at right now is totally different than where I was then to, and more so recently. And where I'm headed next, it seems after this, may even do the same with this energy, right? So I'm not just I'm not spitting hot air to you, but what we have to do is write it down. Write down what this is like. I'm writing down my intentions for this eclipse, this eight, this infinity loop. And I'm starting a new loop. I'm starting a new timeline. And what I want to return to me are these things. And then just have a consideration of what you can adjust mentally, emotionally, visually to align with that. So like if it's a slide that returns to you, but you can't turn around to see when it's coming. But if if you know whatever I put in this, I should get on the other side. So you start thinking about how you need to adjust your frequency and your vibration, AKA your mood, your thoughts, your emotions. How do you, what would you, what are you preparing to give? What are you preparing to sacrifice? Cause, cause you know, we beckon in Saturn in this whole thing. What about you or what about it? Or what about life? Or what about any of this? What is your 10th that you're willing? What, what, which one of these talents are you willing to invest in order to make these things come true? to you and it's just a thought about it right it, it's not really even an accountability exercise it's just the fact that you're opening up the thought pathway to to, to meet it halfway like this is going to do what it's going to do regardless but when we in we intercess in these moments and try to take control of it we're just given an input so it's like it's going to run the chat prompt anyway you might as well put in you want some extra pepperonis and pizza nigga because it's going to happen no matter what so write down those things you wish could happen in the next 45 days for yourself. <clears throat> we'll be, we, we be on some fly shit, though. We're to, we're, we're to red pill them. Let's do 44 days. So we get the four to four and the eight again. So let's, 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 just, let's just round it down to 44 days from now. In 44 days from tomorrow, you can write that. Someone figure that out. Write it out. Share it with the class. I don't know. And, and just think of how crazy your life can change in 44 days. And that's where I'm at with it. Like, that's, that's how I would play this energy. I would write it down. I would deal with that. I would charge my crystals. I would deal with that. I would fast if I need to fast. Right now I'm fasting, technically. Uh, I would, I would, you know what I'm saying? I would, I would, I would, I would put my bid in if Saturn's handing out rewards. And I think, what is this? Is Saturn in Aquarius? Where is Saturn now? Saturn's in Aquarius, right? You know what I'm talking about? Saturn's in Aquarius right now. Know that. We're in the age of Aquarius with the return of Yahweh. Know that. When did Jesus say we were going to return? When the water pitcher guy is pouring at the end of the market. That's when that's the sign when the water bear, when Aquarius is in this house, that's when I return. We're talking about Saturn return. We're talking about Saturn and Aquarius. We're talking about that revelation. It wasn't revelation, it was the gospels, but it's that prophecy being fulfilled on this eight, on this loop. Know that. So what does that mean? What is so why do they want to know when he returned? Because a golden era is supposed to start after that, right? Whether you take three years to go to the hills or go to the forest or, or seven years in all and the Antichrist puts you on the microchips or you eat bread, whatever. That's only seven years. Three and a half, I think, because three the first three and a half, you can get away. The other three and a half, you kind of trap. And then if you don't get trapped, you got to go through tribulations, right? This is the whole thing about 
you know, whether or not there's a rapture or not. But none of that matters. At the end of either scenario, there's a golden era. So so at least, you know, on the calendar, on the cycle, we're headed towards a new golden era. And now, mind you, the Malik worship and all the other stuff I was looking up all are part of golden eras, right? Cool, 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 cool. So if any of this crazy shit I've been kicking for six and a half hours freestyle makes any sense, and if any of it's true, then that means there's a potential in amongst this energy for a golden hour. And all of us, we've been through so much since that last portal. We broke some things that wasn't broken before. We had we're relationships, all that shit that never happened before. In our politics and our finances and life and different difficulties that were never present before. After all of that, fam, there must be time for reprieval. There must be time to let the fields regrow. There must be time for a golden age or golden hour. And I think for those of us who've been doing the work or for those of us who, who've been clocking it, I think that's for us. For those of us who try to honor our parents and keep those laws and those commandments and that journey we've been in for the past couple of years, if anyone's been trying, it's been us. Hashtag 3 a.m. We, we definitely don't have it perfect. We definitely, you know what I'm saying? I call a lot of people bitch ass niggas. Like, you know, I'm not at the top of the Christmas list at all. I don't deserve a PlayStation 5, but I did my best. I did my best to be closer to that side of the path than the other side. I tell you that. So maybe, maybe, just maybe, maybe all of these roads are pointing to the fact that, yeah, some people are going to have a hard time. But for the rest of us who've been thugging it out, this might be the best time. And I, I hope that's true for you. So write it down. Write down whatever immediate things you would like to see occur in your life. Pray on it as if it was already true. Visualize it. Hopefully you can feel it. That's what I'm going to do. Like if if I'm where, if I'm around the eclipse, when it's eclipsing and shit, I'm just going to set my visualizations. I'm not going to have to like burn my eye or look at the sun. I'm just going to go through that moment. It's supposed to be complete blackness, allegedly. So nighttime, right? A brief, a brief time to switch. You, you're switching calendars, you're switching timelines. You're going from day to night to day real quick. So that is a, a literal switch. So in that dream state, in the nighttime of this eclipse, I'm going to dream. I'm going to try my best to visualize and focus on whatever outcome situation I would like to see. I'll put 44 days on it just so that it can return non-void. And if it happens sooner than that, awesome. If it doesn't happen at all, it's a learning experience because we're writing it down. So, but I tell you what, nothing I've written down has never not happened. It may not happen when shit. I've had some shit I've written down that didn't happen until 17 years later. But them motherfuckers have a way of catching up to you. So whatever the case may be, hopefully you don't need a Saturn return to get it. Get it, Saturn. 17 years. But yeah, that's it. Shout to Jeff A. Shout to Zenith. Shout to NJ Cooper. Shout to Haru. Shout out to Mr. Now. So 44 days from now is May 22nd. Uh, ain't that a bitch? We right there with the two twos. It's four again, so that's perfect. So between now and May 22nd, know that. Zenith is cooking, too. Mounds are seeing the sacred spaces representing the womb. Cycle of life. Yes, you got it. We'll pick up on that. But yeah, man, it's your boy, MG the Future. Thank you, guys. Drop a like, comment, subscribe. Money sign MG the Future. I got kits on mgthefuture.com. Don't forget, I'm still a music producer. Until next time, though. Peace and I'm out.